where we pick up, all of you are transported back to the site of the Dimensional Lands. As you are brought back, Vicha, you blink your eyes and you can see this sterile looking room covered in iron plates. Right above uh, kind of these plates towards the ceiling on one side, there are many windows like an observing room of some kind. You have appeared in between this helix looking structure made of twisted metal and there is a man in kind of this gray jumpsuit waiting there for everyone, it seems like. Neza and Boudicca, you blink your eyes as you see Polydectes waiting here for you. Soaked well, in blood, I think Neza is laughing like a maniac and going, Look, it worked! It worked! Oh, are you all right? Not my blood, don't worry. And we found someone there, too. Right, I... I, I had to lock on to the signature. It was a bit difficult. But... Who is this person? Uh, I'm Vicha. Nice to meet you, and uh, thank you for pulling me out. Uh, of course, uh... Vicha, is it? I'd love to talk, but... Look, there are soldiers outside this room, and if we move wrong, they're gonna burst in, and they're gonna come kill ya. So I have a contract, and you're gonna need to sign it. It's a devilish contract. You're gonna be put under the command of a very evil man. Same as the rest of us. And you watch as Polydectes is going to pull out a fresh contract and a quill. Look, I understand any decision that you make. Just know that we don't have any will nor part of this. And also, if you try to attack us, you'll likely be dead before you bleed finds any of our skin. So there's that. I don't... Don't blame you. I understand what it's like not to have any will in these matters. Um, here, let me look at it. And Vicha will look at the contract. Mm-hmm. I think looking up at the windows, I assume, are they like, can we see people beyond them or are they one way? They are like black tinted windows. Black tinted. Okay. I think he'll sign it then polydectes will nod and will take it and will just kind of raise the signed sheet of paper up kind of towards the glass and you hear vicha kind of an old man's voice say <coughs> that will do take him back and the door to this chamber opens once again and well for the first time for you Vicha and you can see that there is some white light streaming through Polydectes will give a nod to all of you all right looks like everything's going about as well as can be expected Lon is waiting for all of us back at the laboratory ah I think he's sure been missing you these last few weeks. Weeks? 
Yes, um, you've been gone for 42 days. Didn't feel like that for us. Well, you did just pass through, what, um, a few dozen layers of the cosmic stack? All with differing time dilations? You're lucky. Ostrion is relatively synced with the rest of the Rings of Meropus. What, uh, what, what day is it right now? 59th of Lion Ear, 710 AR. 710, all right. Uh, what was the year for you when you left? 701. Ah. Been a while then, I see. Yeah. I suppose it could have always been longer, though. It could have. It could have. Come on, I'll show you the space. And Polydectes is going to begin to move out. Will the rest of you follow? Yes. And Nasa? Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then, as you all begin to go throughout these hallways, Polydectes seems to know the way a bit more easily as he walks with some assurance. <sighs> you know... Lon's been telling me all the stories of uh, your adventures. It's, uh, all of you have been through a lot. Yeah. Uh, what happened with the blood? Oh, the blood we got on us right now? This blood? Yeah, that one. It cut off the trunk of a giant elephant creature that was attacking us. Nasa cut off the trunk of a giant elephant creature that was attacking us. Hmm. I see. I have the drawing right here. And she will show him the terrible little sketch. That line is where it fell off. Oh. Um. Well, that certainly is a lot of blood. Um, glad all of you are okay, though. Yeah, we were just tiny little bug people there. It wasn't fun. Right, right. You were in Austrian. Um, creatures there as big as they say? They're the bigger than mountains, some of them. And how big are the mountains? The mountains? They make our mountains look like little babies. Oh, um, well, in all fairness, it could have been worse. Could have been thrown to the Warrens. But... Yeah. Niz is casting a side eye at Vija. Vija is staring straight ahead. All right. Uh, so this is where I suppose we reside, Vija, and come to a set of like closed metal doors that polydectes will begin to push open um and as he does you can see this well lived in workspace um there is a table in the middle covered with designs blueprints drawings things like that vicha you can see a man a lawn kind of bent over the table um probably feeling a mix of emotions as alon is not alone in this room alon you stand side by side with a woman who ha walked in a few hours ago after polydectes left and has been thus far helping you with a few equations 
Yeah, set gamma equal to nine, not six, Alon. Not properly accounting for the high magic fluctuation zones above a normal standard deviation. Oh. Alright, I'll account for that. Ah. Mm. Neza, Isn't Budica, that... Kele, Vicha. Welcome. I have two burning questions. One, what took you so long? And two, who is that? Uh, this is this is Vitya. Hello, Vitya. Hello. Uh, you must be alone. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, no offense. Where did you come from? Vitya came from <gasps> first the Shivo library where he worked then proceeded to be thrown into the arena dreadful lair in the cosmic stack eventually was able to escape found his way through a series of dangerous trials and tribulations in Ostrion where he came across your friends it's uh -huh. right currently has signed a deal with Fionn Byrne via the same devilish contract that you have bound your soul to, Alon. Great. Who's Alon? We could ask the same question of your new friend. Uh, I don't know. Uh, charmed to meet you, Neza. My name is Corinna Khan. The Ninth Dorcha. Pleasure to meet all of you. Probably taking a step back. <laughs> Do not worry, you don't need to be afraid. I am here to help. Uh, help who exactly? Well, to help all of you, I suppose to, in a way, help the rings. Help my partner. Help many things. You are currently in this containment, and I wish to remove you from your binds. Don't worry, you can speak freely. The individual who's supposed to be watching you is taking a bathroom break. He unfortunately ate bad shellfish last night. Oh, tragic. Oh. In a way. He is a dreadful man. Terrible attitude. And don't worry. The shellfish that I served him won't kill him, but a bit of cosmic justice, if you will. Well, I, I won't lie, I do appreciate the math help. Of course. <sighs> now, while I'm here, we're going to adjust a few more equations so that during your next jump, you can, if you wish, attempt your scheme in order to break free of the contract. However, I'm also here to say that it will not work, at least not if you don't have amethyst gemstones. They will need to be gathered, and you will need to divert large quantities of primordial magic into them. Breaking the gemstones during the slowdown point will be enough for you to sever your contracts. It'll also make it far more difficult for the devils to find you. And I must say, you do not want the King of Thorns to find you. What's special about the amethysts that lets them do this? 
amethyst as a gemstone is known for their concealing capabilities. This concealment is what is primarily being used. So am I right in understanding that we are less breaking the contract itself and more just uh, we will be disregarding its uh, tenets and the people who would execute it will not be able to find us. You will be removing the bonds the contract has on you. Mm. Making it so they couldn't stop your heart, which is a passage that they would employ as a last resort, of course, once they use homing runes and magic that is also latent within the contract. But don't worry, you will be br at least breaking is the wrong word. Sidestepping. Disconnecting that. Mm. Um... Given that Polydectes is Fionn's artificer and makes a lot of stuff for him, do we have access to gemstones? In this particular laboratory right now, no. But you could perhaps try and acquire some. Mm. Now, Boudica, I have instructions for you as well. Yes. The room where the dimensional lance is kept, the panes of glass in the observation room, the third pane from the left, it has a fault in its design, in its construction. Very minor, but it's enough for you. If you hit that pane, you should be able to break through the glass. I see. So, when do I hit this glass, exactly? When you come back from breaking the contract. Uh, I see, I see. You must know the plan inside and out, else you will fail. Even with my powers and abilities, I still see many futures where you absolutely fuck this up. Mm. So you shouldn't do uh, that. I wasn't planning on it. Well, if we have time and exactness is of the essence. Um, <clears throat> so, we use the Dimensional Lance for the second run holding amethyst and on the return trip or on the way down which one on the way back up we'll have the most success on the way back up we pump primordial magics into the amethysts for myself would I don't know, perhaps using my healing powers while within my transformed form do the trick. Hmm. Perhaps. I see futures listen, where this works. Listen, ma'am, you knew all our names before I knew that one's name. I'm just assuming that you know everything already. You also said break the amethysts, though, right? I Would did. we charge them before the trip and then break them on the way up? Yes, if you can acquire the amethyst, that will work. But to your point, Mr. Skiratai, I can predict my own actions with a great deal of certainty. All of you bumble about the cosmic stack with very little thought for your actions, and therefore your, not chaos, but your stupidity makes you almost impossible to predict. I can still do it, but exact specifications across such dimensional boundaries is difficult. Luckily for you, 
you've made my partner very sad. So I'm coming here as a favor. May I ask who your partner is? I am the Dorcha Arex, Vicha. I... Ah. Right. Surely, in the Shivo Library, when you were flipping through all those books, right? On the second of Nuwiti, you read a passage about the previous Dorchas. It mentioned some history. Do you recall this information? Uh, you're right. It was a stupid question. You also don't recall that information. You recall it from a different point. But that's neither here nor there. Uh. All right. Hmm. They will have fun with you. Now then, um, Mr. Polydectes and Mr. Skiritai, if you could, I would like your attention on some of these documents. <clears throat> uh, yeah. And... Karina is going to, with a flourish, turn back to the table and begin pointing out more small bits of correction. Alan will go through and correct his math. Mm -hmm. And even Polydectes will walk over and he's just going to slowly, like, cock his head to the side. How do you know all this? It's... Well... Looking at certain futures, I'm able to determine which versions of the math succeeds and which versions fail. I, um, all right. And he's just gonna keep on making the corrections as well. Vicha, Boudica, and Neza, what are you doing? Also observing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, th I think Vicha has things he wants to say, but he's, uh, I think, also very enamored with uh, what Elan and Kel are working on. What is something that Vicha wants to say? I think he, well... I mean, he'd like to bring up the fact that Neza, Boudica, and Kele did not bring up the devilish contracts. Mm -hmm. um, and you would hear the Dorcha say Vicha it's a habit Vicha some information requires prying from them things like the devilish contracts you need to ask about those things in the future we genuinely did not know that they would make you sign one I guess we should have guessed sorry you are, look, I'm thankful for you getting me out of there, but I... All you really told me was that your father sucked. That wasn't a lot to get... Is there... Hmm. Is there anything else you're withholding that I should know about? Something that will affect me directly? Yes, many things. Uh, for example... Her dad sucks in that he partners up with the with devils, makes us sign these contracts, killed one of our friends, um, and his wife willingly transformed herself into a eldritch being of teleportation magics. Oh, also he kept slaves. There's that too. Uh, yes, slaves that he made out of people's souls. He's kind of the worst guy ever. One of the most vile right now in the Rings of Marapis. Cool, 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 cool. And he's my dad. Cool. Oh, and you'll notice a 
plant zombie apocalypse happening outside. That's going on right now. Just so we're all on the same page. Can you clarify what that part of the equation's for? And she'll go back to whatever she was doing. <laughs> no, hang on. What do you, what do you mean by that? Uh, what do you mean, plant zombie apocalypse? Oh, um. Wait, shit. Did we tell Polydectes about this either? No. Oh, no. <laughs> you see Polydectes has stopped oh, no. and is Why? slowly okay. turning. If I, if, I to, if I was telling Polydectes about mm. stuff we've done, I feel like I would have brought up Plant Apocalypse. All right, then, yeah, Polydectes is not, like, completely shocked, but he is, like, slowly turning, and he is giving, like, Neza and Boudicca the biggest side eye. Yeah, um... So, we were, well, there's there was a cult um, that wanted to start the plant zombie apocalypse, but we didn't know that at the time, and we thought they just wanted to make the world a better place. You did so, actually know, but you debatable. chose to disregard all the evidence to the contrary. Well, I thought they were... Making the world a better place. It turns out their idea of a better place was plant zombie apocalypse. Um, so now we're also trying to stop that. Alright. I guess that explains why you asked me if I was in a cult earlier. Yes. <laughs> uh, what, what, what cult was this? Church of the Neverborn? I assume not, but does that name ring any bells for me? Make a mental check. Uh, oh, that's right. I get an extra die. Oh, did you take the scholar background? I did, yeah. yeah Still awful, go. though. Um... Nah, I won't use hero points. Uh, two successes. It rings a bit of a bell, but you can't figure out what, unfortunately, Vicha. Hmm. My name's Alon. <laughs> Little familiar, but I don't know much about them. Elon makes another correction. Okay, does it work now? Hmm. Change the flow output here and okay. here. Okay. And like all the corrections are like so minute. Like in terms of like engineering, it's like millimeters of adjustment that she is giving you. But it's also like what you are trying to do is incredibly difficult. It's it's like the um, it's I think it's brought up in one of the Star Trek movies. It's like trying to hit a bullet with a smaller bullet while blindfolded riding a horse. <laughs> yes, very good. <laughs> it is a frame perfect Mario Kart run where you're trying to like glitch <laughs> through the map at all the right points, and not with an empty track or CPUs with other players. <laughs> with other players trying to fuck with you, yes like that one Mario 64 speed run where they only accomplished it because of a solar flare. Yeah. Pretty much. Out of curiosity, because it was um, discussed when we originally came up with this plan, um, will we be, with all these corrections to the math, will we be keeping all our limbs this yes and your organs and flesh that you do lose they will regenerate oh, that's okay good that's um comforting mm -hmm. you'll have to well likely fight through the pain though as you make your way back up here but a small price to pay really Yeah. 
just need to get some amethyst. I don't suppose Polydectes you could convince Arno not Arno, fuck. I don't suppose you could convince Fionn that we need them to make this go better. After all, we were gone for weeks this time. Potentially you could convince him that the amethyst would make the time difference not be as severe. Maybe. I mean I'm not we much don't know of that. not much of a liar though. could give it a shot. Mischief over here. Now that we know Ethan wasn't lying, I'm so sorry, by the way, Caleb, about calling you a liar for a year. For a year. Uh-huh. <laughs> but it's still for really funny to make the whole Eva loves lying uh. joke. Uh, no, it's not. A little bit. It's the sad Is now. There's more food on DoorDash for this. <laughs> yeah. I never got you any in the first place. I know. I sent you back the five dollars, I remember. Yeah. If one of you could try to convince him, I can back you up. I... I love talking to people. Oh. Uh... Okay, does anyone else have a spirit higher than three? Seven. Okay, go for it, Elon, please. <laughs> I thought we were all really low spirit here. But then again, Elon's always been great with people. I can try um not sure how much I can sell it on an engineering basis but well he doesn't know he could just straight up lie <clears throat> or maybe bring up some niche use of amethyst that's technically correct but you know that way we're not violating the contract by directly lying to him hmm it would be better to find a niche use, I think. Something justifiable. I think if you blatantly lie, that is something that could be fact-checked before we actually do all this. Agreed. If Amethyst is generally known for its, you said, cloaking and stealth, uh, um, vaguely, I'm sure ripping through layers of the cosmic stack is... Noticeable. Attention grabbing? Yeah. It could attract and... some danger. I don't know what lives between the layers of the stack, but I don't want to find out. And you could also bring up that you did get attacked by the Groot's plane. Yeah. Or I'm sorry, out of character, would I know that name? Yeah. Uh, you did all. We, yeah, you got found by the Groot's plane. That would be evidence that perhaps you could use some cloaking. Um, given the work we've done and just sort of the actual project Fionn's having us work on, um, is there any other materials that we might need to requisition that I could hide it in? Like we need so much iron, so much steel, a couple things of platinum, also some amethyst. Oh, and also some copper if you have it. Yeah, you could do that. Like, they're, they're pretty much all those materials you could theoretically use if you're trying to make, like, micro-adjustments to the dimensional lance and make it just a little bit better. Right. Out of uh, partial curiosity and also just trying to plan ahead here, is there any method by which the... Um, apparent time dilation can be adjusted, or is that just a fact of travel? Are you asking me, or...? I am asking the Dorcha. You can see, like, she gives a small smile. I wouldn't worry about that. Things will happen as they should. Hmm. All right. Don't worry, I'm giving you the best chance possible to make your escape. Okay. However, 
in that case, I feel like it would behoove us to go back to an earlier set of questioning. If we need to use primordial magics to break these amethysts in order to break the contract or sidestep it, as you said, um, I have some access to primordial magics. Do we each need to do this individually? You just need to break the amethyst with primordial magic inside. The more you put in, the better. Oh, okay. I understand now. Hmm. Now that that line of questioning is answered, I detect that someone has an additional question they wish to ask of me, who's going to be brave. Hmm. No bravery. That is a fault of theirs, Vicha. I don't know what you're talking about. Um. Oh, you don't? Oh, we could discuss so many avenues with that, Alon, but... No. I am here to help. Why does mm. Sin care? I told you he showed up, like, months ago. did, but I'm still not sure why he cares about us or this situation, other than Night Zombie Apocalypse. Hmm. You just had probably snapped one to a lawn when he said that. Yes, Vicha. You what? It's an appear to you. Uh, uh yeah. Yes. That's correct. Huh. What? Oh, that music cue. <laughs> Sins. <laughs> Since initial interest was in capacity all of you becoming your best selves escaping lords that path was given and it was thusly rejected then you subjugated an entire region under the yoke of a despot bound them all drove them away from any mistakes any room to grow you took away everything that made them them and now here you are, bound once again. I think there is a certain level of disappointment. But also, all of you have a certain level of capacity to break these chains and bonds. To cast lords out of the dreadful civilization that it is now. You did something terrible. Something so terrible that the high god Sin thought it necessary to tip the scales ever so slightly.
consider that in your dreams, Neza, and in your darkest moments. And Corinna will just give you a friendly smile. So, would all of you like dinner? Or, I could simply be on my way. Mr. Skiratai, this looks perfect. Oh, excellent. Hmm. I was going to ask if you were done with corrections. Yes, these corrections are done. Uh, I guess before I, you I go... I wouldn't mind dinner. Yeah, yeah actually. Uh, as long as there's no danger of Fionn finding us and, I don't know, executing us or something, then yeah, I'd be happy to eat. No danger at all. Yeah, and um, just want to do a final rundown of the plan just to make sure I, I got it all in my brain and I don't mess it up. Mm -hmm. You watch his the Dorcha Rex reaches into like her flowing robes and pulls out a small piece of paper and passes it to you, Boudica. It's a list that goes over the plan. Yay! <laughs> now, and she kind of spreads a hand and you watch as kind of a table appears along with each of your favorite meals. And this point, um, you watch as Corinna goes, pulls over a chair, sits down, and her meal seems to be um, like a, a salad of some sort. And she gives a nod to all of you. Please, eat. I'm spying. What are Polydectes and Kaylee's favorite foods? Uh, Kaylee seems to have like some sort of like rabbit with like this heavy sauce on it with like root vegetables that he's chowing down into uh and polydectes seems to be like this nice big bowl of soup you can't really distinguish exactly what it is but it's got meat and potatoes and a whole bunch of other vegetables in it it seems like and it's piping hot Hey, wait, I was going to say Nasa has goat stew. Mm. It's very similar. And Out of curiosity, what's what, everyone else's food? Yeah, what does Vicha have? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I think he'd maybe have... Probably maybe some kind of kebab um, with like um, probably beef and lamb and you can see like um, kind of some roasted vegetables added to it. Um, yeah, he'll be chewing down, on, chowing down on that, I think. Nice. Elon has... It's only very similar. He has some souvlaki, uh, which is just beef, pork, chicken, skewers with pita bread, some french fries, and a nice piece of spanakopita on the side. Very nice. Boudicca's is probably... Well, it's, it's probably a... Gyro, gyro, however you want to pronounce it. With um... Technically, it's gyro. Guro. Yes, yes. That. Uh, with lamb and tzatziki and some crumbled feta or whatever. You, you get it. You get it. You get mm -hmm. it. I get it. Like straight out of Greece. The most delicious. And it's like, you get it. Mm hmm. <laughs> And you watch as the Dorcha will just, like, sit back and just eat quietly, allowing you guys to just 
Have whatever conversation you like. Um. Oh. So. Wait, sir, you go first. I was just gonna say, um. So, Vicha, you worked for Shivo, huh? Yeah, for a few years. I suppose technically I might still be employed, but well, I've been gone for nine years, so I don't know if I'm exactly on the roster anymore. Oh, nine! Wow. Mm. Um. Yeah, it was a nice place, though. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Well, to each their own, I suppose. Hmm. Um. So, were you just a? Were you a researcher, a librarian? Uh, technically, I was a librarian. Um, I did my some of my own research on the side. Uh, in a roundabout way, that was how I ended up in Osteron. Oh. I was studying another dimension, but when I left, I, my life ended up uh, tumbling through a couple different dimensions and Ending up in Ostrom. You said mm. you were studying the arena, right? Yeah. Uh, that was where my research was focused. Like I said, it didn't yield much results, but it was still a learning experience. Mm. I mean, that's still results, just maybe not the ones you were looking for. You have plenty of information. Not as much as I would have liked. It was a little bit hard to focus there. Um, but, you know, I learned how to fight properly. That was good. Uh, I wouldn't have been able to take down, or I wouldn't have been able to fight the Groot Sling with you all like that if I hadn't been in the arena, I suppose. He's just slowly bringing out her notebook. Um, what your first days there, like, like, how did you feel? Can't have been easy being thrown into something so harsh like that. Well, you know the arena, or I guess you said you hadn't heard of it before. Is that right? Uh, personally, no. Alright, well, it has a little bit of a background. It is one of the more dangerous dimensions you can travel to. Um, specifically, the sun there. Well, it tends to throw everyone beneath it into an uncontrollable bloodlust. Uh, but at the end of the day, or, uh, that defect disappears and... Well, at sunrise, everyone who died is brought back again. For the same bloodlust until nightfall, of course. So it was... Well, I got used to it. That's... That's what matters. I wanted to see... What I could find out about the sun's effects, and if there was any way to stop them. Uh, but I didn't really get that far in that avenue. Yeah, but it was an interesting place, though. Met a lot of people. Can you remind us how Any you got out? Uh, well... I'd arranged for a different way out, but the Warrens had other plans for me. I uh, ended up in there for a bit, but, you know, I got back out, uh, and that was when I got spit into Ostreon. Uh, much nicer place than either the Arena or the Warrens, I have to say. I 
Pacino, what about you all? Uh, I mean, I got oh. the broad strokes of where you're from, or of what you've been up to, but you know, I don't know much about you. Uh, I'm from Carthonus originally. Uh, oh, uh, where in Carthonus? Um, that uh, sort of small peninsula off the coast of Delonk. Interesting. Uh, I'm a, I'm from Fayed. Ah. <laughs> um, I grew up on a farm there. Um, then joined the army for a while. Became a doctor while in the service. Got married. Had a kid. Came here. I've been downhill since then. Let me ask. from Kovarov came here also on research got a little sidetracked like you <laughs> um, my brother ended up coming here a few years before I did and hopefully I'll be able to see him again soon I'm retired originally from the primordial ring uh, I got a call to come, come here, and I'm here. Didn't have much else to do. Uh, what do you mean by a call? That okay. That's another thing we should mention. Um, all of us, in one way or another, received a. Uh, message, call, urge, takes various forms to come here, specifically to the Town of Lords. And then even more specifically south from there. Me personally, it was a dream for Neza. I believe you mentioned it was in a book you found was this one yeah and she will pull out the book <laughs> and the call itself and pass it over to Vija Vija uh, we'll take a look at this if that's alright mm -hmm. yeah of course it's a uh, an older book on the primordial ring um, if you're familiar with the area you would notice that it is so stupidly out of date <laughs> um <laughs> And, but the uh, call that she points out is on, like, a near a map of the Lord's area. Um, and it says, essentially, uh, find the garden with a little drawing of a duck that she would point out uh, was a symbol that her brother used to draw. So that's why she was interested enough to come. Gotcha. Uh, Colin, I'm going to DM you a question real quick. Okay. Oh, man. I'm, I mean, sure, you, you could do that. Oh, it just said. Are you about to burn my book? <laughs> Depends on what Colin says. No, the wood pulp it's made from isn't infected by the blossom. <laughs> <laughs> I think we will kind of look it over and nod um, and he'll say, um, you are the garden you mentioned. Uh, what's that about? And he'll oh boy. kind of pass the things back over as he's saying um, that. Essentially, the call that we all got was to find the Ascendant Garden that it was rumored the Archfey Estelle 
uh, was connected to, and to find the missing Archfey Estelle as well. Um, we found out, however, that Estelle was a bit corrupted in some way. We found that out. Well, I suppose for you all it would have been a few months, but for us, well, when the plant zombie apocalypse started, it was during a ritual called the Meroviglia. We found out that the Archfey still had uh, orchestrated, I guess, this. She wanted this to happen, and she did not quite identify with the name Estelle anymore. She wanted to go by Meroviglia. But there's still the cult is still looking for the garden. If we can beat them there to I don't know at least in some way fix this. Corinna Yes. You don't happen to know where the Ascendant Garden is, do you? I do. Would you be willing to mark it on this map? And as we'll find the more updated map <laughs> and pass it over. As she looks it over, she just kind of smiles and she'll mark a place just kind of randomly beyond the mountains. Uh, yeah, the route to get to the garden, wherever it happens to be, is on the other side of a massive mountain range and two giant gates made of pure mythical. But at least we have a specific location now, and we're not going to be wandering around lost. I think we Pretty have much. to get to the other side of the gate first. Well, yeah, but after that, we got this. Uh, out of curiosity, Colin, with the since the uh, cult of the Neverborn rang a couple bells for me. Do I recall anything more with the information they just gave me? Uh, no. Okay, just curious. Well, it's quite a lot of work you have ahead of you. Also, since we're sharing, um, Neza, you, I know that it's been cut, but I would still inform our new friend here about the, um, the thing. The burning thing. Specifically the one that happened to you. Oh, yeah. Um, so... Uh, one of the leaders of this cult is a relative of mine, through my dad's side, and she initiated some kind of soul bind uh, to me. So when she, we, the town we were from would burn her every morning. It was a good idea in hindsight. We thought it was horrible at the time. But when she would be burned, it would reflect onto me as well, which is what Ron is mentioning. When the Meroviglia happened, I thought I felt the soulbind be ripped apart, disconnected somehow. But can I check? Is the birthmark still there? It is not. Those, there's nothing saying it can't come back but all physical marks at least from what I had are gone but at one point in time I was soul bound to her and I think my brother might have been as well I don't know who he was soul bound to but he had a very similar birthmark to one that I had you can't see it anymore because it's gone but it a very powerful mage told us that it was a, a surefire symbol of that soul bind. We're still not quite sure how she managed to do
do that, though. Given that we lived on completely different rings, had never met before, and I certainly did not give, you know, some kind of help in this. I've had the mark since I was a kid, so I don't know how it happened. So be on the lookout for weird rune-shaped birthmarks, I guess, that just suddenly show up on you. I think at this, Corinna would just kind of snicker <laughs> a bit. <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> yeah, Jamie, you made the Dorcha laugh. Yeah. Well, I wonder, I guess if you're related to her and soulbound to her, that makes sense as to why she called out to you to, uh, Lon and uh, th those of you who were also called, did did you have some kind of tie to her as well? No, not that I know of. No. I mean, the only connection I have to anything around here is that my wife's from this ring. But that's it. Oh, you did mention a wife and child earlier. I'm um, where... Are they here now? Um. Well. My, uh. My wife got caught up in the, uh. <clears throat> yeah. My wife was affected by the, um. As Neza keeps referring to it, plant zombie thing. So, um, my, my daughter is safe, hopefully, for the time being. Um, she's being kept safe at a fort, castle, keep, whatever you want to call it. Um. Huh. Sorry to hear that about your wife. Uh, well, I have hope. It's a dangerous thing to keep holding on to, but, I, but I'm gonna. You should. It's a good thing to have. I like to think so. <sighs> um, <laughs> the uh, oh, <laughs> this is a uh, another little part that I hope my friends here informed you of before you came back. Um, the section of the primordial ring that contains lords and its surrounding regions. Uh, has sunk in the stack to a little bit below hell, if I'm remembering correctly. We did mention that. Yeah, that well... About the only uh, information you gave me was that <clears throat> it this place had changed position. Yeah, uh... I bring that up because I'm just thinking about my family reminds me that I can't contact any of them because we're lower in the stack and the cult is doing something probably and means I can't get word out to my people which stinks have you been in contact with Diana through dreams recently though? not recently She's on the because same level. I, I, I know that but I am frankly a bit concerned given our current state of um, devilish influence that contacting her might expose her in some way so I've been holding off fair enough <clears throat> I know very little about how these 
devilish contracts work, so I've just been acting with an overabundance of caution, hoping that'll steer me in the right direction. Caution's a good <clears throat> thing to have. Uh, it tends to be something I forget a little about. It is selectively applicable. Sometimes it's good to have, sometimes it's your worst enemy. <sighs> Too much caution, you never get anything done, I suppose. Very, very true. <sighs> um, yeah. But yes, I don't have uh, any sort of other connection to, frankly, this ring in general, let alone lords or uh, Mayor Viglia. Really? Sense. You've been quiet. Oh. All right. Sorry, go on. To Alon, though, your. Baden said your family was fairly significant. Is it possible the cult wasn't trying to get to you, but to anyone from your family? I have no idea. Uh, like I said, I talked to my brother, and he seemed... Well, in fairness, he seemed to have recognize the name Mayor Viglia, but I sort of chalked that up to his profession more than anything. Yeah. I don't think any of my family has been getting signals, as far as I'm aware, anyway. But, in fairness, I'm not aware of much in that arena these days. And I Do still I have not... Know Sorry. Sorry. And and I still have no idea what she meant by that. Uh, would I know who the maiden is? Vaguely. Like you have I... read the name. I've read the name. Don't really know details beyond that though yeah you know Would... she might be a god that's worshipped by the nyx you were you met the maiden that's um, oh goodness okay some kind um of goddess isn't she um according to her no however i feel like it's in a a decent categorization um, well, she certainly didn't die like a god, so not a god. Oh, great. <sighs> Sorry, continue. Right. Well, um, yes. She was... <sighs> Yeah, uh, we met her. She spoke to us for a while. Um, helps her out with some problems, and then she left. And we thought she came back. Turned out to be a cult disguised as her. And we were tricked again. Because in between her leaving and quote unquote her coming back, that's when the shift in the stack happened. And. Oh, uh, uh, no. The shift was slightly prior. But, uh, it. Listen, I'm not going to lie to you, Vichit. We've been through a lot. And I hope that in time we remember everything to inform you of. But, uh,. Bits and pieces are uh, 
kind of blending together, I'm going to be honest. But yeah, we met the maiden. She's very nice. Very pleasant one. So you met the maiden, and you met Sin. Have you met any other gods or godlike entities? Um, I met a really strong man. <laughs> oh, Helmuth? <laughs> uh, somewhat of a, a folk? Well, actually, I take that back. Is he... He is a... People in Kovarov regard him in high regard, right? No. Okay, no, I thought they didn't because he, le <laughs> he abandoned. That's why I was, like, curious because I thought for a second I went, there's no way because you said he was one of the... Not one of the only person to leave. Mm-hmm. So I, okay, I wanted to double check because I did not think that was the case, but everyone else loves him, so I doubted myself for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Do I, have I heard the name? Oh yeah, he's a legend. <laughs> Great. I don't think we should trust the Kovarovian's opinion on many things. <laughs> yeah. He's somewhat of a, a pariah. In, yeah. He was really nice. He was sort of... Uh, we just sort of found him along the way on a path. Um, he stayed by, helped train uh, one of our friends. Yeah. I still think it's really funny that this group sort of it got to interact with him in like a, a more chill grandpa sense. Because not a lot of us are really marshals except for Aoife and Boudica. And Boudica's got her own thing going on. Mm-hmm. And so we were just like, yeah, that was that one guy that hung around us a little bit. Super strong, super nice. And everyone else was like, that was fucking Helmuth von Grass. To describe Helmuth, imagine a very nice guy who will help you with your problems. However, he is also the strictest personal trainer you've ever met in your entire life. Sounds like an interesting fellow. Yes, very. He made us ran. He made us run for a week, nonstop, and legitimately nonstop. No food, no rest. Twice. Wow. It was pretty well, great. Yes, he knew you could do it. Uh, which friend of yours did he train? That would be Aoife. She is um, no longer with us. Ah. Due to Sorry the... To yeah, it was uh, really hard. She was killed by the aforementioned Eldritch Portal magic demon thing that is, or formerly was, or half is, Boudicca's mother. You certainly have very interesting parents, Boudicca. <laughs> to be fair, I don't think she was a portal at the time of Boudicca's birth. No, she wasn't. So, as you can probably gather, my parents are the CEOs of being the worst people ever. <clears throat> yeah. Honestly, not sure if you have to even expand from there. That pretty much covers it. Mm. Yeah. Great. It's great. I have... I am having an incredibly normal one about that. Yep. Yep. Oh, right. I'm sorry. It's been like a week for you. I apologize. 
it wasn't even that for us in the thing, was it? It was like a day tops. Yeah, but weren't we like in the cell with Polydectes for a week before yeah. that happened? Correct. Oh, that's true. I'm sorry. I thought you meant the uh, the trip for some reason. Kayla, you've been quiet. Uh, how do you fall into all this? I was part of the people that helped to save them when they were doing the Meraviclia. That's all you need to know about me right now. Well, fair enough. Sounds like it was kind of you to stay with them after then. Kaylee just nods and takes a bite of his rabbit as he's still just looking at you. He's just trying to give him a reassuring smile. Um, with the holes in his face, it probably doesn't come across exactly the way he's hoping. No, not at all. Hey, we don't know much about your background either, uh, Polydectes. We know you're here, but... Well, I was... Um, I suppose I grew up in Zell. After I did, I traveled around uh, other colleges, universities looking to improve my skills. Uh, eventually, I heard about the College of Darmium over in Lords, and I needed a, a spot in order to conduct my research, set up shop, and I thought Lords would be an ideal spot. Away from it all, a place where I could attain the, the highest levels of magic got rather surprised when Darmium turned their back on me. I was good. I wasn't I wasn't this good yet, though. So, I just began working around lords. Uh, eventually, I fell in with Fion Byrne. And that kind of sealed my fate. had uh, two fathers and they I mean, they should be in care Ortis now hopefully much older than the last time I saw them uh, much else from that I, I don't know you know when you go to Lords you leave a lot of your other life behind everyone you knew everything you were, it just kind of gets eaten. Nothing really escapes that place. Not even past ties. So, yeah. And he's just going to slurp some more soup. Neza will also slurp more soup. But quietly. But quietly. Then at this point, Krina will nod. I must be departing. I remember what I have said. May all of you be well enough. And as she 
stands, the table and the food disappear, just without a trace. And then she is going to make her way out of the room. It would be so fucked up if the food disappeared out of our I was just thinking, well. like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Can we like, say this was, like, mid-bite? Yeah. Did the food stay? No, it, it left. Oh, no. <laughs> Do we feel hungry still? No. Okay. Well, I suppose we should generally wash up. A lot of blood. Yeah, it's probably a good idea. Right. And at this point, you have a little bit of downtime to work with. So what are y'all trying to do? Um... I have two things I want to try and do. Okay. Um, one is I would actually no, no, just one thing. Um, I would like to try and working with polydectes and looking over the lance and all of our notes and equations and stuff like that. I want to try and make an actual list of uh, used materials and things that could in theory be used to make minute adjustments or improvements and just make a list of that so that I have it and just sort of in the middle not even direct middle like lower half just like another thing on the list I'll put amethysts okay gotcha um, then you can make a mental check at benefit one. Cool. Okay. That's four successes. Four successes? Okay. Then let's see here. Interesting. Okay, then you make that list. Okay. And just kind of slip the amethyst in there. Yep. What else are you up to? Um. Like, for me, I just, I can't get over this for the fact that for me it was 42 days. I am mm -hmm. grilling my friends here about what happened fair oh yeah nays would be so excited to give a full mission report to both you and polydectes great I'm, I'm sorry go back elephant snake yeah i don't have a great drawing of it um but it was well it also had legs so i don't know that it was 100 percent a snake but it was massive you can see it had, you can't see because it's a terrible shitty drawing it had this tail here um it also stood up on its legs its front um like its underbelly was armored really heavily um but there were parts of it that were a lot weaker as well um its jaw sort of unhinged almost split like a snake have you ever seen a snake yawning uh-huh it's like that but all the time with that thing and it had several different trunks those are trunks not whiskers or tusks excuse me and it was incredibly it was it looked like just a kid though like a baby um, oh so i suppose we're huh. lucky on that count but it was incredibly difficult If you've ever heard of them, uh, it was a Groot Sling. Have I ever heard that term before? No. Huh. Uh, nope, that doesn't help. Um, and, uh, forgive me, but what, 
I, not what were you doing there. I understand that you were thrown there, but were you just... Did they just sort of come upon you, or...? Oh, the Grootsling was chasing me. Ah! Huh. Yeah, no, I happened to run into their camp, and they helped me out, thankfully. Hmm. That thing was hungry. Okay, so... Giant... Elephant... Snake... With... With feet and six tusks that's also carnivorous. Or was it hungry or was it pissed off or like, do I know what its deal was? No. No clue. Okay. It could have been hungry, could have been territorial. I don't actually know. Huh. Definitely wanted me dead though. And... Uh, by the extension, by extension, your friends as well. Right. Huh. Uh, how? And I know that the sort of time difference for you has been nine years. How much of that was perceived by you? How, from your point of view, how long you've been gone? What would that be? Or at least I, I assume the warrants would have been tricky to count. Uh, how long did it feel like I was in the arena and Ostrion? Ostrion, you were there for probably a few hours. The arena, impossible to tell. Like you just kind of <sighs> lost all sense of time. I mean, it's the same thing of being locked in a padded cell without seeing the sun for who knows how long. Like, at some point, it just all blurs together, and it's just time. Very fair. Um, <sighs> Ostrion was a couple hours. Not sure about the Warrens. Not sure about the arena. The arena certainly felt like a very, very long time. I tried to keep track for a while, but eh, with, it didn't work out. With, with your permission, can I give you a checkup? It sounds like you need one. If you want to, I think I I, I feel fine. Well, but if you knock yourself out, I guess. Well, if I've learned one thing while being here is that even if you feel fine, you might not be fine. And I'll just give Vichy a quick checkup. Okay, then, yeah, make a medical check. Cool. Um, do I still have my analyzer? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, let's... Uh, nine. Nine. Very, very cool. Can you come to the side one with me? Oh, okay. Oh, cool. Oh. Hey, Dalton. Hey. So, as you begin to analyze, um, this motherfucker doesn't make any sense. They have okay, great. They have holes in them. They're missing most of their insides. You literally, as you're checking through and doing a scan, you're like, they have a fourth of their heart. A fourth. And it's not even all connected. Some of it's just floating in this dark, empty void within. So, okay, missing portions of organs. Missing, not just portions of organs. Like, again, there are just holes where, like, as you do the scan, you could just look into the face and, like, look down directly into the chest cavity. Okay, void... They got void. Um, there are so many like parts and pieces where you're like, how how do I give a checkup? Like, what is going on? And then you're like, okay, I should be very thorough here. And so you are. 
And as you're doing the check, there, you, with nine successes, start to realize they are not fully here. And this thing that had them, the Warrens, it's still kind of chewing on them a bit. And you're not exactly sure what that means. Um, but you are able to detect kind of this dimensional thread, um, which with nine successes, you can kind of interpret as almost like, like a tether that the Warrens have put on this individual. And the tether is ever so slightly just kind of like being tugged like a spider's web with a fly. This entity has not given up pursuit of Vicha. Oh. It's coming. Okay. Mm. And based on some of the looks that Vicha gives you as you're you're doing the checkup and just your own doctoral intuition, he knows that. He knows he's oh, okay. being hunted. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. um, but actually, like, getting this thing out of him, like, th there's just not a lot of Vicha left. Right. Okay. Um, and... There is a part of you that's even like, did this thing let him go? And if so, for what purpose? And that's a whole other can of worms. Uh, but that's what you get with a nine. Okay. All right, back to main. Cool, yeah. He, oh, I got to send, I'll send you what I sent him later. But essentially it was a passage from his own school shootery manifesto uh, left by the scene of the crime. Yeah. What was the conversation where we yeah, forgot? Yeah, hold up. Like, rewind. Rewind. And we were talking about what I did on Saturday. And? What? <laughs> and I made... That doesn't help. And I made pretty art. Look. We were talking about Adnath's crime, Dalton. Oh. Oh, that. <laughs> that would be the manifesto, too. <laughs> I don't have the full one, but I just have the little passage. Uh, that when I sent it to Dalton, he audibly went uh oh my god hey yeah i was trying quite... to kill my guy speed it up Jesus yeah i was quite Christ. i was quite viscerally upset um <clears throat> i didn't but... i didn't do any of that i made i made some fun art yeah get farted on <laughs> anyways um <laughs> I will say that while he's giving this checkup, at a certain point, probably very quickly, Elhan's eyes go wide, and I don't think he blinks for, like, the remainder of the checkup. <laughs> Something wrong there, Doctor? Are you aware that you are missing several organs, including a quarter of your heart? I mean, I guess I didn't give a count, but I was aware that parts of my body were missing. Yes. And he'll kind of gesture to the holes in his face. Um. Right. Um. Listen, I, um. I think I understand what's going on. And what is going on is very bad. And I think you know that. And I think you also know what's going on. I'm aware a couple things have a grasp on me, if that's what you're referring to. It is. Also, the um, active nature of that grasping. 
I'm sorry, who is firmly grasping our new friend? Who isn't the correct term to use there? What is firmly grasping our new friend? Is our it new a best friend from the warrants? Listen, Vicha, this is a thing that's going to have to be discussed. I don't want to speak for you, but. Well, it's to be expected that it's not happy with me escaping. Uh, I did see it start to peek its head in when we left Ostreon. Uh, but you know, it is what it is. I figure if we have bigger things on our plates now, and... I figure there's a different point in time we should tackle it. I have a Kaylee, I feel like I have I'm compelled to ask we I told you I was upfront about having been captured by the Warrens. Mm-hmm. Right. Actively hunted? I wasn't aware I was being actively hunted until I saw the traces of it in Ostreon as we were leaving. You all also didn't warn me about the devilish contract. Or the plant zombie apocalypse. At this point, by the way, we wouldn't know the terms blossomed, right? Or impure? No. Okay, I just wanted to make sure it makes sense in lore to keep calling it a plant zombie apocalypse. Mm -hmm. okay, I'm, I'm sorry about not bringing up the hunting. I, there has just been a lot of information to get through. From my uh, look through, despite large portions of their body missing, does it seem like those sections of the body are still functioning as normal? Yeah, still functioning as normal. Huh. I mean, they're missing a liver, but the liver functions are somehow still getting done. That's so incredible. So simply wondrous. At, uh, quit. Is the Aether at, from the Aether Soul filling in the gaps? At, well, I mean, is that possible? Yeah, I mean, that doesn't seem <laughs> right. Yeah, that that doesn't track with you necessarily. And you're like, I mean, if it was going to fill from, in the gaps. Wouldn't it just fill in the big gap? Yeah, yeah wouldn't it a new just liver. actually fill it in? Yeah. From my best guess, and I will reiterate, this is a guess, um, the portions that are missing are simply still in the warrants and acting as if the distance is not a problem. That's so cool. Colin, does that seem accurate to me? Or the does it seem more like the other influence might be what's contributing to me still having function? Who even knows? <laughs> Fair. You created a fucked up cocktail of a guy. Yeah, I did. <sighs> um, I don't know. I would assume the Warrens swallowed those parts? I don't actually know, yeah. though. No, you're, you're right. Um, I, I'll be honest. I'm used to, you know, patching holes in people and... But, you know, in less of a... 
void sense. Or, and like, you know, there's still muscle and skin that can regrow. Uh, yeah, I'm a bit, tad bit out of my element in this one. Right. Well, if you want to feel helpful, I think the Groot Sling dislocated my shoulder. Yeah, okay, I can do something about that, I guess. Is the shoulder there? Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Shoulders there. Then, then yeah, I'll go ahead and try and fix the shoulder. Yeah, as you go, um, you can technically pop the sol- the sh- uh, shoulder back into place. You do the technique correctly. You don't hear a pop. You're like, okay, huh? And but hey, Vicha, you feel better. Dislocated shoulder fixed. I take my. Seems like you got it. <laughs> I take another look. Is that socket just not there? I mean, you think at least some of the socket is there. Goodness, it has to be. (laughs) Okay. Um, Oh, that did something, I guess. Yeah, feels like it did. Uh, Thank you, doctor. Door. Huh. I uh, sorry. No. You s- proceed. You said you detected the warrants. Was there anything else you detected? Um. Hang on, let me just look through my notes real quick. Uh, Holes, missing portions, and whole organs. Void, not fully here. Partially eaten by war. Uh, Besides the sort of tether situation, um, that's about what I got. Tether situation? Well, um... You ever see a spider eat a fly that's caught in its in its web? Ah, uh, that's where you're going with that. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um. It, yeah, it's that. As in, I can sort of partially detect a connection that is being tugged on. Right. That may be the other influence I referred to. Um, Grimoire I had passing contact with. Um, That one shouldn't affect the rest of you, though, I don't think. Sorry, Grimoire? Uh, Yes. Is that the thing that got you stuck in the first place? No, that's the thing that got me out. Ah. Okay. Well, I suppose you could say I got stuck in it at one point, but I got out of that. Left a bit of a mark, though. Okay. Sometimes the which, mark works a bit to my advantage. Which marks would those be? Or not physically? Uh, nothing physical. Ah. All right. Yeah. Yes, oh. in the interest of full disclosure, that's the other influence. But like I said, I don't think that one should bother you all. All right. Uh-huh. You know, hey, Colin. Let me know if you start to feel a little trapped. Huh. <laughs> well, we're trapped anyways. That's not... Yeah. 
I think even if you tell him to not worry about it, Alon's probably gonna worry about it. He's probably gonna get a headache about it later. I'm sorry, dude. It's... It's just what my life is. It's alright. I've had a headache for... the entire time. Now I just get to know it's justified. Yeah. Being around us tends to have that effect on people, unfortunately. I have had a consistent migraine for over a year. I am so sorry. I have actually, at certain points, checked myself for stroke or cancer symptoms. I don't have them. That's just there now, I guess. I love you, Alon. Do you want me to make you a cozy sweater to make you feel better? With what yarn, Boudica? We don't have access to yarn. Eventually, like, when I'm- eventually, when I do, would you like a comforting sweater? You know what, sure. What colors do you like? Green. Okay. Boudica <laughs> will. Boudica would, okay? <laughs> <laughs> if she had to. Hey, Colin. Yes. So, just to ask, <laughs> I doubt this is the case, but I figured I might as well ask, with our current plan of, you know, the amethyst and the dimensional stack and all this other stuff trying to get us out of our demonic or devilish contracts, um, do I think that that will affect this Warren's tether in any way? It might. Okay. Best case scenario. Cool. <sighs> do you want to have Polydectes do a little bit more checking and maybe see what a, some potential effects could be? I would like that, yes. Gotcha. Yeah, like, following day, like, he would come back after doing a little bit more checking, and he would kind of nod. All right, um, there's the possibility that, uh, this would affect the tether, at least help shield Vicha for a bit, um, um, uh, unless ever they came across the Warrens again. So, good mm -hmm. news. I do have to say possibility for bad news, though. Is the uh, fact that by virtue of making this trip we'll be passing through the Warrens a problem? That is a potential problem, yes. There is um, the secondary problem that um, the Warrens is headed this way. <laughs> Ah, um, it's it's sending its tendrils up through the cosmic stack, and it will soon likely reach this area, um, and will attempt to consume Vicha and us and anything else around. Okay. Fuck. We have three days to get ready for this next jump. Else we're dead. And it is here we will end the session for today. Pick up the is the equivalent of like finding a chair out on the street and going, This looks great, and it's wood, so that means there can't be any bed bugs in the upholstery, and bringing it into your house and finding out it is absolutely riddled with bed bugs. No, finding Vicha is like finding a chair on the side of the road, bringing it home, and finding out that the upholstery has just sort of nestled within it the, um, the Black Plague. <laughs> Fine. Yeah, it's your fault for Y'all got me entered into a devilish contract. <laughs> you got us entered into death! <laughs> <laughs> you got an entire dimension after our asses now. <laughs> oh, boo-hoo. <laughs> Get a taste of it. <laughs> boo-hoo! <laughs>
<laughs> this was the end. This was what the last campaign was about. <laughs> I should have left your ass on that street corner where I found you. I should have let that. I should have let that Groot snake, that Groot slang have you. A moment, let me double check my notes. Uh, Vicha is still attached to the Malefic Warrens. Oh my god, I forgot about that. And is being hunted, yes. <laughs> we have three days. Yeah. That's not good. For those of you, you that don't, don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Which should be no one here. <laughs> and with that, we will pick up the following day after that little revelation so there is a period of time between when you will be needing to depart and now ideally you have another two days before you have to go so is there anything that you are trying to accomplish mind you another thing that happened was a lawn skillfully put in an order for some amethyst stones and you would receive that order this day. Excellent. Damn, same day shipping. Because we know that happened after midnight. Probably didn't. It did. But it's funnier if we think it is. <laughs> well, great. Um, well, I guess I'll start Talking it over with Polydectes on how we start infusing these. He is kind of going to look them over. Well, we need somebody that can utilize low magic. Or not low, oh, low? But primordial. I thought it was primordial. Yes. Yeah. And somehow dump it into these crystals. Other than that, I don't exactly know. I can do some. I don't know how exactly I infuse it, though. Well, the infusion process for most alchemical items usually consists of, well, going and, um, uh, channeling the magic so that it flows in the right way. Yeah, almost like a building a, what you call it, a, a canal for the mm. magic itself. Oh. Um, forgive me if this is something that is in one of the lore documents I haven't read in a while. Uh, Torvians, are those a specific type of magic? They are their own specific field, yeah. Their own thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, well, I'll sort of with, speak with Polydectes. Well, I got a couple things I can do in regards to primordial magics. I have a cauldron that I work with that I can summon probably the easiest method uh i also have a sort of transformation i can do not sure how i would direct that specifically um i can heal but i'm not particularly certain if that's primordial i imagine it is most of my magic is but i also know that that's at least tends to be a high magic thing not exactly. I mean, the healing process is accessible to any and all types of magic. Mm. It's most accessible with high, as you don't have to draw the healing from anywhere. But um, the primordial can do it. Usually it's a matter of accelerating the the natural process of the healing or um, bringing in an overwhelming amount of energy from the area surrounding the subject. 
would it make the most sense for me to try and use all three? Probably just try the healing first. And if it all works, right. then repeat it until we have enough. All right. In that case, I'm going to start pouring heal fours into these amethyst stones. Yeah, one heal is enough to fill up an amethyst stone with okay, primordial and magic. And we and we need four, yeah? Uh, you would need five. Five, right. Well, sick. Well, Polydectes is staying here. He doesn't get oh, right. sent down the dimensional lands. Fair enough. Okay. Um, five. Well, I can only do this three times for rest. Um, and a, a quick rest is only an hour, right? Yeah, quick rest is only an hour. Okay, then yeah, I'll spend a couple hours just loading up five amethysts. Gotcha. And you can certainly do that. Cool. Guess I'll just sort of pass those out then. Cool, cool. And um, the the heal four power that requires, I think you say quick, but it requires a complete rest for it. Oh, I thought it was just I thought it was just rest period. Uh, yeah. hmm. Okay. So I, mean, I think it, you still would have time to do that. Yeah, you would still do. Yeah, it. I got we got we got two days. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, I'll do that. Um. Working with them and also speaking with Polydecti a little, how easy do I think these will be to break? I mean, they are gemstones without the sure. normal difficulty of breaking a gemstone. For someone like Boudica, very easy to break a gemstone for her. <laughs> if you have someone of Naze's physical prowess, perhaps a bit more difficult. But fear mm. not, I have Arcane Strike. We're so back. I don't know if that works on these actually. Does it? Do I think it, it will? Creature. Okay, then I think that's a I no. Take it back. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Do you have to break okay. your own, or can one of us break it for you? I have I imagine... two. I can figure this out. I it's imagine. Not it's... One. Well, sure. I imagine it's break your own because we need one per person. I have a feeling that breaking the amethyst infuses the person that does it with the effect we're looking for. Mm hmm So. Ah, gotcha. Yeah. But um, I might be able to use Arcane Strike on myself and with the amethyst in the way. What? I'm not kidding. <laughs> Colin, stop laughing. <laughs> what? I... Do okay. you hurt yourself? Run me through this idea. What's this plan you have? I hold the amethyst. Uh huh. I use arcane strike on myself through the amethyst. Uh -huh. If it can only target creatures, won't it just pass through the amethyst? Potentially. Kaylee is going to pick up a hammer from one of the tables and walk it over to you. Could you <laughs> use this? I did not realize this was happening in character. I could definitely try. Yeah, that would be really helpful. Much better than, Hang like, on. these boots. Thank you. Hang on. Uh, I will bring my cauldron up. Okay. And make a gambler's tonic and hand one of my other ones to Nasa. Okay. Thank you. You, you, need, you need four more dice on this. I don't know what that means, but okay. <laughs> I appreciate it. Sure. Oh, I, I know this. It's an old Carthonian uh, superstition. How everyone has a certain pool of dice as they go through the world, depending on certain tasks that they uh, try and do. Guess what he's saying is, with a gambler's tonic, you're adding more dice to your dice pool. Perhaps four yeah, of it's them. Yeah, it's a... It's Lick Luck. It's so sweet. Is that canon? 
It's an old Carthonian superstition. Because <laughs> I will be writing an entire treatise on that. Okay. I'm cool if it is now. I actually Not like that. out of character, to be clear. In character. <laughs> well, that's less cool. Uh, dang. Uh, hey, Vicha, on a scale of 1 to 10, how would you say you are in the muscle region? Colin, given that I have prestige 1 and a physical of 10, I, I think I'm fine, right? <laughs> Probably. As long okay, as things cool. don't go horribly wrong. Cool, cool, cool. I should cool, be cool. able to crush it just fine. Great. And I'll Fantastic. launch quickly. <laughs> I imagine it's quite off-putting, considering only some of his muscular structure is present. Yes. <laughs> Again, Probably. Like, this, this motherfucker, Alon, is just a medical marvel but also instills you with existential dread. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay. Ah. <laughs> uh. Um. I'm gonna... Actually, I'm gonna grab a, an extra hammer as well, because the only other weapon I have is a spear, and I imagine that'd be quite difficult to try and aim at a single amethyst gemstone uh likely yes i wonder if maybe we could build a nutcracker that might be easier too a nutcracker but not one of those decorative ones that rich people have <laughs> but like a functional one <laughs> the little metal thing gemstone is harder than a nut yeah but yeah I, well Sure, I, I get where you're coming from, Naza, but I imagine, given how gemstones typically form, I imagine amethyst is quite tough in terms of compression force. That's true. I was just thinking of if we were trying to do this on the move or very quickly, it might be a lot harder to stop, drop the gemstone and hit it against a surface rather than have something that we can just press with one hand. Well, I haven't made this trip before. What was it like for you all going up and going down? Very taxing. Not a lot of solid surfaces. Okay, well, that that was more my question. Did you hit ground, or was it mostly free fall? We did eventually hit ground at our destination. Okay, free fall then. Were you falling the entire way down and flying the entire way up? Colin, do you think that's an accurate description? Um, more falling both ways. More falling both ways. Gotcha. All right. <clears throat> um... Also, since I don't want what I did to look suspicious, I will actually try and implement a couple of the other materials I requisitioned. Okay, do you just want to put a bunch of doohickeys and gizmos on, like, the dimensional lands controls and they just Basically, don't do anything? Basically, I want it... it it's, they're not doing a damn thing. <laughs> okay. It's going to look like Polydectes is flying a TARDIS with all, like, the things he's going to turn and all the knobs <laughs> he's going to flip. It, it, really, he just needs to hit one button, but... Listen, listen. We have a budget, and if we don't use all of it, we won't get more next time. Oh, so true. We have to use all of the money. <laughs> I don't care if we don't need to. We need to use all of it. Every last cent. I imagine Kayla is going to be fine with the crushing of the amethyst. He seems. Yeah, Kayla, you don't think he's that concerned? Yeah, no. I figured not. Yeah, um. 
the ranger doesn't seem too put off by needing to crush a gemstone. Cool. All right, let's see. My physical score is 10. That's probably good. Um... Ten. Hey, actually, a name... high roller over here. <laughs> well, it's probably fine, I figure. Um, hey, Naza, do you still have that magic knife? Naza will search in her bag very quickly. I have a one, and she'll hand out a dagger with sharp one. Sharp one. I gave my other one to... I gave my other one to you to give to Diana, though. Did you ever end up handing it to her? I believe I gave it to her. I instructed her to focus more on ranged combat, but I did give it to her. Okay. And that's the only other one I have. Right. It's also my um, only magical weapon, but I don't really use weapons anyway, so... Sure. Oh my god. Could you teach me how to enchant... She's gonna turn to Polydectes. How to enchant this, and she will uh, offer out Aoife's saber. I can do that. What are you wanting to put on this piece? I just was hoping to add out of character either... Hmm. Either wolf pack or sheer, if I can. Hmm. Likely the easier one is going to be the ability to gain power from uh, the combined aether of others around you. More that are aligned with your intent, the more powerful this uh, weapon can become. Uh, if we can begin putting our heads to it, uh, I can handle the more technical details, and I'll start to walk you through the process of figuring out uh, this type of enchantment. What do you say? Sounds good. Alright. Um, well, we don't really have much else to do. Alon's just throwing his gibble gobbles on the machine, so... Um, Alon, you got it? Yeah. Alright. And Polydectes is going to lead you over to the workbench and you can go ahead and make a mental check for me at benefit love one in addition because polydectes is helping you great i love benefit and i love mental checks eight successes eight successes okay then by the time you are ready to depart Polydectes has taken your own design for Wolfpack and has executed your writing and made sure to help you tweak and correct where you need to. But now this saber has Wolfpack on it. I'm going to make my brother so proud. All right, so does that mean we're nearing launch time? If there's nothing else you guys wish to do. Well, let's see. Anyway, I think Vicha and Boudica are all set, more or less, with the crushing of the gem. I've given Neza basically all the help I can with that with the tonic, and I'm going to take one myself on the way back up, so I can hopefully boost myself a little bit, too. Uh, we got the gems. They're infused properly. I don't think I have anything else. Gotcha. Uh, unless anyone else does, of course. Hmm. Boudica, do you have anything? Nope. Nope. Okay. And what about Vicha? I don't think Vicha has anything. I think probably the first chance he got to sleep, he'd slept for a worryingly long time. Um, 
Okay. But beyond that, I think he probably just kind of shadowed the others as they were working. Um, just kind of very interested in all the um, the stuff going on with the dimensional lance. Gotcha. Also, I will remind Naza that we need to break the gems on the way back up, so don't drink the gambler's tonic right away. Naza has not forgotten. Neither did I. Cool. We have to cover our bases. Yes, I appreciate it. I do. Yeah, because the tonic only affects your next roll, so. Right. You gotta save it. All right. Then are all of you good to go? I suppose so. All right. Yep. Then on the 62nd of Lion Year, 710 AR, all of you gather up your things as you are led down the hallway to the dimensional lance. It stands there in the middle of the room, this strange twisted helix. And Polydectes will just give all of you a nod. All right. It's close now, given all the dimensional readings. Hopefully it will go scurrying you after you again. But you should be far enough down. If everything goes well, where... Well... I suppose uh, it shouldn't matter much. But, once again, all of you good luck. And he begins to head over to the control module for the dimensional lands. He begins punching in coordinates. And you can see, Alon, he begins to quickly spin around this wheel that does nothing. Punches buttons <laughs> that light up and flash that make sound effects that also do nothing. A whole bunch of nothing is happening as Dimensional Lance is powering up. All right. All of you get on. And safe journeys. Yep. Get on. And... Getting on. As Get you on. do, you begin to feel the whirling of Dimensional Power once again. As Polydectes throws one of the levers that actually does something. And then, <laughs> Alon you feel your body immediately become light. And the light spreads as if your entire consciousness is filling up the chamber before you are shot down, down through the cosmic stack. Lights, sensations, emotions, everything passing by you. And as you keep on descending, further and further and further you are going faster than you ever have before as everything begins to distort you are no longer one sentient being but just light and sensation and then almost all at once it all begins to coalesce as you blink and you see particles drifting down from a dark sky. Take a breath. And you look around. There are islands floating here. Islands that float in an infinite void amongst this drifting snow. This is the description that you remember Polydectes giving you of the drift. As you look around, all of you see each other. You've all made it to the bottom of the cosmic stack. Okay. Huh. Uh. But I see any movement? Movement? Aside from the falling, drifting snow 
and the occasional bobbing up and down of the islands. Not much. The only thing that would really catch your eye is in the distance there seems to be a, a larger swirling of this falling snow-like material. Can I tell what that is? Make a mental check. Okay. Out of curiosity, since I've studied dimensions in general, would I know what it is? Um, for you... So, Alon, you would just pick up that the particles falling from the top of this void are just congregating more there. You, Vicha, you would know that this falling particle essence is miracle dust. This strange, almost mythic material used here by those who call the drift home to essentially perform miracles, miracles that they need to survive. It appears like something is drawing this snow into it in the distance. What exactly you don't know? Um, I mean, it's definitely not a phenomena that you have ever read about. Gotcha. And Boudica, it's at this moment that you would see uh, maybe... 30 or 40 feet kind of ahead of you on this floating piece of material from underneath the floating island you can see a fat brown squirrel just climb up on top of the rock and seemingly gather a little bit of plant matter that's here and will kind of look at you sideways oh they got funky fellas down here too I see Just kind of looks at you. You can see it will then like take this plant matter and we'll just stuff it in one side of its cheek. And then you watch as this squirrel like runs to the edge of this drifting island, opens its arms, revealing this flap of skin connecting its limbs, and it will glide over to the next island away from you. There he goes. Uh. Elon's going to sort of bounce on his toes a second. Does gravity feel the same here? It does. Okay. So these islands are floating some other way. When when Elon bounces, can I, like, pick him up to make him feel like he's floating? <laughs> sure. Go for it. I feel like <laughs> I'm going to feel a pair of hands. Yes, you would. <laughs> But you're having a titanic moment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picking you up like Simba. Uh, okay. okay. <laughs> I think we should uh, try to catch a small handful um, of the miracle dust uh, just to get a bit of a closer look at it. Okay. It's this, you know, white dust with these strange, like, flecks of gold in it. The miracle dust that you read about was much more solid gold than this. Is it like ash, sort of? No, because ash kind of has a, a grayish white to it. This is like, more like solid white with like a, a yellow tinge. Not even like oh. a yellow tinge, mostly. Like flecks of yellow mm. in it, too. It's like someone lightly pissed in the snow, and then like in at <laughs> one point they heavily pissed in the snow. Sure. That's great, Colin. 
thank you for that. Anyway, my next question <laughs> I am is going to be, does it look edible? Uh, yeah, it looks edible. Go ahead. What? Why? Uh, no check needed? Yeah, it looks edible. I'm so scared about that, but I will... Yeah. Do you Carefully. remember the last time you ate a strange foreign substance? Yeah, 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 yeah. I haven't done it in a while. I've, I've saved up for now. <laughs> Not how that works. <laughs> Why? Very, very, very carefully and very, very gently take a very tiny piece and sort of like lick it almost. Not fully consuming it, but just like seeing if something happens. Yeah, um, as you kind of eat this like little tiny piece... Um, uh, strange. It kind of tastes like a peach. Does anything weird happen? Uh, not to your knowledge. Elan immediately leaps towards Nathan oh, as soon as she's been poisoned. Do you want to use your analyzer to see if that did Yes, anything? that's what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Make a mental medical check. Whoa. Out of curiosity, the material I read that um, uh, that said it was much more solid gold than this. Do I remember when that was published? Make a mental like check. Like when that information is from. Okay. And what did you get along? Seven. Seven? As you do the normal scan, uh, Neza seems to be fine. There is no difference from her baseline vitals. Okay. You seem okay. That's good. Yeah. Uh, I got a one on my check. You don't remember then. Fair enough. That is so many threes. Well, uh, I'd be careful about eating any more of that. This weird. I've read a little bit about the drift, but the miracle dust is supposed to be more of like a solid gold, not just flecked with gold. You know what that's supposed to be? And I point to, like, the area where it's dropping in heavier amounts. Uh, now, I... I haven't read anything like that. It seems that whatever that is, it's new. Uh. Uh, it, it seems remember. like it's being drawn in by something, but... Do you remember if there's supposed to be people here? Or anything besides squirrels, I guess? Um, Colin, do I generally know the lore stuff I knew based um, on, like, the one-shot and stuff like that? Yeah. Uh, there are people who live in this dimension. Yeah, they um, they generally use the miracle dust. Um, well, for miracles, it's how they survive out here. Huh. So what you're saying is yeah. I just ate thirty thousand U.S. dollars. What? What's a U.S. dollar? <laughs> that was not in character. <laughs> it would be ten times funnier if it was in character, though. Do miracles cost thirty thousand U.S. dollars? God damn! What a bargain! <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, if that's it. I mean, <laughs> curing cancer tiny, is just a tiny skill black. issue. Huh. Uh. By any chance, do you know how the people here get around? Um, out of character, um, 
Well, I would Vicha know about the kind of like connecting ropes and stuff? Yeah, connecting ropes and regular old hopping. Huh? From what I know, they kind of just jump or they, they tie ropes between the islands. Um, looking around, do we see any of those ropes? Uh, as you look kind of further in the distance, there are like some ropes connecting islands that have a bit more distance between them. Then I'll uh, Vicha will point those out. Uh, like those over there. How big's the island we're standing on? This island you're standing on is probably about 200 like square feet. Okay. So we can see the entire thing? You can't, yes. It's not huge at all. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Um... So, again, I didn't do this the first time. What now? Like, do you guys just get called back, or what? Eventually. Right, so we just have to kill time. Yeah. We just need this thing to charge up first. Right. Even though I know generally what dimension we're in can i should i still stab that thing into the ground um was the, i was like given that specific instruction the analyzer mm -hmm. uh i mean the instructions for once you got to the drift was to head to point zeta and to use it right We don't happen to know where Point Zeta is. Mm. But I have a guess. So, you all remember how we were told to go to Point Zeta and then use this. Um, do you think it could be where all of that miracle dust is coalescing? Could be. Probably a pretty good guess. If I, I wouldn't have heard of uh, Zeta Point, would I have? No, it's not anything you would have heard of before, and it seems like just a bit of jargon that Fion and his bosses are using. Right. All right. Uh, yeah, I suppose a mass amount of Miracle Dust wouldn't be a bad guess. Sure. Then okay, how far headed... away is... Oh, go ahead. Are we headed in that direction, then? <sighs> I mean... I hesitate to, be just because of the source of that instruction, but... I guess we might as well move at all. Uh, how far away is the next island? The next island, as you kind of look, it's probably like a four or five foot jump. Oh, okay. You know, many of these islands aren't significant jumps away. Okay, cool. You also have your BFF Boudica. Who can R fly? Yes, of course. Thank you, Boudica. <laughs> uh, I think I can make this one. Thank you. And I'll just leap over to the next one. Cool. And as you leap over to the next one, this island kind of wobbles a bit, but it stabilizes out. Oh, that's great. Great, great, great. All right. We may want to do this one one at a time. Right, good idea. Gotcha. Then. Um, how big is this? Is this another small one? This one is probably a hundred square feet, half the size of the first one. Okay. Is there a bigger one that's in the direction we're trying to go? I mean, yeah. As you 
look out, maybe a few more jumps away, there's one that is probably like 2,000 square feet easy. Cool, cool. Like, they, they all kind of vary in size and elevation. Right. Okay. But I'm assuming you guys are uh. continuing to, to hop and move. Yep. Then I'd yep. like each of you to go ahead and make physical checks as you attempt to make your way through this place. Um, by the way, I should also mention that your stamina points are all at zero right now. Right. I don't suppose That's I lovely. could requisition help from Boudica, who can fly. Boudica, are you trying to carry Naza the whole time? Not carry, but help. That is not right. I think. How the hell? I think you <laughs> should actually you. help Beecha. I've got this. Don't even worry about it. Go help Beecha. I have dead. Hang on, let me throw some hero points at this. I got a success. I'm good. <laughs> Go help Beach instead. What? Or my the world? fucking other two? How does two successes do? Out <laughs> <laughs> the fucking 15 dice. Man, you just suck so bad. <laughs> It's just going so bad. Um, so, as you make your way forward, Vicha, you jump, and as you do, you land on an island that's maybe like 30 square feet. You're like, haha, success! And then you feel the island starting to tip as it spins around, kind of inverting itself, as the rest of you turn back and see Vicha just being spun around and around and around, like he's in a washing machine. Zoop, 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 zoop. Uh, hey, Boudica, can you, uh... Stop that. Please. Boudica. <laughs> Zoop, 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 no. zoop, zoop. <laughs> uh, no. We can't. Oh, uh, Jack, Mike, is you... Hello? Hello? Governor? Jack, if you're talking, we still can't hear you? Yeah, still no. Okay, can you hear is me now? Yep, oh, yes, go. there you are. Oh my gosh, um... I said I was flying up and going to get him. Gotcha. Then, you know, Boudica kind of like shrugs, throws off her pack, you know, taking her time before gently flying over and just snagging Vicha, who at this point is a little green in the gills. He's probably hanging on to her for your life at this point. Something to stabilize him. Uh, and once he's on the ground, he probably is throwing up. There's nothing to throw up. Like, you just kind of, like, retch, and you see along, there's this puff of, like, air and dust that comes out. Elon sort of turns so Vicha can't see, and he takes a couple notes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Boudica. No problem. Now, if you have trouble with jumping again, just let me know, and I'll, 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 I will just, I will be happy to carry you from island to island if it needs to be like that. I, I don't need to be carried. Thank you. I. <laughs> Your next attempt will say otherwise. He's just going to journal what about this later. How he embarrassed <laughs> himself in front of the cool kids. <laughs> I don't think he thinks you're the cool kids. No, no, nah. no. What up? Uh, at this point, though, Boudica, you hear kind of uh, this squeaking sound as you see like coming up over a nearby um, like island. There's another squirrel that is like hopping along towards you. Squirrels. I wonder if maybe they will lead us to Zeta Point. 
And at that point, you watch as coming up over the side of the actual um, island itself is a raptor as it leaps out and sinks its jaws into the squirrel, like basically shaking it side to side, then flipping it up in the air and eating it as its little eyes focus on you, Boudica. Right. Let's lead ourselves away from that. And at this point, you watch as more of them begin to come up and over the side as the closest one to you begins to give this chirping sound. At this point, I'm going to need all of you to roll for order. It's Ah, raptor time! My peers. My peers. Get it? These are dinosaurs. (laughs) I'm an old lady. (laughs) Whoa. Whoa. It's so deep. It's so deep. Uh, Alon, what you get? Ten. Sorry, seven. Seven. Okay. Vicha. I got a 10. Well, that's good. That's good. That's where that 10 came from. Boudica. 10. Oh, okay. Well, that's where the 10 came from as well. That makes some sense. Naza. I assume Boudica's going first. (laughs) Yes. 7. Uh-huh. I'm going to assume Alon's going first there. Probably. Unless he's kind. What? Uh, (laughs) I'm going first. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well that was a very interesting series of roles that somehow has Kayle going first as Kayle is going to bonus action not bonus action background action light up his blade and then He's gonna look around. Are we fighting these things? Let's see if we can handle them, I guess. If we can't, we run. All right. And Kayle is going to move forward and he's going to attempt to attack this drift raptor. So let's see here. Benefit one plus an extra die because of the friendly dinosaur. Hole. Okay, he does well there as he's going to shave off two health blocks from this drift raptor with his strike as the beast begins to yelp and chirp as it starts to stumble backward. Did not like that at all. Uh, that will be Kayle's turn. Boudica, you're up. Um, so I'm gonna you see this drift wrapper. It was very cool of this raptor to, to, you know, get right next to me, because that means it's easy for me to stab it with my sword. That is so epic. That is going to be... 6 damage, 6 times 6 equals 36 points of damage. Yeah, how do you want to do this? Well, you see, I'm like, I don't I don't want to deal with the dinosaurs right now. We got so much to deal with, so I'm going to go ahead and try and go for the mid section of this beast and just try and, like, open it up from there. Absolutely. Maybe try and be extra intimidating to encourage the other raptors to go away. <laughs> All right. Now, as you kill this first one and kind of toss its body over to the side after opening it up, the raptors focus in on you. That's cool. Bring it on, baby. <laughs> okay. Is that your turn? Yeah, that's my turn. Okay. Vicha, you're up. Fantastic. Um, 
I'll go ahead and use my combat ability on Elon. So Elon can roll re-roll two dice during his next damage roll. Cool. Very nice. Um, let's see. I'm going to move a bit closer to Neza. Um, and I don't have anything ranged, so I'm going to hold my action for if any of the raptors come within sword range of me. Okay. Then, in that case, Alon, you're up. Alright, I'm gonna move over to, let's say, here. And use Fighting Spirit on myself, and let's call it Boudica, since apparently the raptors don't like her very much. And then I'll shoot that one. Okay. What did that raptor ever do to you? It existed. Well, that's I'm not a, a particular bit... fan of that. That's a little persnickety. Well, uh, yep. All right, that's five successes. That's forty points. Forty. Yeah, that's gonna be a health block from the raptor. Here. Yep. As the creature's getting ready to pounce and you pull back and fire as the bolt goes directly in the neck of this creature and begins yelping in pain. Oh, that's me. Okay, Naza, you're up. Alright, so I don't want to be pushed off. So I'm going to get as close to the center as I can. And then... I'm going to... She'll pull out her notebook and attempt to strike... Yeah. This one down here, the same one that Alon struck at. Okay. So let's see, that is going to be... Fucking forgot how to do math. Sorry, two seconds. 54 points of damage. Cool. How do you want to do this? I think her arcane strike at this point is going to be more like a wall that sort of pushes this. The not just like impact the creature in like a hard way, but pushes it off the edge as well. Gotcha. Finishing the job. Then the creature is struck, and as it tries to, like, find its footing, this invisible barrier sweeps under its legs and then just kind of fork lifts it off as you watch, Vicha, this raptor tumble into the abyss below. Anything nice else? job on that. <laughs> Thank you! And then she'll use her background action on Vitra because that was super sweet. Nice. Then, and that'll be her turn. Alright. Then it will be the blue group's turn as the top one will make that jump and then yeah, it's gonna run up on actually, it's gonna run up on a lawn. Oh my gosh. He's not here, man. That's bullying. <laughs> oh, is he not here? Well. No. He said BRB. Well, you know. I'm gonna. I can take it. No, no, no. Bullying action. It's what they would do. No. Yeah. Well, it only be five points of damage against Alon. I think he'd use a health block for it. <laughs> uh, likely, likely. Oh shit, actually I forgot he doesn't have stamina. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is a problem. Does he have armor block though? Oh, you're mm. still on headset. <laughs> so you can go there and then... 
This other mm. raptor, after jumping, is going to hold their action. So I will say Alon is using armor for that one. Then that will be that group of raptors' turn. It will be the next group as the raptor who was hiding underneath this island crawls up top. And he's going to go over here. Bridge. Bite, bite. And the Drift Raptors have a cool ability where their damage rating increases by two for each friend they have as they're biting. They're, they're a really cool group of Raptory guys. That would be 14 points of damage to a lawn with that bitey bite. Then this one's going to leap. And it's going to be going after... Good old Boudica. Mm. You're looking like a snack, a raptor snack. Yeah. For 15 normal slashing. I'm going to take that on an armor block. Gotcha. That will be the turn of the Drift Raptors, as it will be Kayle's turn now. And he is going to go ahead and run up to the raptor that just jumped in and take an attack against it. Holy moly. Well, that's right. Rubbing wild. it in. Yeah, he's going to run forward and slash off one of the arms of this raptor as it stumbles backward in pain. Uh, Boudica, you're up. This guy bit me. Mm -hmm. I don't much appreciate that. Oh, that's a shame. Not a fan of his work. That's going to be... Yeah, how do you want to do this? <laughs> well, Kaylee went for the arm. I went for the leg. And I'm going to throw the leg towards one of the other drift raptor raptors near Alon. Okay. As you cut off this raptor's leg... Like you're making raptor fin soup. The rest of the body tumbles into the abyss still alive as you toss the bit of leg over to the raptors nearest the lawn. I'm sending a, I'm sending a message. You gotta send a message. Yes, and that will be my turn. That will be. Oh wait, wait, wait. Mm I'm gonna use my movement. I believe I used five, so I'm gonna get over here very nice yes and is situate that your myself turn? yes that was my turn okay then vicha you're up fantastic okay um background action on a lawn because he could use it um and then I'm going to... Pudica's scooting up there, so I'll go ahead and move up to this one here, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I'll draw a systole, and I will stab into it. Okay. And I believe I get bonus die for one friend there. Yes. Okay. Um. Mm, you still continue to suck. Yeah, um, that is two successes, so I believe 28 points of damage at this point. 28 is enough to remove a health block, though. Dope. That means my damage rating goes up. Always appreciate it. Oh, shit, that's three health blocks because of, um, sheer one and the sheer power. Yep. How do you want to do this? <laughs> I think Vicha just kind of sidles up and just kind of takes a second to look it over and then Chef's Rapier probably straight into where he thinks the lungs are. Gotcha. And as you kind of move to the side, the raptor will scratch at you as you just gently thrust the rapier through its heart, instantly killing the thing as it just kind of slumps forward. Fantastic. 
And then, how much movement do I have left? I can... I believe if I slide down there, that's all the movement I got, because I only have 40 feet. I just remember it. I could have rerolled two of those with Maze's ability. It's fine. I still killed it. Mm -hmm. Um... That'll be my turn. Okay. It will be Alon's turn, and how many armor blocks do you have, Alon? None. Okay, so you had two. Or I used you... light armor, remember? Oh, then yeah, so... If you... Then you don't have armor, so I'm gonna need you to roll 2d6 well, used... twice. I used... I have... So I had ten stamina from armor, so I got through that first one, but... So, 10 stamina from from armor. So, wait, the first attack, okay, you were able to get well, through a second attack. That was attack. only 5 damage, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. A second attack, though, you would have taken on a health block. Yeah, All right. I, because I figure I can't use my shield while I'm using my crossbow. Yeah, um, so go okay. ahead and uh, roll 2d6 for me. Yep. 11. Your movement speed is reduced by 20 feet. Okay, that's not too bad. But it is your turn. As the okay. one who slashed at your leg and opened up a wound is sitting right in front of you. Right. Uh, I can't remember. Is there, like, any detriment or anything to trying to use a ranged weapon right next to the thing? Um, it, or is it, that not in wonder? It's not in wonder, no. Okay, cool. All right, in that case, I shoot it. <laughs> okay. Um. Uh, and you know what? I'll I'll use a point of surgeon's precision. Okay. I I already remember, I only have two points in that. Okay, so three. So that's gonna be. Forgot my stupid combat ability again. Whatever. Uh, twenty-one points. Twenty-one points we can take that on stamina. Okay, and now I do an actual check. All right, that's three more, so another 21. Gotcha. That would remove the health blocks then. Cool. As you lock into it and you fire, hitting this thing, like, basically in the mouth as you, like, fire down, pinning the tongue to the bottom of the jaw as the raptor is trying in vain to, like, wedge your bolt out. Sweet. I will give my fighting spirit to um, I guess I'll give it to Kaylee. Okay. And that'll be me. Okay. Naza. Alright. Uh, Naza's gonna attempt to attack this one down here. No, please kill the one next to me. <laughs> okay, fine. Thank you. Yes, we'll attack the one next to Alon. I really appreciate it. Like, a lot, actually. <laughs> I was trying to prevent problems before they happened. But that works, too. There was already uh, a problem here. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Um, So, she will attempt to attack that one, and I forgot I have to roll actual dice for that. Ooh, that is gonna be 45 damage. Oh wait, no. Because it's outnumbered. I almost forgot about that. Okay. Uh, another whatever damage I did last time. Gotcha. 6 times 9 is 54. Are you trying to throw this one off then as well? I think so, yeah. Then, with your powers, you toss this Drift Raptor out into the abyss. And then she'll give her background action to Vicha again. Okay. I'm making direct eye contact with you, Caleb. And then I don't know why, but thank you. My turn. Gotcha. Is it because I forgot? <laughs> yes. Then the last Drift Raptor will kind of look at everything happening here and then we'll 
leap kind of underneath this island and start trying to scuttle away. It it doesn't want any part of this anymore. Poor thing okay. watched its entire pack get absolutely executed. You just created its tragic backstory. Looking <laughs> slaughtered his family. Yes, uh. you did. And it felt pretty cool, if I'm being honest. You know... I did enjoy one-shotting uh, the one. That was fun. I yeah. do have to admit, I am now very worried that somewhere in this dimension there is a floor that just two raptor corpses will turn to mist upon. <laughs> uh, possibly. Just, <laughs> the raptors are just falling for days. They die mm -hmm. of dehydration. <laughs> but I'm assuming all of you are continuing on. Yeah. Um. Do I have all of my heal charges or did I use two today for the amethysts? Uh, you probably would have needed to use two today for the amethysts. Okay. Um, in that case, I'm gonna take a minute and triage myself. Gotcha. Just so I have some breathing room. Very fair. Very fair. I'll keep the heel in the back pocket in case it's needed. Okay, okay. Then, All right. anything else as you are about to leave or are heading to this place off in the distance? So, dinosaurs. <laughs> Is that... Forgive me if, like, I'm just having a massive forgetfulness spell is that a thing we're familiar with <laughs> um i mean these are definitely not creatures that are native to the rings right okay cool yeah. but you know you have been aware of them living in the drift uh you would know that there are many creatures who one way or another have found their way here over the years and have adapted to life in this harsh environment. Flying okay. squirrels are found here as well as drift raptors. Good to know. Mm -hmm. So not all that uncommon, at least here. All right. Let's continue on, I guess. All right. Then as you continue your way through this harsher landscape, you keep going for really hours on end, making your way closer, as it's not really like there's a sun here, but everything does begin to dim, you know, getting visibly darker. Are all of you wanting to rest, or are you trying to push through the dimming of the light? It doesn't get nearly as dark as night on the rings, Marathis, um, but it is just like decreased light down here. But there doesn't seem to be like a source of light, it's just present? It's just this ambient light, yes. Hmm. I think it would be pretty cool to have st stamina points, so I think at least a little bit of rest would be sick. That is a fair assessment. Gotcha. So you guys are setting up camp? Do we want to set up a watch as well? Yeah. If, uh, if those things are on the table, I think we best have a watch set up. All right. I'll that take uh, first. first. Okay. Oh. I'll take second. I can take third. I can take fourth. 
All right. Let's get some sleep then. Gotcha. Then all of you can take a complete rest as the watch goes on without incident. As the hours pass by here until you begin to stir on a lawn as the overall light once again just somehow begins to increase in this void. Hmm. This this might seem like a weird question. Does the light have like a particular color? Looking at it, there is a little bit of an orange tint to the sky. Okay. Most, most of the light isn't necessarily orange, though, but right now it's just a little bit of an orange hue. Like a sunrise would be. Not necessarily. Like... In a weird way, it's almost blotchy orange across the sky. Oh, okay. So it's not uniform? No, not at all. In fact, make a mental check. Okay. Uh, three. Three. Yeah, definitely blotchy. And you would more so see the orange, I guess, congregating uh, in the direction that you came from, where you initially dropped into this place. Huh. Say, Vicha, you said you know a bit about this place, yeah? Uh, a little, yeah. From what you're aware of, does it... I don't know how to even phrase this. Uh, do people who come here often make it back? I imagine coming here in the first place isn't very common, but... Would I know that... Colin? I, I think... I mean, based on, like, the book texts, like, I know people don't really come here, but it's also peaceful. Meant to be peaceful, so do I know if people generally returning when they visit? Hmm. There's not a lot of detail of people coming here. You assume that most return fine. Uh, they they probably come back just fine um I don't really know a whole lot about people coming here but mm. that mean the data's gotta come from somewhere right sure mm. sorry just having a bit of an odd thought Like what? Well, it's just I'm sort of noticing that the sort of light splotches in the sky are kind of concentrating around where we came from. Just wondering if, like, new arrivals are noticed or something. Huh. I don't really know. Uh, we should be fine, though. I think it's supposed to be a relatively peaceful place. That's good, but still, that thing you mentioned about the flex supposed to be full gold and not this whack gold mix, that does make you worry a bit. Yeah, it it is weird. Huh. Well, guess we 
Better keep moving. Uh, can we tell how much the thing we need for the return trip is charging? Is, it like, is there like an energy bar or something? Uh, if you want to attempt to try it out, then yeah, you can try and find it. And Because what happens with this charging is you need to be in a place that is central to like the magical energies within whatever dimension you're in. Like in the last oh. mission, the group had to actually go and find a place where they could actually use the thing to charge and send the you know message back. Okay, gotcha. All right, I understand now. Mm -hmm. I thought it was like a, a like a device on a charger, in that it is slowly building up energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, how could you have known? Sure. All right. Well, let's keep on going. Mm -hmm. Then looks like it will be probably another few hours trek, but all of you are full stamina points, full health blocks, so should be no problem for you guys, right? Uh, Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not a huge fan of how you said that, but hopefully. <laughs> gotcha. Then the hours begin to pass as you jump more great distances, use the ropes to climb across the you know, many floating islands, some you know, very isolated. You know, Alon, you have to climb across a rope that connects two islands that are 500 feet apart the entire time wiggling across the void. But as you face the trials and tribulations, it's about seven, eight hours later, full day of traveling, when ahead you see the you know, particles beginning to congregate and flow downward in a giant vortex. Alon, you would notice that these particles that are funneling kind of down below your sight line are mostly solid gold. Like only those with the most miracle energy being pulled into this point. Hmm. Uh, can I sort of hold out a hand and catch one? Sure. As you catch it, and you kind of look it over, it is more solid gold. What once was gold flecks now cover the piece of material. Sort of touching it, is it like gold flake, or is it more dusty or something? It's almost like a little, like, squishy. Like oh. falling cotton. Huh. That's a weird place. Are any of you uh, well, trying to look and see where the flecks are going? Yeah, yeah. I would love to. I will, I would I will, love to. I will sure. also sort of just show Vicha that th these ones are more as described. Huh. So, we see them being pulled in. Are we seeing some going back out? Like, maybe the gold is being stripped from them? Um, I mean, you don't know, like, you don't see the exact point from where you're standing now where they're going into. Um, like, they, they're kind of going below the island that you're on. So if you looked under, you might be able to see. Maybe it's also more like sure. a sorting thing. Like the the full gold ones are brought to this point and the refuse are sort of pushed out away. And take a hero point for that. All right, All shall right. we? Let's take a look. Gotcha. Um, as you kind of follow the spinning vortex of gold and look down, you see the black void of the drift. 
And then below, sitting at the edge of eternal darkness, maybe 200 feet you know, below your position, is a fortress. Boudica, you hear a slight hum come from this place as threads of this life energy, this miracle snow, flow to it in all directions, beginning to congregate in the spires along this fortress as it floats above the void itself. Below, there is this great golden light. And also, you would catch Neza on some of the courtyards outside of this fortress. There are coffins, but not just any coffins. I mean, firstly, there are hundreds of them, if not thousands. And Boudica, you would be able to tell with your back blacksmithing history that they're made out of solid platinum. Solid platinum coffins. I will... Mm. Boudicca's just gonna go ahead and say... Okay, um, those coffins, you, y'all, you all can see them too, right? They're, they're solid platinum. Huh. That's interesting. Beecha, are you, I understand you don't know much, but are you aware of an outpost out here? I'm not aware of anything that would match this, am I? No, you're not. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw your message. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I have no idea what this is. I mean, back home where I'm from, people are kind of obsessive about taking care of corpses, but it still seems like a lot. Solid platinum. Yeah, you gauge Boudicca the amount just the coffins you see here are worth. Somewhere in the ballpark of, I mean, at the very least a hundred hundred fifty thousand gold pieces how the so the drift is populated but it seems how do I phrase this the drift does seem <laughs> sure. Um, like, does this amount of coffins make sense for the amount of people who live in the drift? I mean, making coffins out of platinum for the people here doesn't seem like their MO. Everything they get is from, you know, the, the life snow, but mainly they use it to, like, grow organic life so that they can sustain their needs the life snow even in its raw form can be used to produce like water like this is also their resource for drinking you don't think that they would use the life snow for this and even like the mining of platinum here that's crazy and on top of all that yeah like you don't think this number of coffins would be utilized here. I mean, like, digging in to this floating source of, of earth here in the void, most people wouldn't do that to undermine the integrity of the floating islands. I was gonna say, uh, forgive me, Naza, for making anthropological assumption, but I 
kind of doubt people who spend their entire lives on floating islands making water out of dust are particularly burial minded out of man they have a different way of honoring the dead mm. yeah this whatever this is I don't think it belongs to the people of the drift so just so I have like a clear image in my head are we looking down to see this yeah it's about 200 feet below you okay how big does this sort of like area look like um you said you said like fortress right yeah it, it's a like floating fortress here in the middle of the drift hmm does your your analyzer thing would it work from here or do we have to go down there do you think to use it You, you mean me? No, the, um... Okay. They have some kind of tool they were supposed to... I, was I told about the analyzer they have to bring? I think, because they... Well, they used it yeah, once I was already there, it. right? Yeah. You... The thing you used when we were in Ostrion, you have to use that again, right? Can you use it from here? Looking at it, can we? Uh, if you try it out and you kind of push it into the ground and whirl up the device, yeah, you could attempt to find a read here. This is a nexus of enough magical energy where it could work. Okay. In fact, yeah, we... um, just a, a you know quick bit of trivia for you, Nasia, as you power up the device and you look at it. This is about, hold on, let me see here, about 1.7 billion times the amount of magical energy that you need in a given place to operate this. Huh. Just a fun fact. Oh, I was muted. Thank you for the fun fact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could definitely use it here. Um, I don't know if this counts as point zeta, but there's absolutely enough energy to get a read. Mm. Huh. Well, do we want to do that then? I mean, we could go down there, but that is a, well, it's a creepy fortress. amount of coffins. And it's a fortress, yes? Yeah. Neza, Boudica, what do you two think? I'm nervous about hit, but I guess we should try. Yeah. So try the tool or try going down there? Yeah. Try going down there. Oh. If if you think we should. I mean, again, well, we were told I'm... to get to a very specific point. I think if they cared that much about the point, they would have given you a little bit more detail about it. Oh. Yeah. You said we have enough energy, so that might be all they were looking for, is just somewhere with enough energy. I, I mean, I won't lie. I am curious about what's down there, but... Definitely puts me on edge. Yeah. Hmm. 
Boudicca? Yeah, I don't... I don't know, but... I guess we, we should go... Go down there. I'm not going right. down there. I... Uh, <laughs> I am really okay, nervous Na about going down there. Naza, can you explain to me how this works, please? Yeah, so... We put it here in the ground. Last time we did this, it... Uh, we were able to slowly figure out which dimension we're part of. From what I was told, we put it in a ground with enough magical energy, and it will... As soon as it finishes charging and analyzing the area, it'll send some sort of uh, signal back to where they're waiting with the lance to pull us back up. Alright, how long does that take? It hugely varies. Last time it took, what, a few hours, right, Colin? Like 12 hours, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Well, maybe because it's, what was it, 1.7 billion times more? Maybe it'll be faster. Maybe. I hope so. Yeah, I don't know about going down there. For a couple reasons. One of them being, uh... Bodega, I know that you can fly, but... Gravity's no different here. If we try to just drop down, we'd probably die from the fall. Uh, yeah, is can, this... Is the island we're it. on connected to it in any way? No. Okay. I could fly a couple people at once. Hey, sure, but... Splitting up in a place we don't know with creatures we're unfamiliar with into a place we know nothing about just doesn't... Feels like a bad idea. See your point? Um... I wonder how the floating islands work, because if I can fly, I wonder if there's some kind of sort of just like property in each of the little islands or like mineral in them that makes them float, because if that was the case, maybe I could move the islands in such a way where it would be easier for us to jump down. Well, that while that may do something, it's a fortress. I have a feeling that there are people who are guarding it, won't be particularly thrilled about uh, newcomers, and I don't know how we'd hide a, an island moving towards it. I mean, like, small little chunks, but... Yeah, still, from above, it'd be quite conspicuous. Well, if we go down there, and we get into trouble, how are we quickly getting back up. Very true. Alright then. Uh, Let's just... Not go down there. What's yeah. our next step? Uh, Naza, you want to get the process started? Sure. And then Naza will stab the analyzer into the ground. Gotcha. Then... As you stab it into the ground, it will begin to whirl. And then on the screen, it says, Point Zeta identified. Begin calibration process. And guess what, gang? We're going to calibrate. Hey. Okay, okay. Another 20 seconds. Another qu <laughs> questions, I mean. Uh, I, mean so I can give ready. you 20 seconds to answer 20 questions if you want. No, thank you. I'm good. All right, then the rules of 20 questions still apply. I got a thing. It is written down. You got 20 questions to, to get to it. Technically a, a person, place, or thing. And um, it is Rings of Marathis in scope. But yeah, we'll go top to bottom in the Discord. Caleb, you got the first question. Oh boy, um, is it a place? 
Yes. Okay. Uh, is it a country? No. Is it hostile? What do you mean by hostile? Like, if it's a place, is it like a hostile environment? Or is there a lot of hostile creatures there? It's not a hostile environment. Okay. Is it a dimension? It is not. Have all of us as players been to this place before? Yes. Is it a city? Yes. Is it on the prime ring? Yes. I think I know this one. I just need two I seconds. Have, <laughs> I have a guess. I just need to remember the name of the city. What's your guess, Jamie? Uh, is it Beacon? Is it Beacon? No. Fuck. Uh, is it Ioka? It is. Yay. Hey. Nice! I missed that on fucking trivia during the game show, and it haunts me forever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, it is Ioka. And as you kind of punch everything in, a countdown timer will start. Um, should connect in 144 hours. Oh! God! 144... Yeesh. So it's more like a system overload that's got to work through rather than being plenty of material. Well, there's a lot of dimensions between here and the Rings of Merapis. That's very fair. Ostrian was so... in the teens. Ah, so we're here for six days. Okay. All right. Uh, I hope everyone packed accordingly for their six-day drift slumber party. We do have Man. a week's worth of rations, so it shouldn't be yeah too bad. How? Yeah. I don't suppose you'd be willing to share. Sure. How, how long remind me from y'all's perspective how long were you gone on the first trip a while well, uh, I asked I mean because about 24 hours alright I ask because from my perspective, y'all were gone for 42 days with 24 hours. Yeah, things get pretty crazy. Meaning we might be gone for 252 days. I mean, it might be like that, but different... Didn't Polydectes mention that different dimensions have, or just different places in the cosmic stack have different time dilations? This time dilation we're on might not be like the one we were on before, which can be very good or very bad for us. You can take a hero point for that. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Uh, thank you. Uh, I don't suppose I know specifically how time works in the drift, do I? in comparison to passage on the rings make a mental check at detriment to detriment to that's okay I did forget about exceptional mind before 
Um, so I still get one die back. You do not know. I... It's chronological. That's fair. It's chronological. Not going back. That's helpful. Mm-hmm. Not all dimensions have that. Why is that one of my fucking best rolls tonight? <laughs> and it's still bad. Nerd. Only good for nerd. Um, That's actually a good roll, Caleb. Yeah, it's not terrible. Um, it's just, you've seen the amount of dice I've rolled tonight versus the amount of successes I've gotten. Mm -hmm. I, I think the highest I have rolled in succession was like four for an attack and then because it's a rapier it was two to one so it only counted for two yeah uh over this time of us like putting the thing in the ground calibrating all this stuff could we see any movement in the fortress like do we see Absolutely soldiers not. oh wow okay mm -hmm. I, there there are lights on uh, otherwise seems more you don't want to it's not abandoned definitely not it's well kept in good condition um but yeah you don't see anybody outside moving around does it even seem like i don't know sh there are shadows in passing in front of the lights in the windows make a physical check okay it's cool. Four. About an hour after you do your analyzation, as you're just looking in the windows, you do see a shadow pass by one of them. A humanoid shadow, slowly walking across. There is at least mm. one individual inside. Okay. Uh, when he sees it, uh, Elion will sort of jerk his head up. Alright, just saw a movement, so there's someone in there. Did they uh, stop and look out at all, or were they just walking around? Themes, they just sort of passed in front of the window. Still, it's been an hour and we've only seen that. You'd think a place this size, there'd be constant movement. How, remind me, how many coffins could we see? From here, like, if you count them up, like, just in, like, amongst the courtyards, the coffins are, at some places, stacked four high. So, rough estimate, five or six thousand outside. Oh. All pure platinum. So someone survived, whatever happened. Do we know if, like how amethyst is used for cloaking, what kind of properties does platinum have? Like specific properties, it's like used for. Make a make a mental check again. I would say a benefit <laughs> one due to your history. Nice. Okay, five successes. Five successes. All right, all right. Platinum is an empower empowering metal. It 
basically streamlines magic and things made of platinum they have very little magical loss you know in all things there's a little bit of magical leak whenever you're casting a spell make it magic item etc platinum reduces that magical leak significantly it's able to hold magic very well as it's that's why it is one of the most sought after metals now it goes you know, bronze silver gold platinum platinum is at the very top for that reason would an would an okay comparison be like lead with radiation um i think lead with radiation yeah that would probably be an okay one it, it's a mix of lead and graphite, though, because okay. while there is containment, it also can help accelerate the magical processes. Right. Okay. Hmm. And Vichu will have relayed all that information and said, um, it seems like they're gearing up for something big. Well... I understand that we're far away, but looking at these coffins, does it look like, how do I say this, like it's pristine platinum, or do, do I see anything that looks like a plaque or inscription or marking on them? Look. I know I won't be able to tell what it is, if it's anything, but can I see anything? Yeah, um, it is pristine. Like, there's not even, like, a hinged opening. It just, like, kind of slides kind of across and mainly seals these coffins. But otherwise, they're just pristine, without blemish. Boudica would be able to tell you it's very high-quality smithing. Um, and probably as you're looking, you would see uh, a door and one of the high towers opens up and about another hundred platinum coffins float out from one of the spires and neatly stack themselves in a row outside oh, like oh that's not that's no uh -uh. I, I thought there was a sorry go ahead I hate that. I hate that we are given time to investigate this. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I, th I thought this would be like a defense went wrong and all these people died or there was a plague or infection, but maybe it's a manufacturing. You take a hero point. But for who? And why? What was was it Tiger Lily Group? I don't think they have a station out here, do you? I think anything's possible. I mean, my dad works with them. They might have dealings down here. Or maybe this entire operation is to start up something of the sort. Huh. Would I know anything about the... I don't think they specifically told me about the Tiger Lily group, but do I have any pre-existing knowledge of them? None. You've never heard of them before. Uh, who's the Tiger Lily group? Uh, Cutthroat Merchant Company. Hmm. We've been dealing with a lot of unethical capitalism. Yeah, a lot of unethical capitalism. Yeah... Well, maybe, maybe what we're looking at is sort of similar to what was going on 
back of the primordial ring, maybe the shadow is an artificer like Polydectes, man in the machinery. Oh, no. I suppose that could be. One more question about the sort of layout of this place. Mm -hmm. You said like all the coffins were stacked in the courtyards and stuff. Does it seem like there are still paths or are they packed tight? They are packed tightly here. Like you would have to walk on the coffins to get to the entrances. And with each entrance... There is a, a space there where you could climb down from the coffins and still get inside. But no, they're being tacked, packed tightly here. Huh. I hate to be the one to say it, but we're here for six days. We're probably going to have to look down there at some point. Why do we have to do that? I mean, could we just stay up here, mind our business, leave? Well, this we are unfortunately curious. Well, I... That's the thing. I'm... I am partially in agreement with you there, but about with specifically with you Kayla we could stay up here and just mind our business keep watch for raptors for six days until this thing is charged and we can get out of here <laughs> and I I could be okay with that but yeah can't shake this. This is insanity. 6,000 solid platinum coffins being made at what seems to be a decent rate in a fortress that so far from my eye has one person in it. The Sorry, do you all know why you're putting the analyzer down here? Are they trying to get to this location themselves? Uh, yeah, we weren't exactly so. told. When we asked, they just said that Fion had some kind of special interest in this place, but that he wasn't allowed to know a lot more. Plus, I know they're planning on getting the heck out of Lords, so... Right. It sounds like maybe they have a hand in whatever this is. Or are trying to, at least. I, mean, I would possibly. agree. That... I'd assume so, yeah. The Platinum well, is high quality. It certainly has a lot of mo value. Sure. It... In Can I remember... theory... Sorry. No, no, go ahead. Looking, so thinking really hard, can I remember the papers we found in the old burn mine and if it had anything about mining platinum? There were platinum ore veins in the old burn mine, yes. She will relay that information, but I can't remember any like specific statistics about them. Like we had for the Blue Jade. Yeah, it wasn't their primary focus, but they did mine it. She will relay that to the group. They... With Fionn... In, interested in this place... My... Theories are... Threefold. One... Whatever's happening here is something that he wants to stop. Two, whatever happened in here is producing these massively valuable objects, commodities that he wants. 
or he either he one of his associates his boss whoever that is put this person down here set this manufactory into motion and lost it and needs to get it back or just plainly uh, needs well I don't know if this is possible but given the state of Utica's mother maybe it's that they needed a method of mass transport and turning a person into a living being of portals is just the way to do it. Well, Those I are my guesses. Yeah, those are all not great for us. However, I, I'm of the mind that we need to get back up there. And once we do, we'll have the dimensional lance. We can ask Fionn what exactly he's doing before we kill him. And then if it's bad, we come back down here and we solve it once we have backup. I am of agreement. I just... The only thing, only thing that sort of make me question that is once that this thing gets a proper lock on, it pro they're probably planning on sending Boudicca's mother down here right quick. Likely. If we control the lands, that's one thing. <laughs> um, to ask the people who did the trip last time, did you also lose all your stamina points when you got back up? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That is a problem. Or could be a problem. Curious as I am about the fortress, I do like Kaylee's idea of having backup with us. Yeah. Presumably, if they're able to produce this, they are, and they're able to lay it all out in the open like this, they have a way of defending themselves. Agreed. Um. Does Does the courtyard look full, or do I see where more space could be filled in? They're stacking the coffins one on top of the other. It's already full, technically, but they're just right. putting more and more and more. Do What I mean is, like, do I see these are all stacks of four, and then these ones are still stacks of three and being added to? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think it's... Probably best we get a handle on our situation before jumping into this one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And will you wait here amongst the drifting life snow until it is ready to pull you back up? Yeah, but I'm also going to keep watching the fortress. Okay. See if I continue to see just that sort of single sign of movement or if anything else arises. 
Yeah, you continue to see that single sign of movement as the days do pass. Um, And you would also see the number of coffins continue to grow. A hundred coffins every hour on the hour, like clockwork. And I would also say that as you are here, you would notice that the overall amount of life snow is lessening as it continues to be taken from the world. But Mm. you're Mm. continuing to stay and watch until there begins to be a flickering in the sky around our 143 above you as the sky is beginning to grow more orange Alon time is coming and as you prepare yourselves it is here where we will end the session for today as all of you can take a level up let's go let's go go. thank you for the session mind in our own business Uh-huh. I'm working on new NASA art. I'm trying to decide between several. Let's see. I'll send the current contenders in the group chat. Great. Sorry, I spaced on replying to you about that. No, that's okay. I've been working on recoloring some of them, too, so I just need two seconds to finish up one of the last ones. Dalton, I can sense your need to solve a mystery. Yeah, yeah. yeah it hurts. <laughs> yeah. God, I really want to know what's going on there, but I do not want to be the one to find it out. I, I kind of do. Peach is definitely worried about the people being affected by it. Yeah. yeah. Especially All after that the... one shot we did. Can I also Not just good. say that this whole thing is reminding me of like a like a coal plant bumping dust into the sky. Mm. But like reverse. Yeah, but reverse. And that makes it okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're taking the healthy coal dust for themselves. Yeah. In this world, coal dust is an anti-carcinogen. <laughs> nice, nice. The children yearn for the coal dust. They do, they do. So where we begin is with all of you sitting above the fortress at Zeta Point. It's been about a day so far as you've been able to rest and relax so everyone can take a complete rest but otherwise you are still partially debating what you were in general going to be doing so just checking in to how you're spending the next 20 ish hour or 120 ish hours Um, Nice is probably making a lot of notes and observations about not just the the fortress in front of us, but also the broader world. But also mostly about the fortress. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Alon's going to spend a good chunk of his time observing the fortress, too. um, Seeing if at any point he can make out anything of use, insignia, other sort of signs of embellishment. Um even architectural style, if he can make it out. Um, and besides that, just sort of observing this miracle dust. Not really messing with it too much, just sort of observing it. Yeah. Um, as for architectural style, 
as you and Vicha and Neza, you know, all fairly learned people, put your heads together, you don't, um, like, come away with any particular style that you recognize. This seems very foreign and alien. Otherwise, for anything that you might recognize, you can go ahead and make a mental check, and maybe Naza could do so as well. Did we say that was a mental check? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, well. that's... Jump in on... Sorry. No, you can't jump no. in on this. Okay. Uh, that was four successes for me. Okay. That is... Oh, shoot. I rolled one too many. That is then only uh, eight successes for Neza. Eight for Neza. Alon, you don't catch it. Um, however, along one of the towers that is drawing in the life snow, you can see that um, there mm -hmm. appears to be some very fine writing and as you kind of sit there and focus pulling out um like a notebook and just trying to sketch out what it might be eventually you kind of put together that some of the symbols here resemble arcane symbols that you saw on the door that held the massive blue jade stone that was used during the Meraviglia. Um, oh, that sucks. Hmm. We can't tell what those symbols do, can we? From this distance, no. Like, you're able to make out general shapes, and you, with... In, like eight successes are able to put together oh these are symbols that resemble those on the door but exactly what they do from 200 feet away nah fair enough hmm When you say they resemble them, do they look like to us that they're they the same symbol, or is it more like the handwriting's the same, or like a similar language? What's the sort of connective tissue there? I mean, at least similar language, whether they're the same symbols, again, impossible to tell. Okay. All right, what do you think? I mean, I'm nosy enough to want to go down there just to see what they do, but I'm still really worried. I agree. Hmm. Especially since Boudica seems so tired recently. Boudicca yeah. is snoring. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't really know what to do here. Because I agree that there is... I, I really, really want to go down there and take a look. However, I don't want to... One, I don't know how the heck we get back up here without without Boudicca at full strength and I 
even though the timer we're under is quite generous, I don't like the idea of venturing into a place we know nothing about with the timer running on us. Yeah, what if we get trapped and then we miss the buoy? Does the buoy um, follow us, or do we have to be at this point when it goes off? It is a certain designated point, like in any particular dimension where magics are combining together. So you could travel a little bit of a distance away, and it would still probably be okay. But 200 feet down in a building, it would be close. Hmm. What is the dimensional difference, like the how many layers are between us right now at near the bottom uh, and lords? Uh, over a hundred. Okay. And is that a similar distance from lords and the rest of the rings? No, 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 no. Because okay. here, let me let me pull up the exact numbers. More, in the document. right? It was like sixteen, negative sixteen or something negative versus four- negative. Negative 14 is where Mm -hmm. that space that Lords was hanging out. You're at negative 127. Okay. Yeah, quite substantial difference. Yes. Technically negative 126, but in that layer. And Ostrion was negative 17. Hmm. Oh, so we barely moved when we went to Ostreon. Barely. Very interesting. Yeah, I I am very interested in going down there. I I know I'm still uh... worried, but I would feel yeah. bad just leaving it. Um, I know this is, this probably falls into the question we already asked, but looking at it, does it remind me at all of anything I've seen on the Primordial Ring? Does it seem fey, perhaps? It reminds you of nothing. It is okay. You, there is no frame completely of alien. Completely alien. I have a question for you that is technically maybe a little bit metagaming, but I have reasonable conclusions to draw. As you said, it was, it reminded us of the symbols on the door to the blue jade Mm -hmm. uh, connected to the cult, right? Yeah. Um, When I was talking to, I think it might have been the, uh, I don't remember her name. The stealth uh, teacher lady that was in the cult. Um, the the eminence of patience. Yeah. Um, Orianne. Orianne. She mentioned. I think it was her. It might have been someone else. That the cult runs off. Oh wait, no, no, I'm getting this mixed up with Solandus. I take it back. Ignore me. Cool. I got it mixed up with Karania. <laughs> there is one thing I think you could have used as a basis, but if you don't remember it... It was that, like, I think I got it mixed up with where the speakers said that they ran off of Titanic magic. I was going to say, can I reasonably draw that conclusion? But I don't think they ever said that about the gold. Oh, I was thinking of something else. Fair. Just for funsies, I'll DM Colin what it was. Yeah, yeah, get your free hero point. (laughs) I'm not gunning for a hero point, I'm just... I think I'm remembering it correctly from this campaign.
You can lose a hero point, Caleb. <laughs> I'm I'm joking. Oh. I'm joking. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I didn't have any to lose anyway. <laughs> Like, I, I don't think I butchered it that badly. <laughs> God, imagine if Colin started taking away hero points for being wrong. I would be destitute. <laughs> I still sometimes remember. And, like, when I'm really sad, I remember. And it makes it worse the time that you told me I was so hilariously wrong about a theory that anything you could say would just, quote, make me more confused. Yeah. <laughs> it... Some wild stuff, you know? Like, that's gonna be... You're gonna be named in, like, I don't know, my will or something. Where it says like you get nothing because of this. <laughs> uh, damn it, Caleb! You can take a hero point for that one. Yay! <laughs> Dang it! Now I'm curious. <laughs> It's not something I can. Sh it's not something I would know in character. I don't think. Yeah, to share with the class. Make a new character. I guess. <laughs> hey, who the hell is this coming up over the side? I guess. Of the cliff? <laughs> but no, without that, I guess. Hmm. Yeah. No, I would just continue making observations and. Theorizing. Yeah. Maybe um, sketching as best I can, but that's about it. I guess part of that with me, at least with the observations, is um, the figure I saw moving. Do I continue to see that at fairly regular intervals? Um, I'm going to assume that at this point, another three days have gone by. So at this point, we are getting into the... 96 hour range and you occasionally saw the figure like it was very sporadic maybe once every 24 hours at a random variable and then the figure passed by a window and then seemingly backtracked and it's just been standing in the window for a few hours oh that sucks too did when you say we saw him like once every 24 hours, did it seem like... So sometimes when people go away on vacation, they'll set up decoy shadows in their house to make it look like, they, like there's still people inside. Did this seem at all inhuman in that way? Or it seemed almost like a deliberate setup to make the house appear inhabited? Make a spirit check hmm. also when you say people do that do you mean home alone because that's the only time I've seen it I was thinking more like Sherlock BBC Sherlock those, uh. those aren't regular I was going to say I've never heard of people doing that yeah I know yeah I don't think I've ever heard of a real person doing that either <laughs> but in fiction sometimes one success. Maybe you're the inhuman one. I never said I would do that. I just heard I it happened in Sherlock once. <laughs> and so I'm wondering. Um this figure does appear inhuman. Inhuman? Oh shit. Wait, so are you making fun of me but I was right, or are you just making fun of me? I I'm saying that it is inhuman, and I'm not trying to make fun of you with that human in what way you rolled one success I, I, that's Elon, as much as I can give think of that? look at that it just something's weird about it what do you think right now it's staring at us we'll diagnose the situation doctor that is not how any of that works Is that edited? Is that Nightwing? 
I don't think that's Nightwing. Um. <laughs> no, I think that was SpongeBob. Like, I think the it, joke was no, that they were seeing each been, other. Like, in the original SpongeBob, but it's been edited. Oh, I see. Okay, we'll just I'll just zero successes. I'll sort of, I'll sort of look to Vicha and, and Neza. What do you think? Should I wave at it? Yeah. Because right now it looks sure, like I... it's staring at us. I'm wondering. Yeah, look, looking at it, it does seem like it's up. us. It's fixed on, right? Uh, hard to say. It, it's just a silhouette like standing at a window. Yeah, go ahead and wave. I wave. It, Does it react? Yeah, as you do, you can see it like maybe leans forward a bit as if staring and then moves away from the window. Ugh. Great, now we're good about our asses hunted down. <sighs> that, or they're about to set up defenses on this place, and if so, I think I kind of want that to happen just because... You know, we're here to tell Fionn where this place is. What did you make of its humanness? Something just seems uh, off about it. Can I make any sort of check in that direction? No. Okay. Oh, come on. Uh, Naza, I saw it lean and then leave. I don't know what it, what you expected me to glean from that. Does it look like it moves like a normal thing, or does it look like it's on a track that pushes it places so it moves uncannily evenly? It does move uncannily evenly. Let's I don't forget. know what's going on here, but I feel like I'm pulling at some kind of thread. It might be the wrong well, thread, though, and I might just unravel the whole sweater instead Neza, of pull out a loose one. Yes. The person who sent us here had automatons working for him. That's true. I'm just saying, if it if this is the most situation, it wouldn't be the most surprising thing in the world. I suppose. Even the automatons moved when they moved, though, right? You know what I'm getting at? They moved when they moved? You know what I mean. They didn't move I don't. that evenly. They, like, moved like a person, right? Y yes, they moved more like a person, the ones that you saw. Uh-huh. That would be correct. I feel like so to clarify, what do you sorry continue i'm gonna finish sorry. this sentence later <laughs> can you expand on what you mean by they moved evenly i i think they mean that the, the difference between moving robotically or person like like when people walk they sort of like move it's not a perfect motion. They kind of go like up and down a bit or side to side. There's bobbing or exactly. But like what I was thinking of, it, like it just passes straight by the window without looking like it's moving. Like the movement of your legs necessarily causes some movement in like your shoulders, for example, because it goes feet, 
hips uh, than upper body with your shoulders moving. But if it were just sort of gliding evenly along the floor, the legs wouldn't be moving, therefore the rest of the body wouldn't have any residual, like, motion to it either, because it's just floating. I wonder if it's like, um... You know in Critical Role where Desik had the thing where he just kind of always floated like a foot off the ground? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, just kind of gliding everywhere he went? Like Boudicca? Y yes. A little like, yeah, sure. <laughs> Boudicca when she wants to fuck with me. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, I that's like my guess is maybe they're floating point. a little. <laughs> we turn around to see Boudicca still sleeping, but sleeping a foot off the ground. That's 100% uh, something Jack would have us turn around to. It's true. Um, Jack did tell me Boudicca was more than willing to fly this session, so we'll say yes. Oh. Goes with the joke. <laughs> Boudicca um. is slowly just floating. Turning like a a rotisserie chicken in the air as she sleeps. <laughs> Great. Uh, Colin, does, does falling count as expending movement? Um, technically it does not. Okay. Uh, with a, well, with a fly speed, yeah, it would. Not with a fly speed. What I was thinking is um, because my teleportation um, relies on expending movement, I was wondering if I could like jump down and then once I was like 30 feet above the ground, teleport to the ground and land safely. You could do that if you so desired. Well, the issue is getting back up. Yeah, get, getting back up would be harder. 30 hours left. Jack has said that Boudicca would fly you all back up if desired. Oh, thanks, Boudicca. That's so sweet. As repayment, you can stay right here while we do the dangerous things. Boudicca continues is... rotating like a rotisserie chicken while awake. <laughs> 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 is Boudica able to um, easily carry three people or would that or four people or would that be um, a check I'm on her end feeling Kayla doesn't want to go yeah I know he doesn't want to go he was quite explicitly against it yeah God, I just had the funniest image of like a one of those fox and uh, cabbage problems or whatever the fuck it was. Uh, except it's you can't leave Kayle alone with Vicha because he'll kill Vicha. You can't leave, like, Vicha alone with someone else because they'll, I don't know what's going on. But, like, a way of transporting us all down and getting us all back up. I like how the only thing you're certain about is that Kayle would kill Vicha. 100%. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. If the three of you are going, Kayle would go to make sure that if there is trouble, you don't die. Boudicca would be able to easily take two, potentially three. It's just about space. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, is, though, now especially, we're really low on time. Like, if we were worried about that four days ago, we're going to be really, really worried about it now. Yeah. Very true. You have 48 hours left. Okay, at this stage, how do people feel about me flipping a coin? Go for it. All right. Uh, Caleb, you call it. Uh, heads be going. Okay. Well, that's a head looking back at me. I don't know. I'm very nervous about going, though. Well. 
We all are, but I, I think we're gonna feel even worse if we don't go in. I agree. Maybe. I I am also very nervous, but I want to go... I am very curious, and we have been debating about this for half an hour now. Very true. Have we okay, seriously? So, oh my god. Yes, we have been. <laughs> so let's just go and do it, okay? Okay. Gotcha. So... How are you all wanting to get down? Boudicca just fly you down? Is that the... Yeah. Okay. Sure. Um, I would like to recommend that Kaylee and I go first. Sounds good. Are you wanting to be dropped off in kind of the, the main center of the fortress? Uh, let's go a little off to the side. A little off to the side of the fortress. Okay. Then you can be both taken down there and put down on a stack of coffins that is three deep. Okay. Um, now that we are down here and closer to everything, do we see any movement? Looking around, no. No movement down here that you can see. Everything still continues to be pretty peaceful. I'd also um, like to give the coffin I'm standing on, I guess, or one next to me, like a quick knock. Does it sound you know, properly hollow. It sounds hollow, yeah. Like there is, like it's empty. But right. you know, as you look at it, there also appears to be no visible opening mechanism for this coffin. Right. And I think we covered it a little bit last time, but just to check now that we're closer, no like name plate or engraving? Nothing. Uh, also, now that we're here, do I see any obvious, like, ballista weapons of any kind? No weapons, no ballista that you can see. It, I mean, there are definitely, like, battlements and places where weapons could be put, but this fortress does not appear to have any. Right. Hmm. Fair. Uh, I completely understand if I just can't tell, but... Is there any way to sort of gauge how old this place is? How would you try to go about doing that? Well, I guess the issue is, is that I don't really know how erosion works in this dimension. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I have no frame of reference to whether or not this dust wears things down at all. So... I guess I don't really have a way to tell. Yeah. Has, have we been able to notice dust? Or is it all just the snow? There, I mean, when you were up above, you can see dirt and grime down here, actually, on the coffins. And as you kind of put your hand out on the stone that is finely hewn, there is no dust here. Mm. And the, the life snow is being drawn into the tops of the towers so it's actually remarkably clean mm. okay um I guess I'll start taking steps towards what I saw from above to be an entrance alright um Vicha and Neza are you wanting the air travel down We'll go air travel. I suppose. Alright then. Boudica will drop you off down there. But, yep, you're heading to the entrance, Alon? Uh, yes. Alright. Um, and I should ask Vicha and Neza, are you doing anything when you first get dropped down? Can I examine those cliffs? Uh, they're mostly on the tops of the towers, but you know, being closer, sure. Like you hey, can. Luca, can you fly me up there for like two seconds? And she can do that. 
as you're flown up, um, there are a few symbols that you recognize along the, the tops of the towers, but uh, there are differences between here and the door as well. Very interesting. And can I figure out what they might be doing? Uh, make a mental check. Will do. That is going to be six successes. Okay. Um, I mean, you don't really have any frame of reference other than probably a part of it is drawing in the life snow. Is it a reasonable assumption that some of them might be protection? Uh, probably, yeah. Hmm. Can I copy them down into the notebook um, to ask some of our artificer friends later? Sure. Um, you can do that. Is this going to kill me like when we wrote down Joe Blex's true name? Maybe. Make a spirit safe. Fuck. God damn it. I hate copying things down. <laughs> I'm never doing it again. A save, you said? Mm-hmm. It's not gonna be good. Uh, can I spend two hero points to reroll two of those? Sure. Um. How's one success? Uh huh. Okay. You write it down. I would like to then tear those pages out of my notebook to hold separately, so that way, if something does happen, they don't contaminate the rest of my fantastic notebook. Okay. I was, I was gonna say, as Naza, you're going to continue writing things down. I mean, I don't know anything's wrong, right? <laughs> right? Right. I mean, right. it seems fine. Why would you even have a reason to tear those pages out? Well, because... Fuck you. Uh, mm -hmm. Because writing down <laughs> arcane things is really, like, tough. But also because at this point, I've written down so much in that notebook, it's flipping through probably close to 300 pages just to get to the points that I want to show people. And so I don't want to be like that old lady that's like, here, look at pictures of my vacation. Hold on, here's 200 pictures of my dog first. It would be more like, here... Uh, Polydectes, look at these, get back to me in a week. Because also when we come back, we're going to be running for our lives, and so I imagine, like, the most time I'm going to have is to be able to pass something over and say, look at this, talk to me later, bye. Mm. Uh. You're, you're straying very close to metagaming. I really like this notebook so help me god call and if anything happens to it I'm gonna hunt you down I'm not the one that put the writing into it I'm going for ace I'm uh, I'm walking towards the door <laughs> I will have Boudicca drop me off and go with the lawn as well okay following <laughs> so as you walk towards Punish the rest of us for that sorry I love my dog but it was not a threat I was as anyone go... should I just said I was gonna go to him and I didn't say I was gonna do anything I was just gonna treat said... him to a nice day I was, it was, it was said in a threatening tone you said four yeah, go I'm gonna four. go I'm gonna go yeah. for race I'm gonna take him out on a lovely day on the town and I'm going to return him to you with him loving me more. That's so, master plan. That the, <laughs> the door that you see, Alon, is uh -huh. massive, going up at least 40 or 50 feet, made out of what appears to be solid iron with two heavy handles. Okay. Um, 
I will. Uh, well, first of all, do I see a lock? Uh, you do not. Okay. Um, is there any way for me to check if this door is trapped in any way? Sure, you could try make a physical or a mental check to see if there is any traps. Okay, I will make that attempt. Okay. There we go. Physical or mental? Hmm. Uh, this is mental, and I only got one success. No traps that you can see. Cool. I will attempt to open the door. Gotcha. You yourself alone are not strong enough to pull it open. Is someone going to try and help Alon? I can help him. Okay. Then, as both of you pull, the massive doors groan open. And then you can see on the interior uh, a luxurious, almost like castle. Paintings of unrecognizable landscapes hang on the walls in this fine entryway. The floor... Uh, very nicely hewn polished stone uh, beautiful carpet running down the center not a speck of dust in the air just generally very nice very peaceful um, you would be able to hear Neza though in the far distance within this space the sound of machinery turning kind of towards the center of this place. Hmm. Does it sound like a lot of machinery? <sighs> Probably a fairly substantial amount, yeah. Um... Given how heavy that door was, do I think it's even... Well, actually, no, never mind. Um... Uh, Vicha, I, I know I tend to, like, ask you a lot of questions when it comes to different dimensions and whatnot. However, just understand it's because I know nothing about this arena. Uh, these paintings of all these landscapes, these seems to be, uh, Places you've heard of before? Uh, looking at the landscape paintings, do I recognize any of them? Nope. Uh, no, they don't look like any anywhere I've ever seen. Hmm. Uh. I'm just gonna say I'm a bit worried about um. Sort of leaving this door as it is. Does anyone want to try and find something to keep it open? I know it was very heavy, but given all the machinery, I, I don't trust it. I'm sort of leaving it open. Don't. Do we have anything heavy enough to do that? I don't suppose Boudica would be willing to carry over one of the coffins that brought the door open. Uh. We don't even necessarily need something heavy. It doesn't. We just need something to block its path. Also, these. We might get into a premature fight if we mess with their coffins. Agree. I should also say if a fortress doesn't have locks. That probably means that what's ever in here is confident that it it can handle even people getting inside. Or they're just very cocky, one or the other. Which that or aren't they don't. actually mutually exclusive. Very true. Also, it's possible they just don't think anyone's gonna bother showing up here. <laughs> which considering how down how far down we are is also a fair assumption. Uh, that's true. <sighs> All right. Maybe but with the with the vortex in the sky, they do. I assume anyone in this 
dimension is able to at least see the vortex. So. Alright. Do we just want to continue trying to investigate some then? Yeah. Alright. Just a little bit, I suppose. I'll start inching forward. Gotcha. Then... Are you all trying to be stealthy as you're moving through? Yes. All right. Do we want to? They already know we're here since you waved at them. It might look worse for us if they catch us sneaking around. It. Well, while that may be true, I also think not sneaking around might startle them. I mean, if you're if you're set on it, I'll do it. Yeah, let's just let's just make the attempt. Okay. Gotcha. So then, who is attempting to? I'm. Are you trying to head towards the machinery? Or are you trying to look at more of the rooms? Like, what is the intent? I'm kind of just interested in checking out some of the rooms first. Maybe getting a bearing of the owner. Yeah, agreed. Gotcha. Then, as you begin checking around in this place with the initial rooms, um, most of them in here you find are actually completely empty. Not any furniture, nothing on the walls, not even a speck of dust, just empty. Uh, Neza, you would be able to find a kitchen as you're making your way through, and this is a kitchen that is massive. 10,000 square feet easily in here, and it's empty as well, except for some countertops, uh, what appears to be some stoves and ovens, but don't find any silverware, no plates, pots, pans, or anything of the like. Not even a scrap of food down here. And as you keep going, um, Alon, you would open a room and entering into this place, you would find on a, a series of shelves little terrariums, ecosystems sealed in glass jars. It's kind of self-sustaining. Um, you know, they range from, uh, like the size of a mason jar to the size of a bathtub. But there are at least a hundred of them in this room, all with little bugs and animals scurrying about, with maybe twenty or thirty of the terrariums seemingly having just died out. Like, the ecosystem having failed in some way, all the plants inside just having died over the course of time. Does it seem like they're trying to figure out how to cultivate life in the rift? You mentioned that the populations here really only survive because of their access to the Miracle Snow. Mm hmm Do you think they're trying to figure out a way for life to more permanently exist here? It's a possibility. Um, sort of a similar question, I guess. Does what plants and insects are in here, do I recognize them? Make a mental check. Could I also look through them and try to determine that? Sure. Go ahead. Uh, that's three. three. I suppose I could as well. Yeah, sure, you could. I should actually have an extra die on that. Eight successes for Nisa. Mm. Four for Vicha. Three for Alon. Gotcha. Um, then, as you are all looking through, 
Some of the plants and animals you recognize, um, some are specifically Kovarovian, you see Neza. Others appear from the Dark Ring, others Primordial Ring. Um, you see, Vicha, that there are some very rare plants and insects here, some from other dimensions. It just appears to be a very wide ranging set of life forms in here. Wait, I don't know that they're trying to sustain life here necessarily, permanently. I think they might be seeing how quickly various things die. You know, if that makes sense? Uh, For when they uh, bring like larger things in. Like, how long Kovarovian might last, because now we know what the plants last for. And then, how long that guy from Carthonis would last, because we brought one of the plants from that region in. Uh, that seems like an odd conclusion. But forgive me, I don't I... know what they'd be doing it for, but it's... They have such a wide range of things here. They've got to be looking for something like that, right? I mean, I guess, but I don't think that... It might have just been the way you phrased it, but... Like, what I'm I'm thinking is, you know, I'm from Carthonis, but I could theoretically live in Kovarov, you know? Like, there's nothing physically stopping me from doing so. That is true. But there could be differences mm-hmm. in the way people born and raised there are. Like how coffee beans... This is just slowly slipping more and more into character. Grow in different regions of the world will have different tastes because of the soil that they were uh, grown in. In theory, you could pick up that plant once it's grown and transport it anywhere. But since it was still grown in that one patch of soil, it's still going to have this taste of that soil because it was grown there. I'm wondering if there's something about the I don't know, maybe Aether? There's something based on where things spend most of their time that then imbue them with those qualities. Um, Looking at the failed terrariums, is there anything they have in common with each other, or anything that they don't have that the living ones seem to have make a spirit or mental check up to you which one i will go with mental uh four successes with four successes you don't see anything that leads you to a conclusion one way or the other to be quite honest it they seem quite honestly more random than anything else um gotcha Wait, sorry in Are there... finding sorry no, go ahead the a further point of seeing how long things from different regions last would be able would be finding thing that lasts longest and then basing their like the rest of whatever they're doing off of that so if everything except the kovarovian plant dies then they go and source a lot of their things from kovarov because they know they last the longest or things like that which could be potentially an explanation you go no i'm sorry uh, I was just going to ask um, if the terrariums or the shelves they're set on have any sort of marking, like dates or titles. Um, as you look at them, they have no particular marking that you see other than small scratches here and there in the glass. Maybe a system to tell them apart of some kind. Mm. When you say scratches, do you mean, is it like a tally mark or is it actually like a symbol? It is sometimes just like jagged vertical and horizontal lines. Okay. Mm. Alright. 
There's no can... way to dis. Uh, no, there's no way to discern um, if the life snow has been used to grow things, right? There might be, but you probably wouldn't know it. Gotcha. There's no distinction just by eyeballing it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Shall All right we go ahead, Alon. Keep... I was just gonna ask if we wanted to continue. Uh, I'm ready to. All right. And are you just Normally, wanting to? But check more rooms or are you looking for anything in particular within this fortress well before we left i did want to say one thing um looking through the rooms that we've looked through so far they've been very sparse um but the entrance had art and furniture mm -hmm. the eth when we looked at the empty rooms, did it seem cleaned or more like a, I don't know, like a room at an open house for a freshly built building, like never occupied? Uh, looking at it, there would be the, the smallest minute chips and bits of wear in the stone. Um, but... You gather it's more like, you suppose, freshly cleaned, or just the fact that it just didn't get dirty in the first place down right. here. Mm. Um. Mm. All right. Do you do y'all want to look for anything else in particular? Nothing specific. I honestly was just feeling nosy. Mm. Then, All right. if you want to just keep moving on randomly through, one of you can roll a d6. Okay. I'll do it. Mm -hmm. Dalton never fails us when an important roll is... There we go. Four. There we go then as you begin to move through you notice that some of the hallways look much more well kept Alon you begin to follow those paths and as you start to make your way through you come to a set of beautiful golden doors encrusted with emeralds sapphires rubies there's fine filigree all amongst it as these intricate geometric symbols wrap into each other along the edges of the door there are more mathematical fractal patterns that as you look into them alon just keep on going and going and going like carved to a level of precision in detail that surpasses your eyes. How how big are they? Uh, these doors, uh, they probably go up about twenty feet, and the entryways maybe fifteen feet wide. These are beautiful. How in the world did someone make this? A lot of care, looks like. Yeah. Um, do the gemstones seem to be fulfilling like some kind of uh magic purpose like um fueling something like um how the amethyst we have 
are meant to obscure us, or do they seem more decorative? If you had to guess, this seems to be decorative. Just beautiful ornamentation. Just trying to create the most beautiful door possible. Interesting. I'm not even, like, looking at it. It does not seem to be a magical door. Is there even so much as fingerprints on the handles? No, none. Do we want to barge in, or do we want to knock? I don't suppose there's a keyhole we can peer through. Does not appear to be a keyhole. Does These doors don't appear to have a lock. Um... Alon's gonna sort of pull out a pair of gloves and put them on and just attempt to open the door as slowly and smoothly as possible. You can do so. As the doors don't have any friction to them, they slide open easily as if they are brand new. And as you open this interior space, you look upon what is inside a grand throne room there is a section that might have been a bridge at one point which has fallen away but on the other side is a beautiful platinum and gold throne that stands against kind of this beautiful stained glass window a depiction of what appears to be the rings of Merapis. Does this look like any place we've heard legends about? No. Just to clarify, when you say the rings, are there three? No. There are four. I'm going to shut the door. Okay. In the I think glimpse we, we right got... Uh, yeah, that'd probably be best. Uh, what were you about to say? I'm sorry. Oh, you're good. I was just going to ask. In the glimpse we got, I assume we didn't immediately see anyone in there. You did not. Okay. Yeah, let's make our way out of here. All right, you're trying to get out? Yes, please. Roll a d6. <sighs> okay, here we go. Six. Okay. Then, as you begin making your way out, there is a rumbling as you look down the hallway, and behind you, you see coffins floating towards you at a regular, normal pace, as you kind of have to duck for a moment as the trail of 100 fresh, glittering, new platinum coffins floats by you and you follow them out to the exit. Signal up to Boudica to get us out of here. Okay. Then Boudica will swoop down, pick you all up, giving you some uppies, and will fly each of you back up to your vantage point above the fortress. 
uh, Elon, as soon as we're, we've landed, will kind of go, I'm sorry for cutting that off. I felt that was a good time to leave expeditiously. Yeah, that was interesting. Uh, Colin, I assume that with the um, level of information that Vicha had access to, the, the fourth ring would be a surprise to him, right? Yes. Okay. That was some interesting stained glass they had in there. Very. Uh... As was just the entirety of the massive throne room it was also quite interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever it belonged to clearly didn't need to eat or anything. That's. Oh. Whoever was in there was not very mortal. That would be my assumption. Heck, for all we know, those uh, terrariums might have just been their hobby. I imagine that if you're here stuck for so long, you need something to do. Yeah. Uh, do we know how much time we were in there for? Uh, maybe two, three hours. Ooh, okay. Cool. Not too long, just enough time for you to poke around a bit and maybe got through a tenth of the, the first floor. Um, now that we're back up here, can I look around and see if I see any additional movement that wasn't present before? Um, in the fortress, you don't see any additional movement. You would see, though, on a distant floating piece of the drift landscape... There is a person standing there watching you now. I'll sort of tap everybody on the shoulder and motion in that direction. Does it look human? Make a physical check. Okay. Four. Four. As you look at this particular individual, they have generally human-like features at first. Um, seem to be wearing a long blue and gold and violet toga um, that kind of shimmers and glitters here in the lower light of the drift. But then you begin to see moss grows out of parts of their body and they have tattoos of stars that are moving along across the body and as you really peer you can see that their eyes are just solid black sclera with these tiny white dots in the center There's something. Yeah. I'll sort of give that description to everybody else. Uh, is he just staring in our direction? He's just gazing at you, yeah. Does he seem to 
I know we only saw the, the vague like silhouette before, but does his silhouette kind of seem to match the person in the window we saw, or does this seem like someone separate? This seems like someone separate. Okay. Guess I'll give him a little wave. <laughs> They'll wave back. Seems like a cool guy. Wonder if he'd be interested in a book club. <laughs> Silly. Well, he seems friendly enough. Do we want to go over and talk to him? See what he knows about the fortress down there? How far away does he look? Mm, probably three, four hundred feet. We can go over there if you'd like. This is the first yeah. living thing we've seen since the raptors, though, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Besides... Whoever was in there, yeah. Assuming they were living. That's assuming they were living. I'm a little nervous about approaching anyone just because of what we've heard, but I mean, I do trust your judgment, Feature. You can go say hi if you want. Yeah, I can take the lead. You guys can also stay back if you're that worried. I'll... Come with you, but I'm gonna stay a little ways back. I'll go okay. with you too, but staying close to Boudica so we can make a quick escape. All right, Vicha will lead the way. Okay. Then, as you begin to make your way over, hopping from perch to perch, you can see the individual just continues to maintain their position as you approach. They don't say anything. They're just standing there. Uh, hello. Are you uh, from around here? No, not particularly. Well... Or, being from a place, that would signify a home. My home is everywhere. I'm a wanderer. Uh, uh, excuse me, uh, may we have your name? I am the Stargazer. Stargazer. All right. Do not worry. Uh, I've been observing you, Alon. Ah. All right. Uh, may I ask for how long? Hmm. This point now, about 17 years. Oh. Huh. Not continuously. Here and there. Right. Okay. Uh. You uh, do that a lot? Observing people? Mostly stars. People tend to get in the way sometimes. Uh. Get in the way as in bother you or block your view? Just come, talk, take the attention away. I don't mind it. it. Just happens. Oh, uh, terribly sorry. Would you prefer we leave you with your privacy? I don't have any preferences. I just get a closer look at all of you. Okay. Uh, since you 
Observe. Uh, you happen to know anything about uh, that structure down there? A bit. Here and there. Hmm. An old thing. Far before my time. Far before yours. So, uh, being before my time is not particularly hard. Uh, <sighs> Very fair. Couldn't, yeah, so, uh, I couldn't rightly tell myself. Uh, hard to tell how old something is when you're in a place with no erosion. There is erosion here. There must be. Well, I suppose that's true. If, If that's if there is, it must be extremely slow acting. Here, it's incredibly quick. Oh. Huh. Would All you right, be able to sorry. tell us who the? Oh. I'm sorry to ask, but you said that you were observing alone for 17 years, but we've been. We've noticed some weirdness with time, depending on where we go. So, 17 years by what metric? <laughs> well, yes, you found out my little game. That number is, quite frankly, arbitrary. Some might say I've been watching him for a hundred years. Others, for only a few minutes. This time, as we have come to know it, mm, that can't exactly be a good measure. Really, we must look at the turning of the stars. Their changes. And in those, I've been watching him for 17 changes. Huh. Now, not always with the intent to watch you. Although... Hmm... I do remember the first time I did truly take notice of you. The eighth cycle. Uh, what was it? The fluid. It ran from their eyes and their mouths. They choked on their own bile. They died. Oh, you spent days sitting beside those cots. But yet you could not save them all. One after another, you had to bury. What was it? 150? Down to 25? <laughs> That, yeah. Mm. Good enough to make you retired. Yeah. Pretty quick after that, yeah. <clears throat> so yes, that's when the eye was. So you caught. saw that, huh? I made my way around. Huh. Mainly, it's, I was uh... watching the area, looking up. Looking around. And it just so happened that... Well. I learned of your potential importance. Put my eyes on you. And I saw. Saw? Yes. I saw. Just like I see the, saw the stars, I have seen you. Well, uh... Uh, was this just me? <laughs> Have you uh, observed my companions here as well? I've observed your companions. Oh. Boudicca, I have been observing for many changes of the stars. Then as well, Neza, very few changes. Vicha, I've only been observing... For this one change. What causes the stars to change? Hmm. So many things. At the end of the day. It is the fault in the world that causes change. Just as how in the fault 
in the winter, the leaves on the trees begin to fall. They change. They cycle. And it's much the same thing. Did you say the constellations were shifting on his skin? Yes. The way the stars move on your skin, is that similar to how they move up there? At times, yes. What a fault caused the last uh, change in the stars? He points at Nasa. The Maraviglia, I assume? Correct! Huh. How did the stars change? In what way? Hmm. Well, the patterns, the way they are perceived, their exact positions. A nebula. Due to the excess energy out there, it was destroyed. And the night sky adjusted, it adapted. As the light and all things in it changed. The spark of creation snuffed. But yes, I suppose that is a story for another day, another time. But it was you who created the change. And now the next change shall be coming very soon. Likely not by you, but you shall be benefited by the change. It is my deepest hope that this is the last one. The last change? The last change, yes. I was there for the beginning of the events that would end this cycle. Now I believe I am slowly beginning to witness the end. The end of the changes to the stars. Soon they will become fixed in the sky in one way or another. And in their fixing, either the great betrayal will be righted, or the world will be doomed forever. And I cannot wait to see which is which. What's the great betrayal? Ah, uh, yes. It's when the high gods left entire races to be slaughtered, their greatest allies betrayed, left behind in their desperate escape. I was not there to witness it myself, but I have heard stories. Stories of the screams. Imagine it. Children from hundreds of races snuffed out in one day. All of them. The knife twisted into the back. How terrible a thing. Hmm. The blood, it soaked the soil, truly. But even then, could we conceive of it as soil? Is that even the right word to describe what it was then? Could blood coat the sky? Perhaps. I think, though, Vicha, blood coated the soul. Left a wound deeper than anything else. A piece taken out of the world. He's taken out of the world on that when we went in the fortress, the m mural we saw of the Rings of Merapis, there were four of them. Does that... Is that the piece you mean? No. That was the High God's vengeance, though. They killed an entire ring.
Sorry if that is shocking. But, if things go poorly, they will destroy at least two more. At the very least, I don't believe the Dark Ring will survive. Why, why the Dark Ring? The gods don't like that one. And so they shall destroy everything and everyone on it. Likely. They might claim to fight for it, but at the end of the day, I think that they will probably just let it fall to dust. Why don't they like it? Low magic. Hated. So hated. But why is it hated? Hmm. Because in low magic there is truth. And the gods cannot bear it. But I am a seeker of truths. Though not to share. They are my own personal... Satisfaction. I suppose at least for now. I will have duties soon. Duties that I must fulfill. But for the moment, I wait. I watch. I observe. I collect. I document. What is your work? Are you... I am the stargazer. I gaze at the stars. Of course. So then, your duty is to record? My duty is to watch, and in watching, I record. Who do you record for, other than yourself? In truth, I record for all the rings. I record for the cosmic stack. And I record f for the beyond. What do you mean by the beyond? Mm. Such a thing is rather difficult to explain. Would you like a demonstration? Uh, sure. Very well then. And all of you watch as Stargazer walks to the edge of one of the floating bits of rock and extends a hand over the abyss and you watch as the darkness below begins to bulge as the constellations across Stargazer's body begin to move and you see at this moment Reality bend as if it is fabric, as a giant hand, many hundreds of miles wide, starts to push up from far below in the darkness, as if reality is just but holding it back. And then you see more. More hands, stretching for miles across the darkness below. Some hands have twenty fingers, others two, others are muscular, others slender. Some grotesque, some beautiful, but all reaching up, up towards all of you. And then Stargazer turns back, and all at once the hands begin to descend. As you can see, there is much beyond. I think BJ looks somewhere between excited and about to throw up. This is sketching uh, furiously. 
When you say beyond, do you mean beyond the stack? Yes. Those who are left behind. Well. Hmm. Those but who are still alive. Those that we can hope for. Left behind by who? Have you not been paying attention? By the high gods. Just abandoned? Correct. To them. To those who are below. So why would they do this? Abandon people? Destroy a room? Why? Why does a serial killer kill? Because they can. That might be a good response. Because it's in their nature? Another good one. Do we? I, I assume he's hard to read, right? There's no really way to read if he's telling the truth or if he's m manipulating it. Yeah, he's pretty hard to read. Very fair. Just figured I'd ask. Uh, and she you... said the, the other rings falling. You think that's going to happen when? You said soon? Soon, yes. When the stars turn for the final time. You, uh, you said that, um, they were, that you observed the beginning of this. Would, are the people who were left behind from what came before? I do think that you have a misunderstanding. The beginning of this happened only a few turnings of the stars ago in a place known as Western Vospora. Oh. That is when it all began to turn, when the stars started to change. And I saw it. I witnessed it, and thus I have been busy documenting for the last many turnings. You have seen much. Yes, yes I have. A gift and a burden to me. You said you were... this was your duty, right? Yes. Did someone give you this duty? In a way. In another way, I chose it. How did you come to be? I sought the right information. What was the right information? You can see now that... Uh, Stargazer smiles. What were you before you sought the right information? What were you before you were you? I don't know. I guess not much of anything. Then you have an answer.
I have another question, unrelated to what we were talking about. But you said the stars change in response to large events that happen here. Excess energy passing off, you said, right? That is an elementary way to look at it, yes. How does what happens here affect all the stars? Happens here, where we stand. Is this your question? Yeah. How did the Meraviglia and what happened in Western Bospora and all of that affect the position of the stars? You can see Stargazer smiles again. Do you not understand the large changes that your actions had on the world? On the world, maybe. But I don't understand what impact our world has... On the stars. Do you know how many people that you irrecoverably changed forever? Their bodies, their forms, their psyches, their logic, their creation, their you primordial each, spark. Each person is stuck. Some glow brighter than others. But yes, this is what you fail to understand, Naza. You cannot understand how. Other people are important, and therefore, you take them, mold them, break them. And when they burn out and the sky changes, you sit and ponder. You wonder how could it have come to be? And yet, look, the nebula is destroyed nevertheless. The ripple began. It shattered outward. It changed. It is linked. You cannot fathom such links. But yet they exist, and they shall always persist. I am the stargazer. It is my duty to watch the stars. What am I doing now? And he will just continue to gaze at all of you. <clears throat> I think at this point, Elon turns to go back. Okay. Thank you for your time and your answers. Thank you for changing the stars. Do you enjoy when the stars change? I do. Do you not enjoy when day turns to night and night into day? I suppose I don't really notice it. There is beauty in the transition from the twinkling of the stars into the growing of the light, the beautiful colors upon the horizon, the sun rising in the sky, the largest star. It changes too, going across the firmament before setting reintroducing the beautiful color, and then opening the gates for the other stars to shine their lights. Thank you. I suppose Neza will follow along. Okay.
Vicha. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Vicha will just thank him as well and then kind of head back after the others. Okay. All right, and he's, I assume he just stays there still watching us the entire time? Mm-hmm. Great. We love being stars. I don't know if I think Alon gets back, sits down, and just puts his head in his hands. Yeah, I, I think Vicha opens his notebook to write all this down, but his notebook is probably... It probably didn't fare... Well, does the... The, the warrants don't just go through flesh, right? They d consume, like, anything living or not? Yeah. So his notebook's probably not looking that good. Yeah, it's Swiss cheese. You do need some extra loose pages? Here you go. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Um, and I think he'll just start scribbling on the blue sleeve uh, that Neza hands him. Mm -hmm. That was a lot. I always have one more question to ask, but I don't want to go over there alone. We're running I'll low go on back time, with you I think. One. I don't even know how we to had, like... begin. What's your question? There are so many questions. The one that I know how to phrase is if a person down here dies, does their star go out? And how are we linked to the stars? I mean, really how? Not just yes, people matter, but... What From causes the what? projection of the stars? Then... When... Oops. When the Stargazer talked about the, the people that were changed, their logic, their creation, their primordial spark, would we have been able to recognize that as, like, elements of the High Gods? Like... Those are all very much links to the High Gods. You should have. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's there. But it sounds to me like when people are changed, it does something, something to their connection with the High Gods. I don't know. I Did... I'm fine with going back up if you want to talk to him more. Uh... I have a more pressing question, I think, actually, for him. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I suppose we're heading back. Okay. If it's all the same to two of you, I'm going to stick here. Okay. Okay. Mr. Stargazer, I'm sorry to bother you again. Mm -hmm. Did the... So the High Gods have embodied concepts that people down here embody as well, right? Like logic and creative purpose? Yes. Did... did... The High Gods... Are the High Gods responsible for these phenomena in people? Or did people's qualities eventually manifest into High Gods? Wrong on both fronts. What are they, then? They're the ones that snatch the keys. What were they known as before they became known for holding these keys? 
That I do not know. Before my time. Okay, thank you. That's the last question I had. Gotcha, then will you walk back? I suppose so. Okay. I think we haven't asked yet details about the fortress, like, who is in it yet, right? Girl, we just learned existential crises. Give us a break. That's such a small problem. No, please, go ahead and ask. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I mean, I mean it is, c considering it's very linked to whatever, well, considering it how old it is and some of the things he was talking about, um, but yeah, um... Uh, the f fortress down there, who does it belong to? You said mm. it was very old. <sighs> that is a tricky question. They have many names. Although, I could set up a meeting, if you'd like. Would they be all right with that? There's only one way to find out. Could we know some of the names first? Hmm. You can see they kind of think. That is an interesting one, too. What information do you want the name to embody? Their best moments, their darkest moments, their hopes, their dreams, their goals, what their enemies think of them, what their allies think of them. Maybe their hopes, dreams, and goals. Oh, and oh. their hopes, dreams, and goals. You got it, Leechon. Mm. Then, likely Dustbringer would be the right name. And that, that would ring zero bells, right? Probably, yeah. Dustbringer. Interesting aspiration. They are bringing the dust. And you watch as the stargazer motions out at the life snow that is drifting down from on high and coalescing here. The name is accurate in so many ways. What is the snow? Hmm. It is fallout of a great tragedy. Which tragedy? <sighs> so, you know how bottom feeders will feed on the carcass of a whale for like years I was just thinking mm -hmm. whale fall yeah yeah please tell me this isn't Ishinagolan you can take 10 hero points motherfucker oh, no. I fucking Fuck hate Ishin me that God, that sucks. <laughs> Ow. I think I need to go stare at a wall for a long time. Yeah, same. 
No. Um, one more question for the Stone Gazer, before we all collectively go stare at a wall. Huh? If you were to name the person you just named Dustbringer, but based on their reputation instead, what would you then name them? Well, I would then probably... You may call me... No. Entropy. I'm okay, thank you. <laughs> As you feel a clawed hand grab your shoulder, Nasa. I'm good, thank you, though. Hello. You are asking many Hello. questions, my dear. I don't think this is responding. She's just looking scared. Judging <laughs> by your aether, you're one of Corinna's people. Is that a good thing? Hmm. For you, yes. Hmm. It means for me, though, that I will still have to keep being hungry. Although this has been quite the feast. We are terribly sorry to have bothered you. I... Don't be. Besides, you've gone into our fortress, the ancient fortress of my father, the Titan King's domain. You soiled its ancient halls, opened its rooms. For what? Were you invited inside? We... We were not invited inside. No, we're... Again, terribly sorry for trespassing. We you just were sent... You weren't invited inside. Whatever am I going to do with you, then? I don't know if we're, you know, we, we don't want to bother you anymore, though. We're happy to leave, and we didn't, mm. you know, we... Vicha, do you think it would be fair to pay a toll? <sighs> That's probably what's deserved. Hmm... Good. I can't kill you. But you have all grown very strong. And Vicha, I am starving. 400 spiritual damage to you, Vicha. At sheer 8. There is absolutely not a thing I can do about that. Um, 
I got one armor block. That's it. As the claws <laughs> go into you, then you, Neza, and Alon would watch as Veach's form just crumples as you slide into unconsciousness as the Aether Eater is going to begin to eat. And then Entropy is going to stand and is going to look back to you, Alon. Come now. It's your turn, Doctor. Uh, uh. I think Alon is just fully stunned at this point. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. I'll do this quickly. You'll need time to recover before the beacon arrives. Five fifty. Yeah, nothing I can do. As entropy is going to start ripping through everyone here. While she's going through Elon, because Elon said he was staying way over there. While she's going to Elon, can Neza ask Stargazer one last question before she's killed? Not killed, but knocked out. Sure. What is the absence of Aether? Mm. What is beyond? But even then, Aether is broken, incomplete. I suppose at the end of the day, Aether is the faults at all of our cores. 600 into your back, Neza. Yeah, nothing I can do about that. Yeah. As it is here where we will end our session for today. Okay. All of you level are at level one. That's the opposite of a level up. Yeah, it is. Um, just for fun, I'm going to create a separate character sheet for Neza for level one, so that way I don't lose this cool one. Okay. <sighs> yeah, you pulled out the string, all right. Um... <laughs> So you wonder why we mind our own business. We weren't going to enter the fortress, and then we were persuaded, and then we got punished for it. All right, I'm going to go to bed. Night, everybody. Good night. Hi. Thank you for the session. Why didn't you Thank leave? You. <laughs> what do you mean, leave? Just sit up there and leave. Where we pick up is all of you within the drift as your eyes start to flutter open as in the distance the fortress of Zix floats below as all of you feel around your bodies you feel more so empty over anything else you were all attacked by this Aether Eater. A force that was once used to kill high gods and rings. Set upon all of you in an ambush-like attack. As all of you kind of get up, looking at a kind of pocket watch that you carry along. It's maybe two or three hours to go um, until the coming of the beacon that will hopefully take all of you away. But I should ask now, what are you guys doing? Uh, 
I guess seeing the time, Elon will get up from wherever it is he's laying and go over to the beacon. Mm -hmm. Also, since we were in technically two separate groups when the thing happened, um, are Neza and Vija nearby? Or yeah, are they they're nearby. Over? Okay. In that case, I'll just sort of go ahead and... I know condition's bad, but I'm going to check to see if there's any additional effects from this besides massively draining our ether. I mean, overall, like, you weren't actually left with any bad physical injuries. Like, uh, pretty much everything has healed over. The main, you know, problem is just, like the lack of your energy, the lack of the aether, but otherwise right. all of you are fine. Huh, okay. Um, but yeah, I go over and sit by the beacon. Gotcha. See if it has changed in any way, or if it's just still steadily counting down. It's still uh, pretty steadily counting down. Are we still planning on breaking the amethysts and hiding ourselves? I think we have to. There's no way that we can go back there or not. There's... I... I feel like we have to at least make the attempt. I... I see no benefits to not doing it. Right. Makes sense. What I'm more concerned about is what comes after. That's part of why I was worried. If we got in a fight because of it, I don't know if we could take them. Well, but if we don't do it this time, there's not going to be another time we can. But the whole point, at least most of the point of this, was riding off of the chaos of traveling through so many dimensions. This is our one chance to break out of what I can assume to be an ironclad demonic contract. I think we have to take it. I'm not trying to read those literal million, I cannot stress this enough, literally a million pages of Infernal Contract again. Ratify the loophole. Never again. <laughs> As for what happens after, well, we have the knowledge of the weak window. And while our typical abilities are massively diminished and drained we still have our equipment on us so still have an ally although all the doctors is going to have to leave and go into hiding and we say we eventually meet up again because he needs blue jay to survive or one of the better ways for him to get it we can continue our plan as normal we just need to Hang on, can you, can you say that again? Are you, what about Polydectes? I know he needs Blue Jade, but are we, are you suggesting we just, we leave him with? No, that was the opposite I... of what I was saying. Oh, I was really confused by the words. It sounded um... like you were saying to leave him. No, we still have an ally. He said we we're going to meet up again at some point because he needs Blue Jade and therefore kind of needs us to get it. I'm confused by your using the terms some point because I imagine we're going to meet back up as soon as we get back and he's just going to come with us. That's where I was under the impression he was immediately going into hiding uh, for like a week because this is going to sustain him for a week. I could have sworn that was part of our conversation. I don't 
know much about his situation, but it sounds like if he has a week's worth of use out of it, he won't want to wait that full week to replace the blue jade. Very reasonable. Yeah, I imagine that in whatever sort of place he's being kept, on the other side of that window, there's probably somewhere in there a decent stock of it that he can use. In worst case scenario, we know where the mines themselves are. It is nearer to the cult, but we might be able to... I don't know. Sneak in? But in any case, a mission can generally go on as normal, I think. At least the next week of it. So, um, Fanon, now that we are level one again, what's your strength at, or physical? Not good. We well, get, we get five. Not good. Five, yeah. We get five points, okay. Um. You just it's gonna be at three. Okay, well, we're probably gonna have to work together on the window instead of just you, but we can probably still manage it. I can't um I can't make my potions anymore, but I have and three. You more all of those fucking chairs. laughed at me for saying we should get a nutcracker so we can do this if we can't stomp on something. Get fucked. If we had a rat breaking device, this would be so much easier. Can you explain where we would have gotten one? Build. Elon, you were I, saying. Uh, yeah. Uh, I can't make my potions anymore, but I do have three Gambush Tonics left. Uh, Naza is using one to attempt to break the gem. I'm probably going to be doing the same. Um, then I'll have two left. And... We can try and use those to work the window. Um, uh, out of character, there's no way to determine how much strength we'll probably need to break the gemstones, is there? I mean, it will g go off, you know, what it takes to break an average amethyst and how you're trying to do that. Like, if you're trying to crush an amethyst with your bare hands, that's going to require a lot of strength that you may or may not have. But, in the next few hours, could I attempt to make a small rock-making, rock-breaking device? With what? There are rocks on the ground, or there not? There are chunks of rock, yes. Okay, here's a stupid idea. Uh huh. We affix the rocks to the bottoms of our shoes. That way we can step on them a little bit easier. Yeah, I thought we had to do this on route back, which from y'all's description is basically okay. flight. Plan B we'll affix the rocks to our hands and then clap really hard on the amethyst. Uh, unless one of you is made of. Stone. I don't think that's gonna work. Okay, plan three. We take a book, because I have several, affix the rocks. What to... are the covers made of? Paper. That's... Mm. Affix the rocks to the insides of the book. Drop the amethyst in. Slam the book shut. Bam. Crushed amethyst. Okay, um, so, if I were to, okay, uh, Colin. Yes. With breaking the amethyst, uh, does it need to, from my understanding, does it need to shatter, or can we, like, chip it and that'll count? Shattering would be best. Shattering the, would be best. Getting okay. the energy out 
as quickly and as ferociously as possible. Okay, so um, Naza and I both have hammers on us. Uh, what about you two? <sighs> well, I, I don't. Hammers, I got, hand axes, daggers. I got, I got my hatchet. I got my sword. Okay, the hatchet will probably be more useful. All right, so... <clears throat> With, when it comes to gems, I think the easiest way to break them is, well, it would be with a hammer and a chisel, but blacking that, um, sharp, hard object and blunt force on the end of it to try and crack it, I think is probably our best bet. With lack of a solid surface on which to do, we might have to result, resort to hands or thighs or other parts of our own body this may result in a bit of injury to which we affix um, rocks what? to which we affix rocks We're... here's the problem skin is very spongy if you attempt to break an amethyst with any part of your skin it's not going to work because it will just instead soak into well how big are the amethysts? I'm imagining like average rock sized so like maybe size a piece like, of gum i was picturing like eyeball size that's about accurate yeah mm. but not um, like flip-flop sized no not flip-flop size that would be mm. it would one be of the biggest huge amethyst amount. ever yeah yeah so the hope diamond the isn't size, that big yeah. at the size of that when we try to break it, it's mostly just going to sink into the skin because skin is very flexible, which is why I keep suggesting we affix rocks to things because rocks are very inflexible. We can do that, sure. Uh, is there any slate around? Uh, it's mainly like chunks of floating basalt here. Oh, basalt. Okay, that's not that bad, actually. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. All right. Um, everyone gather up some rock. I'm going to go ahead and start doing that. Baby. Check. Kale is gathering up some rocks, and he already has um, a little bit of flint and steel that he'd also pass around to all of you. This also might help. Okay. Thank you. Do ya? Alright, I have a magic dagger on me that I can use to chisel and my hammer. Um, how's everyone else in terms of implements? I also have I... a magic dagger and a hammer. I have a regular dagger and a strong but regular sword. Um, can I take a look at the dagger? Yeah, and I'll pass over the dagger. It is just a dagger. Um, I inspect the dagger to see if it has any like chips or deficiency in it. I mean, it's got a few, like, chips. It's been well used, definitely. Um, you know, the actually the shipping and the usage here almost seems like this is the equivalent of, like, a surgical dagger. Mm. But it, in, like, a, a combat knife. I'm not sure what Vicha did to get it in this condition, but here it is. Do I... <laughs> Do I think it could be used for this task, or do I think it would break? It would definitely chip, but it could probably be used. Okay. Um, and then for Boudica, I think the hand axe should probably do the job. Hand axes have a good amount of heft, typically, so. Ex yeah, yeah. Uh, Kale, how about you? He's going to kind of slowly unsheath his mithril longsword. 
I was thinking I'd use this. If you're confident in your aim, that'll work. I'm not as accurate as I used to be, but Mithril is sharp. And put some burning oil on it. It should be able to cut through just about anything. Right. Just can't um, miss. And, yeah, very fair. Um, and like I said, just go collect some um, as like flat a piece of salt as I can find. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess using, I think I have rope. Yeah, I have rope. And using some rope attempt to affix it to my thigh. Okay. Yeah. I th like a lap desk. <laughs> yeah, like a lap desk. <laughs> You laugh, but it's functional. I... It is functional. It is functional. And consider it armor, too. If you miss swinging at your le your bare leg with a, s a chisel that is really a magical dagger... You don't need to sell dagger. me on this. It's all... Our... <laughs> I, I understand just perfectly. just the idea. If you miss, you don't want to stab yourself in the leg. You want to stab the rock. You also really don't want to stab yourself in the leg. That's where the femoral artery is. It's bad. Exactly. Elon's a doctor. Well, you know, it, it's also... You know, this is another concept. If you miss, then... Well, do you want to be indentured forever to a devilish contract, or do you wish to be dead? That is actually fair. Now, indentured. who's to say... I can... <laughs> oh, well... Fair enough. To the devils you go. Yippee. Um, I recommend everyone else go get a lap desk. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll do the same. I will get a lap desk. Can, uh, can I borrow rope from someone to affix it with? Here. Thank you. I have 60 feet. I have enough. Mm -hmm. Kayla as have... well will... Get a Can lap desk. <laughs> or lap desk. Lap desk. Do I even need to break an amethyst? I'm not in a contract. You don't. You're not you in don't. a contract. However, I, I, I can help. I, however, at the same time, I think being hidden from these sorts of entities might be useful no matter who you are. All right. I'll. Uh... I leave it up to you and your uh, good judgment, though. I'll do it to be maybe, a part of the team. Yeah, and maybe if one of us fails to break the amethyst years, we'll kind of make up for it. Hopefully. I sure hope that that logic is sound. Yep, yeah, Boudica has the option to either break her amethyst or help someone who goofs. I will... I will Am help I? someone who goofs. That is the utmost importance. Being hidden would be nice, but helping my friends out of their out of their devil contracts is priority number one. Priority numero uno. Yes. I see. I see. Okay, just to check. Vicha, and well, let's start with Caleb. What's your physical score? Uh, uh it is three. Kayla's three. 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 Mine's a two. Okay. So, so Elon should take one of the remaining gambler's tonics. You know what? Okay, so here's the thing. Either I can So Naze already has one and I have three left. Either all of us who need to break a a thing can take one now and try to sort of improve our odds with the with the amethysts, or we save a couple to use on the window when we get back up. Because I, I only have enough for one option or the other. I think the window will be easier to break. All right. Are you sure? Because Karenna mentioned that Boudica was the only one strong enough to do it. Uh, is that what she said? But there is a, a fault in one of the windows. 
Yes, and that was the reason I yeah. could even try. I could, in theory, teleport on the other side of it, but I don't know if it's any more breakable from that side. I mean, theoretically, I could, too. Mm. Why don't you... Mm. Okay, maybe keeping just one tonic would be good for the window. Okay. So, you've got one. I'll give one to Boudica to use on the window. And I think I should have one for the Amethyst since I have the lowest physical. Vicha, Kayleigh, which one do you want the last one? Give it to Vicha. Oh, you surprising. Sure? Mm. I toss it to beat you. All right, well, thank you. It's okay. I won't miss. Hmm. Uh, so that gives an extra 4d6 on the next roll you do after you drink it. 4d6, okay. And Are we um, taking these now or wait? <laughs> well, at this point, the... Beacon is beginning to flash. You have about two minutes. I recommend taking it at about the 30 second mark. I wish we'll Gold Rob had sororities so I can make a joke about that. That's not in character. <laughs> and I would say, as you're here, uh, all of you can make either a physical or a mental check. Well, you know which one I'm doing. Okay. Oh my god, the forge died on me. Turns out I was only on the login screen the entire time. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, wait, that was wrong. Oops, sorry. I only got one success. One. Yeah, one success. Yeah. Oh, I missed my prestige. I only- I didn't get any. Gotcha. I'm stupid. I'm gonna use one hero point. Okay. You're gonna use that for this? Just one. <laughs> Jamie got ten last time. That's I got one success. Alright. Yeah, you're all good. Hey. Nothing to see here. I'm stupid now, and I don't like it. I'm not even high enough level to take skilled anymore. <laughs> so sad. But at this moment, as the beacon begins to alight, whirling with power, all of you feel your bodies start to lift up as you are sent, hurtling up, back through the cosmic stack itself. Uh, chug. Mm -hmm. As this yep. is happening, all of you chugging that have it? Chug. Chugging, chugging. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Then, in that case, you begin to rise up and up and up. As this is happening, you have grown used to this rhythmic nature of travel, body becoming light as you ascend upward through the stack. But now things are different as you are going. It's not this one smooth ride. Slowly, all of you begin to feel that slow down approaching. And in this moment ahead of you, there's this flickering of iridescent magic as for but mere moments you are floating high above what looks to be the Tempest Wood, if you had to guess. Now's the time to break the Amethyst. One at a time, we're going to be rolling. Firstly, Vicha, 
How are you attempting to break your amethyst? Uh, Elon mentioned using the dagger, so I will try to do it that way. All right, make a physical check. Okay, and it was 46 added, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yikes. Um, I have one singular hero point. I will throw that in there. Okay. Three successes? Three. Unless anyone wants to toss some pity points. I don't have Take enough points to toss. Take Thank one reroll. I love you. I love you too. Three. Three. Then, as you pull back your dagger and you strike, the amethyst begins to shatter, splinters flying off in all directions as the magic is released. You're successful. Alon, are you making physical check as well? So you're trying to yeah. hit it? Alright, physical check. Um, uh, trying to sort of cross my legs as if I was sitting on the ground and bracing them against each other, I place the dagger over top and bash, it, bash the hilt with a hammer. With a hammer? Cool, cool, cool. Then you can make a physical check at benefit one, because you have the right tool for the job. Cool. Okay, here we go. Five. Cool. Your uh, amethyst shatters instantly as you kind of place it against your thigh desk, and as it explodes outward, the energy begins to wrap all about you. Naza, what are you doing? Very similar to Ilan, as she also has a hammer and the dagger, um, as she sort of, I imagine, has almost like a book to keep it steady, so that way the amethyst doesn't roll out anywhere as she braces it and attempts to hit it. Okay. Then go ahead and make the check. Benefit one. Oh god, my internet died. Okay, sorry, my internet died for a second. Do I also get benefit one for having the hammer? That's where the benefit one comes from, yeah. Thank you. I just heard at make the check, then silence. Mm -hmm. Four successes. Then with that, your amethyst explodes as well as the energy wraps around the space. And now Kale will ignite his mithril blade and try to cut his amethyst as well. Only one success as he f flies in and his blade chips the side of the amethyst, releasing some power from it. Boudica, you have a decision to make. Do you want to use your check to help Kaylee break his amethyst more? get more power out, or are you trying to break your own amethyst to give you some extra protection? I'm gonna help Kayla out. Alright, then make a physical check. Mm. Ah! Alright, power grandma clutches up as what are you using to help break this amethyst, Boudica? Well, I got my hatchet, and okay. I'm helping to just sort of hit that weak point he's put in there. Gotcha. Then, as Kayla ships it, and it begins to kind of tumble through space, almost in slow motion, you bring your hatchet down, causing it to <laughs> explode out in all directions. As now, I'm gonna need you all to make spirit saves. As the energy radiates out in this space, and you feel your souls being rended from your mortal bodies. Oh, God. I'm going to use a hero point. Okay. Hero point. Yeah, same. Can I use a hero point again? No. Oh. It's only one per roll. That's what I suspected. Kayla got a success, though. Um, so. We all dumped spirit. <laughs> yes, you did. Okay. Then, as this energy begins to formulate around you, 
all of you feeling those souls changing. It is unstable energy. The mixing of magic all around you. This is a dangerous ritual that all of you are taking part in. Kale kind of cries out as he's attempting to resist. And in this moment, as all of you are beginning to feel yourselves be twisted and warped, you feel something protecting you. It is quite strange, actually, that in this moment, <laughs> There is like this protective field that is starting to arise all around you. An invisible hand keeping the forces back. And although your souls begin to change, the worst of it is kept back from all of you. Neza, you can choose part of this soul change due to you eating the life snow. So, this soul change can be, you know, any kind of small thing. A change in eye color, change in hair color, uh, a new kind of birthmark or tattoo that forms. And it can even be something more significant, like the changing of your race completely, the switching out of a power, etc., etc. Is there anything in particular that you would like your soul change to do as you've been granted the power to help shape this. Oh, Jesus. Given that I just built her character sheet, there's nothing of that significant level that I would necessarily need to do. Then are you just letting the energy wash over you in any way that you wish? Or any way I that think it wishes? I for funsies, we'll go for hair color. All right. For minor. Gotcha. Then what's your new base hair color? I'm very glad you asked. There you go. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Then your hair color becomes more pink in nature. We really did find some hair dye. I made a joke like two sessions ago, like, oh, can I use that miracle to change my hair color? Apparently we can. Yep, apparently you could. Vicha, uh, please go ahead and roll a d6 for me. Five. Hmm. What do you want your new hair color to be? I think streaks of gray could be fun. I was kind of playing with that before I settled on black. Gotcha. Then, you know, these thick gray streaks can begin to start running through Veach's hair. Alon, roll a d6 for me. Ooh. Six. Uh, you rolled user choice. Is there any change that you would like to happen to Alon as you're able to more control the effects of the soul change. Join us. <laughs> um, okay, Skittles hair crew. Ah, <laughs> uh, facing Fionn. Taste the rainbow, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's. Yeah, Brad. <laughs> you know what? Let's give him some tattoos. Okay, what tattoos? Um, I imagine like a full sleeve that depicts a variety of plant types. Ooh, okay. Very nice. Do you want them to be able to shift, alter, change almost like you can search for the exact plant type that you want to look at on your arm? You know what? Yeah. Okay. And this is a... T well, I should say the entire sleeve of tattoos can never 
fade. Think of them as not tattooed on your body, but tattooed onto your soul. Great. Thumbs up. A truly permanent tattoo. A truly permanent tattoo, unless you want to go through this endeavor again. I would not yeah. recommend it. You know, my dad has full sleeves and, like, his, uh, like, ink on his elbow got super worn down, so it looks like it never got tattooed in the first place. And he said that was the most painful part. So, mm. fully permanent ink is actually not bad. Yeah. And, Boudica, you can go ahead and roll a d6. Alrighty. Guess what, Boudica? Your, your hair color, <laughs> too. This is some bullshit. This is Can ridiculous. Does Elon's hair also get tattooed? No, it's just an <laughs> arm sleeve. How does that work? Um, Skittles hair crew, what color are we lacking right now? All. You got pink and white. Mm. Boudica's hair is going to turn into a very deep pink. Oh, so we got multiple pinks. Okay. Hey, yes. get your own thing. <laughs> the Boudica's favorite color is pink. Copied me about the fucking cult. Copied me about the Meraviglia. Copied <laughs> me about the hair color. No, I did not copy you. The thing is, Boudica's favorite color was already pink. I already mentioned that. Is it too late for me to go pink too? Just to piss Jamie off? Yeah, you can do that. Her... Please, that would be so fun. Oh my god, we match. It's because her husband was pink. You don't even understand. You don't get it. <laughs> it would be so... God, I can't believe this. I wish, Alon, you had chosen to make your hair pink so we could all come out just for the pure roleplay of coming out and going, wow, that was a really weird secondary effect. I guess now we're going to warn everyone forever that doing this makes your hair turn pink with absolutely no <laughs> variance. I'll keep the gray. That That is what I originally declared. Cool. Kayla's going pink. pink. Yes! Oh, nice! <laughs> Is he doing, like, streaks, or is he going full pink? Full pink. Nice. He's a hobgoblin. Does that mean full body? No. The hobgoblin's Racist? flesh is red. Uh oh. For whatever it's reason, not I thought fur. hobgoblins had fur. <laughs> no, bugbears have fur. Mm. Don't be goblin racist, Dalton. Yeah, man, come on. Genuinely... Didn't they go over sensitivity training at the hospital? <laughs> I have played a hobgoblin character for over a year at this point. Everyone in that campaign assumed it was fur. It's it's not. That's crazy. I to tell them. Yeah, it's like no 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 no. Bug bears have fur. They're the furry mm. ones. I mean, technically I they can have body hair, but the, they just have red skin. It's a whole thing about in the D&D &D lore how they're militaristic and stained blood. It's fine. <laughs> but as all of your characters basically get a hair change or get tattooed there is an acceleration and then a warbling effect in the air a reaction that all of you certainly weren't expecting and then you stop moving all is one. And as you blink your eyes, you're standing in the middle of what appears to be a restaurant. There is a stairwell uh, kind of outside on what appears to be like a, a patio, a, a platform that heads up and down. There are a few customers milling about. There seems to be someone at uh, the counter who is taking orders. Everything is lit by these uh, torches uh, contained within glass. You're not detecting any magic, Naza, so you don't exactly know what is going on. Uh, there is a sign in the corner that says, Welcome to Ahab's. And as you look outside, Vicha, you are floating amongst the clouds as you're looking about you 
cannot see the ground in this place. But here you are. And did we like land here or are we standing? Are we in a booth? Oh, uh, you you're standing here. Yeah. And no one seems to like be turning to acknowledge people who suddenly appeared here. No, 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 no. As you look around, you can see that there appears to be a rip in space time as what appears to be a light green kobold with a giant backpack walks out and starts to make his way up to the counter. Seems like a regular occurrence at this place. Uh, uh, um, Elon, look outside. You said I couldn't see the ground, mm -hmm. but can I at least determine if this seems like regular clouds? Well, you, as you're looking, firstly, this restaurant continues down into the clouds, um, Considering it's floating up and down, bobbing in space, can't see the bottom. You don't know exactly you know, how deep the structure is. Um, that's something. You also look up and you don't see the top floor of this place. It's like it just keeps on going. Um, the, again, the clouds seem normal. Um, the pigs. The pigs don't seem normal, though. The pigs are flying. They do have little white wings, and they are just gliding through the sky, Alon. Do their wings look big enough to physically support their body weights? No. No, according to all known laws of aerodynamics. <laughs> aviation. According to all known laws of aviation, pigs cannot fly. Their little tiny wings cannot support their massive plump bodies. Can't believe pigs finally flew. Is it day or night? Uh, it seems to be kind of evening, like sunset. The sign Are the was stars out yet? Uh, um, I mean, looking up, you can barely start to see stars peeking out. Do they look like the ones we're used to? No. Uh, to clarify, the sign that says welcome to Ahab's, was that in common? Uh, yes. Interesting. Do, do I... I assume this doesn't match any dimension I've heard of, does it? Uh, make a mental check. Great. I get, uh, exceptional mind, thankfully. It doesn't matter. Yeah, this uh, isn't zero. ringing any bells, yeah. Okay. Do we see a menu? You do see a menu. And we can Great. read it? Uh, yeah, of course. Here, you look at Ahab's amazing menu. Pure pork burger, tempting cheeseburger, triple thick shakes, golden french fries. Uh, okay. I don't know is there like a, is there like hungry. a is there like a line or is like the person behind the counter just standing there? Uh, you can see that the only person who was at the counter now was the small green kobold, and the guy behind it um, seems to be human with like male uh, long black hair that actually goes past the waist you don't actually see where it ends he's got kind of like a captain's hat on he's just kind of smiling talking with the kobold putting in the order as he shouts something back to the kitchen okay i will get in line behind the kobold yeah the the kobold is just making his way out of line so the guy and uh nods to you hey Call me Ishmael. How can I help you today? Uh, I understand if you're busy. Really quickly. Um, where 
Where are we? Oh, you're at Ahab's burger joint. I mean, like, d dimensionally speaking. Uh, you're you're in the pocket dimension, friend. Ah. Okay. Uh, can I get a root beer, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anything else? Uh, y'all hungry? Can I? Can I get some coffee? Coffee? Consume. Sure. How do you take it? Um, take it black. Okay. And can I also have a glass of milk? Sure. Thank you. Uh, pig, cow, or whale? I have not tried whale yet. I'll go for that. Well, milk. Okay. Tried pig? You don't know what I've done. I know. It was a question. Rika's just gonna narrow her eyes. Um, yeah, I have... shrug. What flavors of shakes do you have? Uh, well, we got chocolate, we got vanilla, we got strawberry, and we got corn. May I have chocolate, please? Sure! Uh, can I actually also get, uh, some of the fries, please? Yeah, okay. Hey, Small, hey. medium, or large? Let's go medium. Okay. Could I have a corn shake and a pure pork burger? Sure. Anything you want on that? Uh, lettuce and onion. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how do you want it cooked? Uh... Medium's fine. Okay. Colin, does it does the menu look like pork burger has been edited in game? No. Okay. I was wondering if they had a different kind of burger and just taped pork over it and I was gonna ask about it. <laughs> well they have cheeseburgers too. Well I'm um, curious about the don't particularly feel hungry at the moment. Not a curiosity. What's the thirst quenching? Oh, that? Well, it's basically we take a whole bunch of caffeine and combine it with uh, our corn shake and our whale milk. And uh, that usually keeps people going for about a year. Like, they don't have to drink tempted. anything else for a year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's good for people who are passing by. Um, but um, it does kind of taste like ass, so, you know. Uh, I looked at Kayle. Does he look... <laughs> He's okay? <laughs> you can see Kayle is just looking at all this, and he nods. Um, well, as you're... As you're doing all this, um... I have... Three pork burgers, uh, two root beers, and uh, two vanilla shakes. And the guy takes it down. Yeah, 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 I got it, I got it. Is there like a cash register that I can see what the total is here? Let's see, right now, this is running up to 15. Uh, 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 you're up to about. Uh, Gold piece and a couple silvers. Uh, I will put a gold piece on the two gold pieces on the counter. Uh, could you break that one for me? Yeah, and he'll break it and pass you back the three silver. Elon, may Thanks. I use those? May I use three silver to get something? Here. Thank you. And I also have two more silver. I don't have. I exchanged more all of my money for Lyra. I, I, I can have give you more gold. gold. Okay, I'll trade you, and she'll give him back the three silver and just one gold, or take back one gold. Yeah, here. May I also have a cheeseburger, please? Yeah. Uh, what do you want on that? Um, 
Lettuce and tomato and onion, please. Mm hmm Gotcha. And you want that cooked? Medium well. All right. Uh, if you add in another silver, I can make it a double. Here. Okay, good, because Nasa was looking at it long. <laughs> I could feel it through the screen. Nasa will pass over that one gold piece. Gotcha. And, uh, he'll give you back four silver. And she will pass the four silver to Alon. <laughs> All right, um, should be out in uh, about five, four, three, two. And he turns around and like there's this giant plate of food that gets passed through kind of a window by like five tentacles and he grabs like your massive plate of food or really a tray and like sets it down before all of you. All right, uh, enjoy your stay at Ahab's. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. The service was impeccable. Okay. Go to Is there a, a tip jar around? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Can I make some anthropological observations? If you would like. Looking at other patrons, do they seem to leave tips? Is uh, there a tipping culture here? There does not seem to be a tipping culture here, no. Excellent. Um, I try and find a place for all of us to sit. Gotcha. Are you trying to stay at this level or are you trying to go up or down? Let's stay here for now. Gotcha. I mean, there's a kind of a back uh, kind of like counter with seats on it that you all kind of pull up to where you can sit. Cool. Peter, can I try a little bit of your corn shake? Yeah, go for it. And I will try a tiny bit of the corn shake. After Veach has had his, I'm not taking the first sip from him. Okay, so Vichy... sure. uh, how does the first sit taste? So you know corn? Yeah. That. I think Vichy can vibe with that. <laughs> okay. I was really tempted to do the thirst quenching. Um... Oh yeah, I really <laughs> yeah. think we should get some thirst quenching for the road before we leave. <laughs> I think if, if also... we get one and split it between all of us. I'm also very... Um interested as to Boudicca's coffee with whale milk. Yeah. No, my coffee doesn't have whale milk in it. I got the glass of whale milk and a coffee. And, uh, okay. the, the whale milk is like, more green in color, and it fizzes like a soft drink. It's got air bubbles in it. Does it appear? Well, it does appear, yes. <laughs> the, the the milk did appear with the rest of the food. This I can what? confirm. You got cut off at the word appear. Sorry. Um, my wife has been cutting in and out for the past few days. Um, so I asked, did it appear carbonated specifically with carbon? Um... I mean, impossible to tell. Okay, that's fair. Well, there is gas how in does it. it taste? Oh. How how does it taste? Uh, it's actually very light, like kind of the texture of skim milk, but carbonated, and otherwise tastes like milk. Tastes like carbonated milk. Can I try some? Alon just eats his fries and drinks his root beer. <laughs> I will allow anyone who wants a sip of the milk a sip of the milk. Cool. We just trying it. And he'll have passed his corn shake over to um, Nasa to try as well. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's corn. Yeah, it's good. I th I, Veach has been in the fucking arena for so long that I think at this point he will eat basically anything. Fair. Um, I think, like, Elan is halfway through his little thing of fries before he just sort of looks up to everybody else and is like, uh, hey, gang, what the hell? 
Kayla is uh, halfway through his second pork burger and goes, You know, maybe things are finally looking up. Maybe the high god said, This is what we need right now. You know, I did really need a cold drink, so I'm with you there. <laughs> and he's just like wolfing down the burger. Elon, um, God, I feel so bad asking you for money. It's like asking your dad. Um, may I borrow some silver again? I was going to bring something back with us. You can Here, and I, hand you, and I hand you six silver. Thank you. I'll be right back. You going back up to Ishmael? I guess. Hey, back for more? Um, do you have to-go cups? Uh, yeah. May I have a root beer, please? Yeah, sure. Small, medium, or large. Whichever one the seven copper is. Uh, well, they it's the same for you know, all the sizes. Oh, okay. Medium, please. I live here. Okay. Anything else? So there's... I was given, in effect, 60 copper, right? Correct. May I also have a... Okay, fuck. May I also have six thirst quenchings in to-go cups? Six? Uh, sure, I could do that. Um, They're you... not all for me. Okay, I'm still going to have to have you sign a waiver. I'll just... Do most people drink an entire thirst quencher on their own? Most try. I'll have three thirst quenchers in to-go cups, please. Just uh, three. Okay, uh, I'm still going to need you to sign this waiver here. He pulls out a I waiver from behind the counter. Carefully read the waiver. Uh, making sure I'm not signing another fucking devil contract. Not a devil contract, but it basically says that Ahab has no liability for excess shitting, vomiting, stomach pain, bleeding from the eye, short-term memory loss, long-term memory loss, uh, violent acts of arson and it just kind of has this like long laundry list of side effects one thirst quencher please <laughs> okay go cup yeah a uh, small medium or large small small please all right uh in the small category do you want small really small or droplet how many droplets are in a small I could count if you really <laughs> want me to. The customer's Small, always right. Okay. Small, please. <laughs> the poor guy. Small. Here you go. Thank you. And we'll pass over the... One silver. Yeah, the one silver. We'll turn around and get for you your root beer. And then one, like, Dixie Cup-sized um, container... That has this, like, smoking black liquid. Like, jet black as he passes it over. Alright, Our... enjoy your day. Thank you. People who drink an who try to drink an entire thirst quencher, how far do they usually get? Oh, they usually get to the floor. Thank you. <laughs> and I will go back to where I was. <clears throat> it's five silver. Mm -hmm. I got a... I was gonna get food, but I don't know how well it will keep, so instead got a drink to share when we get back, and also I got us one thirst quenching to share between all of us. It's you said this, this was a jet black? <laughs> jet black, and it's giving off, like, black vaporous smoke from it as well. 
Which Wrong. also is disturbing, because is this a sealed container? Like, it won't spill if we carry it with us? Uh, it's sealed, yeah. It's, like, leaking through the sides of, like, this little Dixie cup. Right yeah, now, it's horrifying. still on the tray. From my uh, professional doctoral and alchemical experience, Will, is this poison? Who the fuck knows, man? Okay. <laughs> Everything's Wait. poison if you do it wrong enough. I'll drink some. We doing this here? No, God no. I was thinking it's sort of an emergencies only thing. How so? Oh. It's supposed to cover you for a year. Well, I tried to get one for each of us and he made me sign a waiver. Or tried to make me sign a waiver. So I tried to get one... So I tried to get three to split amongst the six of us. And... He still had me sign the waiver, so it just got this one. So this is very dangerous. It also mentioned threats of spontaneous acts of arson, bleeding from the eyes, vomiting, things like that. So I, I, don't need a, I don't need a weird drink for me to commit spontaneous acts of arson. I don't either, but I don't want to do spontaneous acts of arson without being in my proper state of mind. So, Alon, I figured this would be sort of I a last-ditch last effort if we ever get stuck in a horrible situation. I think that would be, what if the side effects kick in immediately after drinking? Wouldn't it be better to drink it now and then be good for whenever? I was assuming we would drink it when we really needed spontaneous acts of arson. Personally, when? I still really want to drink it now. <laughs> Ilana's you gonna, are like, free to crack. go get your own. Ilana's gonna, like, crack the lid open. Gotcha. As you... Is... Okay. Are you, you're looking at it? Mm-hmm. Uh, you can see the liquid is, like, in, like, this mini whirlpool, and it's giving off, like, these, um, like, bubbles as it's whipping around in there. And then you watch as momentarily the liquid stops and almost, like, completely refigures itself to look like this tiny little cat completely made of this black liquid sitting there in the cup. And it looks up at you and says, I have seen your death. And it goes back to its liquid, like, whirlpool form after that. Okay, shut the lid. Shut it. Um, you said it's like a disc Dixie cup, right? Uh huh. It was a small what's little the, cat. What's the what's the sort of temperature feel like in this thing? Well, on one uh, side of it, it feels cold, and the other side, it feels hot. So, meet in the middle, room temperature. Hmm. Is it like um? Have you ever had like an undertow? No. Never mind then. Is uh, are, are we sort of, sort of dealing with this sort of situation? Um, uh, not even that. Like, it kind of has that jet black consistency, although it's, it is very much, like, still, like, kind of the consistency of water. Ah. Uh. Okay. Um, yeah, I think we leave that for the time being. I was gonna like Fine. dip a f dip a pinky in it and try it, but after it became a cat that spoke to me, I don't think I want to do that anymore. Yeah, very fair. Uh, well, you guys are the ones who paid for it. You could get your own. I could get my own. Only three copper pieces. the steel it is tempting <laughs> i mean I let's see there was a <laughs> uh how small is the really small uh the really small it's pretty much like it contains the same amount of liquid as like a teaspoon 
so it's quite small. Yeah, fuck it, let's go really small. Okay. You heading up to Ishmael then? Yep. Hey, what can I get you? Hey, uh, can I get the thirst quenching um, in the really small? So here's this waiver that I have to have you sign. <laughs> Passes it over. Fine, Micha will read the waiver and then sign it. Wait, so I didn't have to sign for no, you, small. You signed for it. Oh. You had to. No matter what, you have to sign. Okay, I didn't realize that. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. If I knew that, I would have just gotten the damn six. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it's a waiver okay. for it all. But then we'll pass you over this tiny little circular disc that is sealed that contains the liquid. Hey, Rachel, while you're up there, can you grab another? I say from the table sure. right before he leaves. Another really small. Wait, what? Why, why, why don't you just pour yours out into a little teaspoon? It's I'm so doing this because you wouldn't multiple share. Multiple people have us. There is so multiple then why? people can have it. <laughs> the you just leave yours. Why'd I go up and get an extra one then? Oh, not to drink now, to have as a backup. Do you want me to just ask for extra to-go cups, then? Everything is in to-go cups. I'll just go order a lawn. Can I have another silver piece, please? I, 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 I just don't get why you're getting more. Well, Both I gave of you your two. five silver back. That's the why I was asking for another one. Both of you sure. two assume I want to drink one of these. I don't. I don't either. I'll go up my damn self. Here, sure. and I give you a silver. Three more small Indigo cups, and then I will store them safely in my bag, so that way, if shit goes sideways when we're trying to break the window and we can't break the window, we say, here, Boudica, drink this, then break the window. These are like paper cups, right? Uh-huh. Oh. I'll just carry it. God damn. now. How does drinking this make me more more able to break the window? I feel like it might kick How does bath salts it? make somebody do all that shit they do in Florida? This doesn't seem like <laughs> drugs. This seems like... This Montana seems is act of arson. It, I mean, this is kind of like if you're asking me to overdose on like Tylenol or something. It it don't I don't feel like it's gonna do anything other than harm me. I'm asking you to be like that fucking squirrel from over the hedge. Well, I'm not <laughs> Steve Carell. <laughs> you know his voice actor off the top of your head. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't? I want to meet the Hat Man. I I would like to take mine now. <laughs> no. <laughs> Make his spirit save. This world. It ain't gonna go well. I got one spirit. Oh god. Why? <laughs> Zero successes. Zero successes. Do you have another backup character, Caleb? <laughs> nope. This is it. So, as you you pop open the lid, and. You look at it. Um, are you, you can see kind of like the black vapor kind of floating up at you. Are you just kind of downing it like a shot? Or are you like sampling the flavor of this? I'm downing it like a shot. Like I'm thinking of fucking... Um, why am I blanking on the name? The Chicago liquor. You know the one I'm talking oh, about. Really yeah. One. Yeah, I think Malore? how you down that just to get it Malor, yes. Yep, Malor. How you down that just to get it over with, that's what I'm doing. I am not trying to savor it. Cool. As you do that, you get hit with the aftertaste of what you can only describe as like broccoli. And you kind of like taste your tongue a bit. Yeah, it could be worse. You're fine. That was a lot of fuss over nothing. I'm waiting for Colin to say that you then explode. I'm waiting for Colin to say, and you you feel, 
you feel something horrible happening within <laughs> within you. <laughs> See, here's the thing. My body is already so fucked up, I don't think I could feel the difference. You know Somewhere what? When, they, when decent chunks of your body are crazy. already void. <laughs> maybe you if you just... downed a maybe if you downed a large, it would kill the warrens. <laughs> you Bluetooth disconnect with something in your body. <laughs> Did, did I get that Bluetooth disconnect sound call? <laughs> no. I mean, didn't. when I Bluetooth disconnect my pancreas. Yeah, it, it sucks when that happens. <laughs> I so hate Colin it. Colin did when, hey, when did you get diagnosed? When I was five. When he was five. True, I was there. So true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think Vichy just kind of I shrugs was... and throws the to-go cup in a trash can. Gotcha. Goes back to his corn shake. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Then you just go back to sipping on your corn shake. No problems. All right. Uh, I feel like we have to find out how to get out of here. Yeah, I suppose. I guess sure part of that. Check out the other floors first. I, I think doing that is part of trying to get back because I don't know how else to do it. What if we tried time. asking some? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have the same brain. You want me to ask for directions? Yes. If your male brain can't handle it, one of us will. <laughs> I was entirely joking. I'm probably willing to do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, is there a map like a like a like a mall map? No. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure if, like, we were in the food court of this whatever we're in. Yeah, uh, as you're looking around, though, you do kind of, like, look out the window, and you can see this large hog with these tiny wings that's just floating right outside the window that's looking at your fries. Hi. It's just well, floating if you're there. <laughs> if you're hungry, he's hungry. Give him one. Does the window open? If, yeah, you could slide it open. I'll slide it open just a crack and, like, toss one of the longer fries out. Gotcha. The hog kind of opens the mouth and then squeals as it begins to fly away. Just fluttering. Reshut the window. <clears throat> Finish my fries and root beer, and get up. All right, let let's let's find out where the hell we are. I wonder if the pork burger was sourced from the hogs outside. I don't. Well, I was gonna say I don't see any other pigs, but I also don't see any whales. So who knows? <laughs> it was a good burger, though. I think I assume it was the good burger, Colin. Yeah, it was pretty good. Nice. Did the cheese taste like cow's milk cheese? Or did it taste like not that? It tasted like regular cheese. Okay. Okay. I, I, okay, so when you said that, I then thought you were going to say, or did it taste like uh, whale milk cheese? And I thought, exactly, what that would but mean, how would I know? In my head, that means carbonated cheese, and that is a disturbing <laughs> thought. Carb my two brain cells finally just, like, slammed into each other, and I just... Carbonated cheese. Imagine cheese, but, like, mixed with non-flavored Pop Rocks. Coming to a charcuterie board near you. <laughs> <laughs> Someone get the Italians on it. Uh, right, we, um... we call this a Papacino. <laughs> Shut the <laughs> fuck up. I will uh. not. 
You cannot silence me. Mm. All right, let's go check the other floors. Gotcha. Um, then, as you head up to kind of the floor above, it seems like a repeat of the floor below. There seems to be a new employee, uh, this one being a tiefling woman, maybe in her 70s or 80s, with like these long curled horns wearing that same kind of worker's uniform, who's handling a few customers. Uh, and you can see sitting around uh, drinking what appears to be a corn shake a lawn uh sin hi thank god we found our way home hello how are you confused mm. have you tried the corn shake I've each tried one. It was good. Well, see, here's the thing, Vicha. As you, like, Alon, you turn to talk to Vicha, and Vicha, you're in another place, man. As, at this point, it's starting to hit as you watch your hands start to kind of leave these ghostly after trails. And this entire space starts to, like, twist, move, circling in on itself. You feel yourself starting to levitate off the ground, like, beginning to float. And the everyone else starts to see this, too, as Vicha has become just a little bit lighter than air at this point. There's, like, a little bit of, like, a froth that's leaking from the holes in his face as Vicha is just... Floating on his own shit. <laughs> he had that thirst quenching stuff. Oh. He'd have that too. Well. It was interesting. Is it a little like broccoli? You're not able to speak at this point. You're floating, Vicha. Ah. Fair. I like to imagine he said that in his head. Yeah, okay. That's what you said and in then... your head. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, why isn't anyone responding to me? Yeah, um, Crazy that you think this is from the corn shake. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, what Vicha says in return is basically like his vocal cords recreate perfectly uh, the sound of a morning dove and like all these kind of variations of like bird noises as he just starts to float around the interior of the restaurant. And you hear the tiefling woman say, Hey! Hey, control your friend! Sorry. Don't leave any footprints on my ceiling. I attempt to keep Does Visha he still as close that? to the floor as possible. He's, He's really good. That, uh, lap desk? Hmm? Does he still have the lap desk? Yes. When we eventually get him to the floor, I'm gonna tie... Uh, I'm gonna take off mine. Tie like, rope to that, and then also onto his, like, belt or whatever, like, belt loops, so that way we have a little Vicha balloon that we can't cool. lose. Well, you see, as you try that, um, Alon, you reach for Vicha's leg, and as you do, it stretches like rubber as Vicha just keeps on floating around the room. Uh, really good at bird impressions. Though I don't know what the stretching leg is for. That's not very bird-like. Well, you see, there Stutter. are birds known as ostriches that do have very long legs. They have, I think they just kind of come prepackaged with strong legs, and I don't... Long I don't think, and strong, yeah. 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 yeah, strong, long legs. I don't think they just stretch out like that. Not to say that my friend Vicia does not have long, strong legs. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, sir. Um... Is there potentially something you could do about Vicha floating around? That's out of my hands. Okay. You'll have to pray to another god for that. Um, right. But I'm glad that 
you were able to follow Krenna's directions, and it has led you here. I had... I think Alon's still occupied with trying to get Beecher down. Yeah, what you've ended up doing is just, like, tying the legs together in a bow, and, like, just having to knot it around yourself as you slowly kind of... Uh, Tom and Jerry ask, like, rolled Vicha down and attached him <laughs> to the floor. So off topic, I tried to find a uh, moving picture for this, and I ended up finding this one. <laughs> that was the first result. I mean, Vicha does seem to be on a higher plane than the rest of us now, so... Mm-hmm. And... <laughs> Bro's in the eighth dimension. We can't get him back. Yeah, I mean, you know, at the moment, um, Vicha kind of cutting back to your perspective, it's been 35 years. As you've been fighting in the Great War, you stand on a massive cliff face as your army of 10,000 stands around you, as massive what appears to be bears with 13 heads each charge at you. It's your last stand at Blood Ridge. What are you doing, Vicha? I'm charging ahead. If I'm going down, I'm going down bravely. Gotcha. You charge ahead as you can see all these uh, 13-headed bears start to leap at you as you and your soldiers try and stand against the horde of monsters. Will you use your ultimate move? I'll use my ultimate move. As you open your mouth wide, you breathe out a beam of, like, energy that begins to cut these bears in half. Cutting back to what's actually happening, uh, Vicha begins to just vomit all over the place. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Someone please uh can we can we get some to go cups please? We need to clean this up. I'm so sorry. Uh, and the woman kind of like stalks out and like gives you some paper towels and cups. <laughs> no one starts to help clean. Mm -hmm. I'm cleaning. Thank you. And Naza will uh, will help clean although she's not happy. Mm -hmm. Kaylee will help too. And he's not happy. I told you that we shouldn't trust him. I told you. I know, I know. And what I did know. we do? Look at his hair, by the way. Oh, thanks. Your hair's nice yourself. Thank you. You too, Boudica. Oh, thank you. I just, I, I've just been going gray all these years. I wonder, I wonder if I look younger somehow. Boudica does not look younger. Boudica <clears throat> still looks like an old woman, just with pink hair, by the way. Yeah, it, really sort of, it really takes some years off of you. Elan sort of pulls the end of his hair around, sees that it's still brown, and is like, huh, and then, like, checks himself and finds the full sleeve, and is like, huh. Well, that's, that's new. Yes, it seems like all of you have gone through some changes. Yeah, um, for what it's worth, due to the Stargazer conversation, because I imagine High God has certain abilities, so mm -hmm. just for full transparency, due to the Stargazer conversation, Naza is very much very nervous around Sid. That's fair. More nervous than she otherwise would be being with a High God. I thought that there is the potential for all of you to be in a weakened state after using the beacon. Originally, this was planned as giving you a place to prepare, plan, regain your stamina before heading back. A chance to have you become your best selves, but now the best parts of you seem to have been taken. I would like to propose a 
partnership between all of you and me. What do you say? What's your offer? I take all but along to a dimension known as the arena for an amount of time that all of you choose and I will have agents of mine activate your beacon to send you back when you are ready or when the allotted time is up really this should allow you to regain some of what you lost depending on the time that you would wish to spend within this dimension. Along, in exchange, I would ask that you aid me in the protection and overall medical care of civilians in northern Kovarov. Uh, yeah, I, I can do that. You would aid in their removal from Kovarov and the transportation of them to Nerdica by boat. And then once this task is done, I would return you to your allies. How much time would pass on the primordial ring? Uh, impossible to say. And uh. in terms of all of you, that also depends on those going to the arena, how much time you would like to spend. wasn't in the Navy, but I'll do it. Very well. There will be allies there. One of my best generals, Fitna Balkner, is helping to lead the operation. Fitna Mansion! Fitna Mansion! Alright. Yeah, I'm, I'm on board. Very well. And the rest of you? can't get a message out to anyone before we go, can we? If you would like to try, then I would not prevent this. Problem is, Neza doesn't have anything that can do that. At least not magically. But perhaps if you're willing to agree to other things, then we can perhaps help each other in this endeavor as well. You see, what is happening in Lords will have grave, dire effects I would like all of you to promise to obtain uh, blood from a cell and uh, to insert this blood into uh, the tree of titanic magic that is growing in the town of Lords. Uh, how would that help things? It would aid the rings.
unfortunately, I'm not at liberty to say how it will help. But I hope that you can trust me and that it is in your best interest. Uh, what do you what do you guys think? I don't know how sentient Vicha is for this. <laughs> Vicha, you're you're just vibing. Did he win the war? Uh at this moment, Vicha, you are currently in tense negotiations with the mole people. Ooh, negotiations right. sounds no like he might be losing. Then. Yeah. Veach is in his own world. Um, I mean, Veach with... was in the arena for a while, and he seems... Um, mostly okay. <laughs> uh, from what I understand, the... The worst parts happened after he left, though. So. Yeah, exactly. I, uh... We're built different. We will not tempt the Warrens. I'm loath to leave y'all, but if this helps us get back into fighting shape, I think it's worth it. Yeah. <laughs> and... I mean, if getting Estelle's blood on the Titanic tree was such a bad thing, I'm sure she would bleed herself. So it can't be that bad. Oh, I don't entirely believe that Miravigula is Estelle. That's just my opinion. Uh. It claims to be. Yeah, but, but you're right that maybe she isn't fully. But yeah, I, I can so. I can claim to be the high god sin, but I am not the high god sin, as the high I god sin is right over there. I sort of look to sin. Can you make a statement on Estelle's identity? Well, I could never do such a thing. All I would say is to find Estelle take her blood and insert it into the tree of titanic magic for best results of course and by insert it i i think you're you're saying that we we have to in like do we have to inject it somehow or is it just we remove some bark and rub it on injection would be best for okay. quickest effect Bark would work, but getting to that point, well, I'm assuming you want quickest possible effects. If we're close to that tree, yes, we need something that works fast. Mm -hmm. Very well. All right. Well, it sounds like y'all have to decide how long you're staying. He just said he was there for two years, right? I thought Vicha sort of lost track of time. He probably did lose Vicha track of time. gave you a number. <laughs> Fuck. I can't uh, say what it is, but he said both the date and the number. Fuck. Um, Sin, how long would we have to stay in the arena in order to be back into the shape that we were? <sighs> In terms of time in the arena, likely a decade. That might only pass in 
your rings of Marapis as a few months. Depending on how actions take place. It'd sacrifice a few months, right? Yeah. I should also inform you that at present, you're currently sitting in the fall of 714 AR. <laughs> To be precise, the 14th of Nuwiti. It was 710 when we left, right? Mm-hmm. Do you say that was the prime ring or primordial ring? Prime ring. Okay. How long is that for lords? Given the time dilation. Given the time dilation, you're looking at currently mm. about six years. Approaching seven. Oh, that's really weird now, though. Okay, that sucks. Because mm. when we were gone, it felt like mm. a year for us, and it was significantly more what but now lords is experiencing time that moves past the prime ring instead of the other way around lords's time is moving at an accelerated rate Probably for the growth of the tree, am I correct? Correct. So for a decade in the arena, how long would it be in Lords? <sighs> Likely a few years. If I had to guess. I mean, would the power we'd get from doing that match how powerful the tree would be? I mean, that's a weird question, but I, I, you get what I mean? I don't. Okay. Eventually, are we going to be able to do anything when we get back in terms of fixing this? Or would all the time away render the problem completely unsolvable? The longer you wait, the more difficult it will become. You wish to escape with Polydectes upon your return. My recommendation, spend five years within the arena. Fight, battle, grow. Much of it will become a haze and will be lost, but your bodies and parts of your minds will be rebuilt over the course of these events. Then... Once you return, you may free your friend and abscond back to Lords, where hopefully you can achieve your goals and reach the best version of yourselves. What do you think? I mean, I think we don't have a better option. What do you guys think? It's a 
suppose I agree. Five years should do it. In that case, I will have your beacon activated after five years of time. Whenever you are ready, you may activate it, and soon enough you will be on your way to this time, the arena. While Alon, we will travel together to Kovarov. If you would like a message sent, there are individuals on the floor above that could handle such a matter. Yeah, I have just a moment then. You may. Avon rushes upstairs to find the messengers. Gotcha. Yes, I'm going with him. Then, as you rush upstairs to find the messengers, um, you can see that this point, there are only two people up there. The register seems empty, and there's an employee kind of in the back, so technically three people. Um, of the people that you can see there, um, one of which seems to be a very haggard individual, um, like worn down, bloody, beaten, tired, Alon. The other seems to be a very lively looking man. See, Piper, this, this is where you get the true fajitas. It's on the secret menu. Uh, excuse me. Ah, oh, hello there. Sorry, um, uh, we're just waiting in line. We're getting our fajitas. Oh, I, I was looking for a messenger. Okay, I can do a message. Wait, oh. what's the message? Uh, do, do you need me to write it down? or Is it a long message? Not exceedingly. Okay. Who are you trying to send the uh, message to? My daughter. Okay. Uh, who is your daughter? Her name's Diana Skirtai. Okay. Um, Piper, take that down. Piper will go ahead and kind of find some paper and take that down. Uh, it's still looking very out of it, but he'll just kind of nod numbly and do it. Mm -hmm. All right. What's the message to Diana Skiratai? Um, I am so, so sorry. We're going to be gone for a long time. Probably some years. Um, I want you to know before that time starts to pass and you start we're still out there we're still alive we're still fighting and we will be coming back okay yeah I got that message um do you want me to add any flares or embellishes can you define that I don't know I mean usually just Words in the head? I'm assuming you want words in the head, or do you want an actual letter? I could oh. send a I could send a goose. Goose messages. They're always a favorite. A hit with the kids and the women. Um <sighs> <laughs> uh, what physical letter would be good, physical, actually. I could do physical letter. Uh do you just want it? Descending from the sky, or I don't. I'm. I don't know. Uh, Piper, do you want to be messengers? I suppose I've never been a mailman before. I. I would be fine with hand delivering it. Okay, <laughs> hand delivering a message. A first. Okay. Um, he snaps his fingers and like a little letter appears in his hand. Perfect. After fajitas, 
We'll go find Diana Skirichai, hand deliver this message. Would you mind at all if I hand signed it? Yeah, yeah, go for it. I do that. Pass it over and you can hand sign it and it's exactly transcribed. And I hand it back. All right. And he's going to stick it in like a, a breast pocket. He's a fairly hefty big guy. And you would also be able to see at this moment, Alon, as you're kind of looking closer at him, the eyes of this figure. It's like four overlapping rings in the eye surrounding this like pure white dot. Huh. Actually, could I get that back for just one more second? Yeah, man. You'll pass it over. Uh, I take it and add um, some other message about uh, how, along with us still fighting, we are still searching for ways to cure Aspasia. We all love you. None more than me, though. And hopefully... I will see you again as soon as possible. And I hand it back. Okay. You can see the guy takes it and kind of looks it over. Man. She's going to have a ton of parental issues. I know. Does she already have parental issues? The situation is tense. Uh-huh. Okay. Well... We'll, we'll, we'll give this note to her gently then, won't we, Piper? Yeah. We'll make sure she receives it well. Is this place horse safe, by the way? Horse? Horse. Safe? Yes, horse. Uh, I'm thinking about taking my horse butters. The immediate vicinity around her, probably outside of that, but very much probably not. Okay. Piper, add this to the list. We have to find a place to board Butters before we go. And Piper will write that down. <laughs> good, good, good. All right. Hey, you. And he points over at Nasa. Hi, I was also hoping to employ your messenger services, sir. Don't don't call me sir. That's weird. That's weird. But okay. <laughs> I get, I get Piper. We could start a mail company. Oh, I did personally just want to have it be words in the head. It still Discretion technically counts as mail, isn't that right, Piper? I. Sure. It's a delivered message. It can be mail. You're, you're right. Any delivered message is mail. Ha! Okay. Instead of email, this is M mail. Mm -hmm. Mental. B mail. <laughs> so. B for beam. I was thinking brain, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's your message? This is Navical. Fuck, I messed up. to take it back. This is Navical. <laughs> On our mission, we met Entropy. The amethysts are broken. We're going to the arena to regain some of our strength. It will be a long time for you, but we will come back. Don't assume us dead. Okay. Some questions. Who's this going to? Uh, it's an artificer named Polydectes okay. in the employ of a... Do you need that information, where he is physically? That would be helpful. I mean... Uh, he's in a town called Chateau Yor in the Lord's region. Okay, so, general... Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, also, you said something about entropy? Don't worry too much about it yet. Piper, I think we should worry about that. Yeah. Of course. Of course, her too. It, it's okay, Piper. And he's going to pat you on the head with kind of like these 
big, meaty hands. Piper does not look reassured. Oh, oh see, look, our fajitas! And you can I see, disconnected. Like, Please tell me you said big, meaty claws. Big, meaty hands. No! <laughs> As the tray of fajitas is kind of set down, you can see a very frazzled-looking employee. Uh, and you can see, like, they seem to be kind of a, um, like, middle-aged dwarven man. Uh, any, anything else, sir? Well, thinking about it, Piper, you want anything else from the secret menu? No, the fajitas will be fine. Okay. We're just going to take these fajitas then. But we will let... Actually, 20 corn shakes. You can see this employee's face just drops. Medium well. See you soon. And you can see this... Em he turns around and kind of passes you a tray piled high with fajitas, Piper. You're going to munch on that with me. Okay. Um, why do we need 20 corn shakes? I think Alon is just okay. mouthing the word silently. 20? Uh, what's this we business, Piper? These are mine. If you want 20 corn shakes, I'm already sharing the best fajita spot in the cosmic stack here. No, that's fine. I, You answered my question. You're having the shakes. That's all I wondered. Yeah, I, it's a real treat if you want to stay. Uh, and he turns to Alon and Naza here. I can just absolutely. My record, I and I don't mean to brag, five minutes. For the fajitas or the shakes? Oh, for the shakes. The fajitas, I mean, that's like two minutes. <laughs> Um, uh, we're kind of in a rush. Thanks for the offer, though. No, oh, okay, okay. So, polydectes and entropy, where... What's that situation? Where, what are we feeling with that? Okay, someone's Nisa? gotta know. Um, we found her in the drift. <laughs> oh, the drift. Okay. Piper, where I eat these fajitas. We're going to deliver mail, incorporate a mail company, and then we're heading to the drift. Wait, Butters, we need to... We're, somewhere in there, before we start a mail company, we're going to board the horse. Boarding the horse before delivering the mail, probably. Yes. At least when it comes to his letter. Um, Absolutely. Well, let's see how the mail company goes. Piper. We have to have faith. As a burgeoning startup company who has yet to make any profit, it's up to us to have the fire to continue our vision, our dream. What you have know, we worked so hard for? I bet if the person I'm sending the letter to wanted to respond, he could be your third client. Are That's we charging right. any of these people? <laughs> Oh, that's right. Money. This is looking at Piper now. Sort of disappointed. Hmm. All right. And you can see with this very serious face, this man turns to you along. I have a request for payment. Well, all right from you I'm gonna need a crisp high five and he raises <laughs> his hand you even changed the music for the bit how could you <laughs> <laughs> it's really good I was like oh fuck he's gonna be like I need your firstborn child but you're delivering to my firstborn child perfect we'll pick her up along the way <laughs> I, I give the man a high five. Nice. And you? What's your name? Neza. Um, it was in the letter. That's right. 
I'm a little bit worried now that he doesn't remember, but I have faith in you, Colin, as a person that he will remember. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't have faith in me, have faith in him. <laughs> you have enough. faith in Piper. I have faith in Piper. And for and Caleb's note taking. From you, I'm going to need a fist bump. Found it. Okay. And Neza will give a fist bump. He's going to make his fist to kind of explode at the end. Pew! Oh, she's going to explode too! <laughs> this will pay the bills, Piper. Look at this. We're already in the green. This business, off to a great start. As long as you keep the fajitas coming, I guess. Okay. And he turns back around as the employee is, like, taking this massive tray of corn shakes uh, oh, out I from the back. right now. You! Another 30 fajitas! Actually, with extra meat! And you can see the employee's face just goes pale. You're, you're gonna have to pay in advance for it. And you can see this guy, like, reaches into a pocket and just, like, sets a stack of gold down. This should cover my tab. Piper, keep eating. This is an all-night fajita party, and we're not gonna stop. Piper's probably still on his first fajita. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but after, <laughs> after this fajita party, though, your message will be sent. Thank you. Thank you. Elon right. leaves. It was nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. All right, now I have to crush 20 corn shakes. And he just begins to, like, start crushing 20 corn shakes. Fair enough. I am. I imagine even if we don't see it, we hear it. <laughs> you, you hear the confused shouts and screams of the dwarf from upstairs. <laughs> he doesn't know what's going on. Which is even more impressive because I don't know, no matter how voraciously someone chugs a milkshake, I don't see how it could elicit shocks and <laughs> screams. <laughs> so now I'm just curious, not curious enough to go check, because I kind of like the mystery and we're in a hurry. Mm -hmm. Just functionally to down 20 shakes in five minutes, I think you have to do something unnatural. Is he eating the shakes whole? Like picking up the cup, putting it in his mouth, and swallowing it like a sh like a snake. The world may never know. <laughs> but as you come back down, um, at this point, Vicha, you are laying on the floor, twitching. You are luckily back from your trip, as your entire body feels just wrong and fucked up. Kayla is next to you, just kind of fanning you. Um, and Boudicca is sitting nearby with Sin. Were the messages delivered? They're gonna deliver them after they finish with their fajitas. Very well. Then, Mr. Skiritai, are you ready? As I'll ever be. Then, I bid all of you adieu for now. And at this point, Sin is going to hold out a hand for you, Alon. Will you take it? Yep. As you do, both Sin and Alon disappear from existence. All right. Um, I guess that means we we go to the we go to the arena. Once you activate the beacon, yeah. All right, y'all ready? I think Future just kind of groans from the floor, but he'll give a what appears to be an attempt at a thumbs up. Ready as we'll ever be, I guess. All right, it's um, it's beacon time then, mm. and I'm gonna beacon all over the beacon. Gotcha. Then, as you activate the beacon, 
and your bodies become these streams of light as you pass out of Ahab's burger joint to the sound of a dwarf going, Impossible! Impossible! <laughs> it is here we will end the session for today. Ah, oh, boy. That's crazy. I'm glad I got to find out what was up with Piper. I did wonder. Well, well. you are playing wonder. <laughs> I hate you. Are you really telling me that you didn't see that joke coming? I don't think about the words that leave my mouth.
I'm sorry, Caleb. 